Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NECC. It's our first Overwatch match of the day. Northwood University versus Ottawa University. Ottawa University, Kansas, <laughs> not Canada, for those of you who might be confused. The Timberwolves versus the Braves here. I'm Tristan Parker, a.k.a. Corbeck, and alongside me is Berkeley Stevens, a.k.a. Alt Charge, and we are looking forward to bringing this match to you. And, uh, Berkeley, what do you what do you think we're looking at here today between these two teams? Oh, we're starting things off hot tonight, Corbeck. It's going to be really interesting action in the Legends division, the top division in the entire conference. These two teams come in at rank three and four. Ottawa, the fourth rank. Northwood, one of the few remaining undefeated teams in the Legends division, but they have beaten two 0-2 teams. So it could be a very evenly matched game here as we start on Lee Zhang. Corbeck, what are you looking to see in today's competition? I mean, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head, right? Some very talented players on both of these squads, some names that I think some of you might recognize. I'm assuming uh, some of these players are are the ones that I imagine they are. Dynasty, of course, a DPS player you may have heard of, uh, you know, slipping in here. Uh, obviously, Lee Zhang Tower control map always a little bit of an oddball, but I, I think this has the potential here, uh, Berkeley, to be some very high-flying Overwatch uh, for us to start off the day. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, and I'm watching these tanks just locking in on the mobile picks here. I think that's pretty essential for this map, too. That bridge phase can be pretty tough for those more compact comps to get through, but High flying is definitely right. We got the Tracer on the one side. Ottawa with a little bit of a different look. The Sim TP to get to point faster and Lump on this Sombra to just disrupt what North Northwood is trying to accomplish. Yeah, you can see kind of the, the, the sort of quasi divey comps coming in here. Cowman, maybe the little bit of the odd man out playing the Wrecking Ball there, but the Teleporter already on the quick initiation to just get them into this initial fight. The dive coming in, trying to secure that initial kill, and they will find Cowman looking, and, well, I think that might just slow down this first offense. Yeah, that was immediate, and that was his sync from Ottawa, but they've lost their Sombra. Lump gets caught out by the support of all people. Landon, the captain for this Northwood team, finding that crucial pick, and now the dive comes back in. The speed boost engages with the tanks, but Cowman on this Wrecking Ball, he's had trouble finding his footing so far, Corbeck. Yeah, really looking for him to try and establish something here. That's a good pile driver in there to do a little bit of initial damage and set up the engage, but they're going to have a hard time here pushing to Tyrell on the Reaper, who's really making it difficult for these dive tanks to maintain themselves. That said, Lep's going to go ahead and pop the Primal Fury here, just juggle around a couple of players, and looks like that's a clean secure there at the end of the team fight. That's a huge ultimate from left, too. That Primal was farmed up so quickly. He was really frontlining on this Winston pick the entire fight. Squeak sitting at only 80%, and you could see, even though Tyrell is on this Reaper, it wasn't enough. Left's Primal was just too powerful in that moment. Well, stacking up here on the doorway, and they've got to maybe assess how they want to engage. Tyrell probably being the difficult character here. But, oh, look at this. Northwoods is going to come up and meet them. The Coalescence coming out. The Amplification Matrix in as well. A uh, good little bit of play on the outside edge from the Sombra there. Noss, the only one who manages to pick up a kill on the Northwoods side. Down come the Mines, but I feel like they've invested that a little bit late here. Berkeley, I don't think that's going to help them very much. And poor Calman, he's being escorted to the door. They would love to have that back for the next engage too. Good coalescence to engage that fight there from Simplistic and the off angle that Lump took along that right side, TPing across the bridge, really got that angle they needed to get a hack onto a tank. And eventually they did take down Landon first, but you could see just too much of an ambush from Ottawa as now they look to defend the first time. Beach does pop that beat drop early and Tyrell goes in, able to pick Dynasty, but not before Squeak fell. Left though booped by Bleach and that is gonna be fatal. Lump almost falling off the map there, but collects themselves. Cowman comes in on the Diva pick. Maybe that's why we saw that Wrecking Ball ultimate used. And it looks like Northwood is not done in this fight. Landon and Cowman have both found picks, and they flipped the point back. That uh, was a big attempt right there by Lump to try and fight that way back in. Mitri was doing a great job of just kind of zoning out using the Lucio boop. The hack coming in there at the end, I think, nearly doomed him. But they've got the sound barrier now going into this fight, and that is going to be a bit of a crucial play here between Lump with the EMP and the sound barrier because the EMP death blossom combo here from Lump and Tyrell, that's what Ottawa University are going to be looking for and everything on the shoulders of the Lucio on Northwood's side to shut that down. And here comes the EMP. And is the follow oh, up the there? Oh, the raid from the Reaper keeps him alive. Not through that stun, though. It looks like Landon and Dynasty were ready for that Reaper ultimate lump. Coming in with the EMP, the Reaper ultimate as well. But all the picks still on the side of Northwood. Cornback, what went wrong there? 
Uh, I mean, this this was what I was talking about, though, right? It's all about trying to find that Lucio before you get started. Uh, and it was a valiant play. I think they thought maybe the Lucio was playing off, but unfortunately, he was too close. Lep now popping the Primal Fury here, by the way, in the back line, just creating some disruption. That timer ticking up to about 91%, not going to give them a lot of room to play around here. Lep will manage to get out. Lost a goodly amount of health in that engagement, but will not go down. Now a little bit of a duel on the point as Squeak decides to invest his Primal Fury into the fight as well. This is still looking dangerous, though. Squeak has to get to the sides, but does manage to get that boop on a Dynasty who tried to pop the High Noon to end that main tank play. It still looks like Overtime hasn't stopped ticking down, though, in Ottawa University. They found a few picks here, Corbeck. They're not out of this game yet. No, they're certainly still fighting it out. The Diva doing a great job here of holding in on the stall. Tyrell here as well. The plant coming in right there. And they will actually manage to flip the point at 25%. But, I mean, you're in the golden zone now, right? You can't make any mistakes. <laughs> any, any loss is going to be an instant loss on this stage. So you have to be absolutely perfect in your execution. And just based on what we've seen so far on this map, I don't know uh, that Ottawa can necessarily maintain a perfect record here. And, well, that's not a good oh, way to start it off. That is... Exactly what Ottawa was hoping would not happen in four quick picks. Just capitalized on by Northwood. They take advantage of Ottawa down their Diva player, and now overtime starts to dwindle. I don't believe there's going to be a significant touch here. Squeak has managed to find a kill, but he is quickly dealt with in the end. Still, it looks like that might have given Ottawa just enough time to get some more members back, but they're falling one by one. Corbeck, I think it is too little too late here in round one. Yeah, I would agree with you right there. Uh, a little bit of a contest here coming in at the tail end by Lump, but honestly, this is just, you know, the, the death throes of this beast. And sure enough, yeah, Ottawa University shut down. The first stage going to Northwood, and well-deserved, I think, in a lot of respects. Northwood just looking so aggressive here, Berkeley, really just coming on the entire time, not, I think, really ever giving Ottawa University much of a chance to, to back up and, and regroup and try and re-engage. Uh, one fight in particular sort of sticks out in my mind where we saw Ottawa University basically trying to regroup for the attack. They were stacked up on either side of the door near their spawn. And then suddenly, you know, as soon as they put their plan into motion, Northwood was just there to play spoiler, not giving them any room to breathe. And I wonder if that kind of aggressiveness is going to carry over to the rest of these maps tonight. I think it's going to, and I think it's a lot in part because Northwood has landed and operating as basically another DPS he might have been in the kill feed more than any other Northwood player. He is their captain. We can already feel his presence in this one. Ottawa has been battered down by the Baptiste on the side of Northwood. Now we've got two Brawl Cup pumps lining up here for control center. And I like this switch dive. Has a, has a lot less room to operate left, though. Unfortunately, might have made actually. No, I'm so wrong here. Left makes so much space with that pin. He totally shouldn't have. He was just in past the post. Ottawa had the lane to focus him down, but somehow left. Makes a madman play and he's rewarded so much. Yeah, it's, it's going to sound odd, but a huge part of success in that particular team fight was just sustainability on the side of Ottawa University. They just didn't have it. You need to give Tyrell enough time to really get cooking on the Symmetra because theoretically, right, in those close engagements, the Symmetra should outdamage the McCree, but they're wasting no time trying to re-engage. The Shatter thrown in almost immediately there, right there, won't find any targets. Uh, they've given themselves a little bit of room, but Dynasty on the Cowboy, honestly, just too much to handle uh, in that initial engagement for Ottawa. And Dynasty's looked so good in this one, already on his fourth hero of the game. And we're only in round two of control here, but when your team has that deep of a roster on the DPS role, he's already flexed over to four heroes, and they've pretty much performed well on every single one. He's been on Doomfist, he's been on Kree, he's been on who else? Tracer? Was it Ash to start the game? I'm not quite sure, but he is all over the map with his picks, and it seems like that is really paying dividends for Norgo here, as the Amplification Matrix is used just to keep Lep alive with the healing through it, and 2 and Lep will follow, as the Ant Matrix was popped by Simplistic as well. They've got three picks in this one, but they've given up their Lucio. Still landed, not given up in this fight, has found two picks. How many times are we going to say his name? This man pops off on the Baptiste. Whenever he's alive, the fight is not over. Now trying to be tracked down by this Reinhardt, but Squeak Looks like he might have overstepped his bounds. Oh my god, Landon with the confidence play keeps the point for Northwood. What an incredible clinic this Baptiste is putting on. That was a really good defense there by Landon, who has kind of, I think, been the engine that's driving a lot of this team's uh, success. We talked about sustainability a few seconds ago, and I think undeniably he's generating it. Just really solid plays there, and I think Squeak just, you know, saw blood right there. Thought he could pick off that support player, just kept investing deeper and deeper into that, and unfortunately it kind of betrayed him right there. 
Absolutely right, and then 2S does cancel that rip tire now, but we do have Tyrell's wall coming through as well with Beach's beat drop, and that is so much to stand on the side of Ottawa, but have they kept it for long enough? Dynasty pop on the high noon, but quickly cancels and gets that kill onto Luck. Neither team, though, giving way as it's a 5 versus 5 draw on the point, and N2S sways the momentum with that pick out of the sim, and then quickly starts to fall. Ottawa looks battered and beaten on round one, and Lee is going to go the way of Northwood. Ottawa put up a very solid fight, I'd say, right there, but unfortunately just never really able to get it going, especially in those tight, close, sort of brawly confines. A, a couple of just small errors, a little bit of overconfidence, I think, uh, at times there, and squeak with the big play uh, to end it all. And I mean, he did a great job with this primal, but I mean, this was desperation straights for the team, right? I, he was doing his best to buy them just a little bit of time. And by the way, we we're speaking about Landon. Look at how well he's staying alive right so there, good. eating up so much time and effort i mean that's like a huge part of the success was just the sheer drain on resources that landon was presenting on that baptiste and i'm just curious to see if that hyper aggro play style uh that we saw coming out of the side of northwood is going to carry over to these next couple of maps because i think that, i think if it is ottawa university is going to have to find a way to keep themselves on the back foot uh, pdq right here if i'm honest yeah i think you're absolutely right and if landon is able to keep it up i mean it's so hard to just play the game that Otto is playing. They try to be like so hyper aggressive on the dive and even on the brawl. You can tell that Landon is the target they should go for. The Baptiste, I mean, if he falls, the team crumbles, but he's just so hard to take care of. The peel from his teammates is there. And like we saw with that play on the Reinhardt where, like you were saying, Squeak's eyes just go red in that scenario. And how could they not? But how does Landon just like get out and live right there? That is going to be so crucial going forward. Yeah, a little bit of help from a tire there at the tail end, I think might have contributed some to that okay. survival, but we'll be back with more Overwatch action here. The NECC Ottawa down, but definitely not out. Don't go anywhere.
Hello and welcome back to the NECC. It's our first Overwatch match of the day in Lijiang Tower. Well, it wasn't necessarily a three-stager, but it was a bit of a zinger. I'm Corbeck alongside me as Alt Charge. And I mean, what do you make of that last map there, my man? That last one was uh, pretty tough there. It looked like Ottawa was feeling the wrath of Northwood at the end. The first map, we did see a pretty good contest there from Ottawa, but I mean, in that second one, it just seemed like they didn't know what target they should chase. We were talking a lot about how they were going after Landon, and he looks like a piece that cannot be removed in this game so far. Corbeck, what are your thoughts? I mean, I agree with you. I think his sustainability has been quite high. I mean, in general, I think the sustainability of the auto or the Northwood side has been very impressive and has been the telling difference in a lot of the team fights that we've been seeing. I mean, you saw the Symmetra based comp coming out from Ottawa, a very brawly composition. It needs to stay in. It needs to give the Sim time to ramp up the damage on her beam and secure those kills. And it just wasn't materializing. But we're going over to Blizzard World now. It's a it's a horse of a different color. Uh, so I imagine that we'll be seeing, you know, a little bit of a change in the team composition. I don't know, uh, Berkeley, that we'll be seeing Symmetra re remaking an appearance here on Blizzard World. Listen, Corbeck, if there's one thing I've learned about high rank at NECC, it's that I am not on the level of these coaches, and they have surprised me time and time again. I'm sure there's some rotation they practice in scrims where they TP up to that boat with the balloons you see right now, but it looks like N2S... On the Genji, I mean, that would make it really interesting. Tyrell, though, on the tour could be a thorn in his side all game. Northwood, though, will give them some more time to select their comp. Just take a look at Ottawa for the time being, as they're setting up this brawl comp where Lump has the stun for anything that gets sent their way. And it looks like Tyrell on this Torb just gives him that extra gun they were looking for because Northwood is bringing one and his name is Landon. So get the turret out there. Get the seventh man involved. That's how you might actually beat this Northwood team. I think it's a composition, too, that's a little bit calculated based on what we saw from Northwood last map, which was some very aggressive usage of dive tanks in particular on that first stage of Lee Jong Tower. We saw just really aggro plays coming out from the Winston. But here, uh, you know, this is what your Torbjorn is good for. This is what your McCree is good for, is sort of slowing that down. And again, not really wasting any pace here. She's already trying to get up to a position where they can kind of drop in on the outside edge, exactly what we would expect from a ball player. Just going to loop around the backside and wait for the engage and he is uncontested here yeah that is juicy and that looked free but the stun comes in and oh, seasons barely makes it out in time cycles over that health pack and now he's finally got his resources back tyrell and lump both go down and with the dps missing this defense is bound to crumble here the dive so hard to just hone in on a, tar a target when your dps are down Focus fire nowhere to be found here for Ottawa, and they're going to be sent packing good first push from Northwood as they remain strong in this one. I really think that highlights you know the the threat and utility of a competent ball player i think that the drop in on the execute happened just a little bit too early right there uh in terms of coordinating it with the rest of the team but seasons just has so much sustain so much health in this ball for him i mean look at these kind of plays it's just ridiculous he doesn't even respect the stun he's just being an absolute nuisance simplistic dying in the midst of all of that chaos as well just really gonna put a bad taste in ottawa's mouth and there's just not a whole lot they can do not sir trying to come forward here and the payload but they just feel a little back footed and, and they can't quite seem to re-establish themselves now in Cormac, what i'm noticing here about auto is they're committing so much onto seasons on the wrecking ball if you really want the wrecking ball to be a focus i think they should put on a zenyatta just so they can get rid of that yeah. cool a little bit faster because what northwood is doing so well with this comp is the dps come in when the wrecking ball becomes the focus and that's when they actually find these one these two picks that they're getting to start every fight and now the blade comes in n2s starting to cut them up gets through love and it looks like seasons able to use that wrecking ball minefield to take out the other dps and still ottawa having a difficult time getting out of the second point spawn Again, a really pristine usage there of Seasons on the ball as the Dragons come sailing in. And this is the aggression we were talking about from Northwood. By the way, they are just not letting up here at all. The pressure being applied constantly. The point is meters and meters behind them. They're not even anywhere close to it right now. But they're just not giving uh, Ottawa any room to breathe or reset or, or really try and get their team together. And now they've tried to trap them in a room here. Lump switching back over the Sombra. It feels like a bit of a desperation move. And finally, as the second point is wow. capped with five minutes and 30 seconds in the time bank finally ottawa trying to open up just a little bit yeah corbeck that was the streets phase filled with all green lights right there five and a half minutes going into third and they're not really making compositional changes either this blizzard world map is one in the game where 
it can vary so much from point one to point three, what you need to do to change up your strategy to make sure you're finding success. But Northwood here has everything working with minimal changes. Divabot now flying in, but N2S with another blade built up. We're starting to be cutting them up, but instead comes up empty squeak. Taking them out still though, Northwood on the back of this effort, winning the fight yet again. That's uh, Hyrell dropping right there at the end, and Northwood just an unstoppable juggernaut. I mean, realistically, uh, how many times, Rickley, have you ever seen somebody get through Streets Phase with five minutes and 30 seconds here on Blizzard World? That's a, that's a hell of a time blank. Yeah, I, I actually think that I've seen it before. Maybe once or twice I've seen things get that close, but uh, and Squeak doing a good job there of collecting two kills and maybe just trying to slow things down. The Amplification Matrix not doing any good, but they're investing this out there and they're just going in on it. Not sure. Getting caught. Out, what can they possibly do? They're just so relentless in the attack. Right when they feel Ottawa in this case feel that they should be backing Northwood up, the beat drop comes in. The tanks are fully supported, and you can't do anything about a front line that just gets a beat drop when you don't have a DPS ultimate of your own. This Ottawa team is scrambling to get out of spawn here with just four meters to go. Seasons comes with a pile drive, taking down Beach. Squeak falls as well. There goes Love, and then Simplistic gives the final effort with the coalescence. But Corbeck, this Northwood team. They look like world beaters right now on Blizzard World. They really do. I mean, it's just, it speaks to a supreme level of confidence is what it, it speaks to. When you go down to and you're like, ah, oh, just commit the Sal Barrier. Let's go in. We win these. Uh, and then they do. They straight up win them. I mean, it's, that's just crazy. There, I don't think there are a lot of teams in Overwatch at any level who would make the calculation to commit much less commit ults to a 4v6, what was essentially a 4v6, outside of the enemy team's spawn. I mean, they don't even have spawn advantage in the calculation. So Northwood just looking supreme, uh, supremely confident here uh, throughout this Blizzard World map. My goodness. Yeah, there's a little esports term that I've always liked, and that's just called ego challenging. And that is like, if you don't have any signs that this team can make you slow down, just go all out. Yep. We're seeing that with Northwood. We've talked about how lethal their backline is, but clearly they have such a good feel for the resources their team has. They know when they can commit beat drops like that and make it work for them. And that is so difficult to get both sides of the game like that from support, really filling in the DPS roles and also not showing any cracks in the armor is this, is this backline. You gotta give them a, you know, whoever made the call, whoever their IGL is, calling the shots, whatever, uh, you gotta give them credit there for just having the guts to stick with that pick, but now we see this attack coming out from Ottawa, they're gonna bring out the Symmetra, they're gonna bring out Lump on the May, again, very brawly, and I think they're gonna run into some very unfortunate circumstances here, because Nos is starting off on the far end, you do not have a far counter here, There, there is nothing for it, maybe D.Va, but in this day and age, uh, it's just not going to do much. That said, I mean, Nos doesn't have a lot in the way of healing, so if they can get into a situation where they're doing chip damage, maybe they can make something work. All this aggression coming out from Tyrell right now, all this aggression coming out from the Ottawa team, they just have to hold the brawl and actually win it. I think they're going to have a hard time doing it. It's got to be pretty difficult to land in already getting the first pick of the fight. Always there in the kill feed on the Baptiste. What I think is going to give Ottawa a lot of trouble is Seasons poking around on these off angles, these flanks. Yeah. Obviously, the far off Nas is making Ottawa look every direction, but Seasons is just that threat, that final boss that you have to get your rotations around and make sure no one gets hooked and picked. I'd be calling the comp swamp. Like, I'd be saying swap it uh, almost immediately, and I, I wonder if that's not what they're going to do. Yeah, they'll there go they right go. back yeah. into the spawn, and they'll do the swap. I don't know if that's necessarily the, the composition that I would have swapped to, but it maybe gives you a little bit more ability and uh, mobility, the ability to avoid Nos on the far, uh, to kind of put a little bit of pressure on Dynasty. Uh, it's it's a rough situation. They really need something to do with this far better, and losing Squeak early on and then that as well. My lord, that's just brutal from Seasons right there, playing up tight on the gate way not sir now trapped here in the back line just needs to die and it's probably going to get staggered out if we're being honest oh no they'll just kill him Oof. yep just taking care of the baby merciless taking no prisoners in this one so far what i would like to see them do against seasons in particular is obviously you could see he was the hack focus oh. of that last fight but 
I really do feel like, yes, if Plistic is over to the Mercy now, give a DPS a pocket, that'll help with the Forest, certainly. I also think, though, an Ana for a Roadhog has always been my best answer going into competitive games. Here now, Seasons just gets hooked in, and it's gotta be the Roadhog countering Roadhog. Corbett, what is that window? What is yeah, this window up say, in the high rise? <laughs> you gotta take a moment to talk about that, because that's creative. I've not seen that before. Uh, that's a really beautiful placement of the window, basically entirely for the Fara player. And when you think about it, amplifying the damage of those rockets on that straightaway coming in is is kind of obscene. Uh, and it really makes it so much more of a threat. And I mean, look at this old bank here, Merkley. What are they going to be able to do going into this, even if they get an early pick right here? The tack guys are just being used. Why not? Dynasty feeling it. And he'll get two kills. He'll destroy a Mercy Ant. An oh, Echo, nice and he'll get one more. That's a crazy effort, but that's exactly what we've seen so far from Northwood. This is how they played round one all the way. Once they have these ultimates built up, they're not even going to let you get to the choke. They're just going to use them right away and keep you where you are. You're going to have to use ultimates just to get to the point, let alone take it. Cornbeck, it seems like this attack, even though they've got a minute left, the resources Northwood has for the rest of this game are going to be so great to overcome. <sighs> That's the thing, right? Like, and I love this little bit of aerial duel we got oh, here. Good nice. kill by Lump. Manages to take down the Fara. Finally, the first death that the Fara has had. But now trying to pressure over the top. Needs support to get here quick, and it will. You meet sure coming up now. Uh, not really got the ult usage here. Already used it. Uh, a bit of a dangerous scenario. You see the minefield going out. Dynasty will pick up one. The Fara coming back in with the barrage. This was not the success that Ottawa needed at this particular stage. And we're about to be demonstrated right here. Yeah, dropping back into the fight actually going to use the barrage just sort of threw it away right there but uh, it was good enough i guess yeah i think he did think he finally had an opportunity to deal with the wrecking ball that would have been the game just said and done right there if squeak goes down but still squeak has to go so far away i think the barrage found the success that nas was looking for even though it was just a vendetta against squeak for some reason but we're gonna see one final push with six seconds left Beach cannot make the point in time. Lump able to get a copy onto the Wrecking Ball. That could give him some good sustain in here, but it still looks like Northwood one by one. They're finding the picks, but Dynasty's visor gets brought down by Squeak. That could be a big play here for Ottawa as the res comes off. They're not out of this one yet, Corbett. No, they're not out of it, but, well, they might be now. You see yeah, Tyro getting be. annihilated, and Squeak's down, and Beach, Let's I mean, go. this is the best that he can do. Pops the barrier, just lets the sweet embrace of death envelop him. Because uh, you have no other options in that chance. A good try there at the jump at the end, but it's never going to touch. And Northwood just looking dominant. Even, I would arguably, more dominant than they looked on Lijong Tower. Just unstoppable. Yeah, that sums that one up right there. It's unstoppable. Dynasty with a play of the game on the Cowboy. See how he was flashing the Peacekeeper around on this crazy flank. No ultimate in the bank, but hits that first headshot, brings down the Moira as well. And that's pretty much how Northwood operated. I mean, it wasn't a flashy play that gets a 4K from one player. You see it all in the kill feed. It's just these team efforts that come yeah. in, and they're so fast, Corbeck. That's the thing. They're so fast. Yeah, they're they're very fast. They're very aggressive. And at, at times you might actually be looking at this and be like, oh, this is just overconfident. And they, you know, they're 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 gonna bite off more than they can chew. It's calculated. It's it's all there's brains behind all of this. Cause I'll, I'll take that example of Dynasty popping TAC Pfizer there and collecting those kills. It's it's Soldier 76. He'll just run back. Of all the characters in the lineup, he's yeah. one of the best to die early on in that situation. He's very much a character that you can sacrifice. And to trade a character that will come back from spawn that fast for three kills? Uh, yeah, you'll do that any day of the week. It's it's not just, you know, oh, I'm a pop tap visor right now. There, there is legitimately a, a plan here. There's strategy. It's, it's, it's those little micro decisions. Even if players aren't even consciously aware that they're making them, but it's those little micro decisions that are just so impressive uh to me at this level of play and northwood like i said just a juggernaut really looks so solid on that blizzard world map it's going to be very tough to topple them we're going to be going into map three in just a few minutes don't go anywhere as northwood looks to continue this hot streak they're on
Hello, ladies and welcome, gentlemen. Welcome back to the NECC. Flood that one a little bit. That's okay. It, it happens to the best of us today. Anyway, you're watching Northwood University versus Ottawa University, and it's been all Northwood all the time. The Timberwolves just running rampant here. Uh, I am Tristan Parker, aka Corbeck. Alongside me is Berkeley Stevens, aka Alt Charge, and we are going to bring you the final map of this series. And where are we going, Berkeley? Well, we're going to Havana, Corbeck, so we might see a little bit of a poke comp come out from Northwood. I've actually seen them run up before. We'll see if that's the strategy for this map. Gonna be interesting what the response is here from Ottawa because Northwood, we said it, sums it up in this one, unstoppable so far. Have not dropped a point, haven't dropped a map all season. If Ottawa finds a weakness, they're going to be the first ones in the NECC to do so. Yeah, it does feel uh, a little bit uh, one-sided, especially coming off of that last Blizzard World, but uh, you never know. The capacity for supplies remains, and for those of you who are curious or not familiar with the NECC format, we do play all three maps here. Uh, it will uh, it will matter in terms of overall map score for the season, so still something to play for here for Ottawa, besides just, I guess, pride uh, at this particular circumstance. Ottawa here showing us some interesting choices, and I'm curious to see uh, if that one sticks, I, I don't know that we're going to be seeing Squeak on Widowmaker, but perhaps now is the time, I guess, if you're ever going to run that. Uh, that's uh, ambitious to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that would be one heck of a pick here. And this is on defense, too. No, okay, there's the Squeak. There it is. Well, I was going to well, say, the old, the old curveball would have been something to see, but I think this is maybe a wiser set of choices. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right here. Nas is going to be sticking on the bar. That worked so well in Blizzard World, but at some point here on this map, you enter the distillery where we are right now. The roof is low to your head. Nas might have to actually switch off of this hero eventually. We are going to see the attackers rolling out with Seasons on Hanzar Dynasty. Yet to pick a hero. Don't know what's going on there, but Northwood, I'm sure they're going to have something figured out. Nas does drop to Tyrell's headshot early, so this Widowmaker already starting to flash some skill as the res comes in. That had to feel good if you're sitting on the side of Nas. You've been looking forward to that one for a while. Dynasty coming out here on the on the Reinhardt. Calman getting a pick there as well. But uh, Squeak's had to come back to the rest of his team here. He's kind of left the cart adrift for a second, and they've kind of capitalized on the absence of the main tank. And now Squeak finds himself in a situation he can't very well win. Nods are coming back in on the Reinhardt, so a very interesting tank duo being shown by those two. But again, Northwood still looking the stronger side here. Absolutely. Squeak and Nods are on this double shield kind of brawl comp, but it looks like Northwood just has so much firepower. It's always focused on the squishies. We never see the tanks fall first unless one of them on Ottawa makes a very critical error, but it's always these early picks onto the squishies that we've seen there. Nods overextends and gets scorched by a fire strike, but now Nods has to pin across the point, gets the mega still though. Looks like he could get battered and bruised here, but instead Dynasty, the hit scan all game now on the Reinhardt does fall in that duel. Ah, it's a bit of a filthy maneuver right there. Get up behind him like that and pop the damage amplification matrix. Squeak doing a good job of disrupting it as best they can. Might actually bring Landon down. Does so. Now just the Mercy up there, but a little bit of a rescue coming in in the form of Nos, and then the Rez coming in almost immediately to get Landon back into the fight. And this is the Northwood style. This is very much in keeping with how the other map looked. Just a constant application of full front pressure. And there's not a whole lot that Ottawa University can do. I don't even think they really have time to think here. No, it's so difficult to go up against a team that is just playing on a pace that you're not quite on. I mean, it could just be an off day too, but we've just seen Northwood just control every bit of tempo all match long. Four and a half minutes coming in now. Nas popping the barrage. Dynasty shattering. I'm pretty sure no one like might have gotten simplistic there, but the auto too far away to get the Elim. And this Ottawa team again finding themselves struggling just to get out of spawn, and we've seen this, I think, three or four times now in this one, and the ultimate start to come out, the Nano Blade, in fact, and it's able to find the far of the Mercy as well. That is two, closing it on the right heart and finds Dynasty. Taking them all down, the Blade is sharp. The Culinary Artist Love finally starts to chop off the opposition. But Ottawa, they've got a long way to go if they want to hold this second point. That's the first time that they slowed him down. And Landon's going to drop the Ant Matrix in the back line. He's hunting for not Sir. And he's got backup here as well because Seasons is in on the Hanzo. And they will start picking up picks one after another. Landon's still alive in the corner, keeping his teammate in the fight. Seasons will go down eventually. But is it going to be enough? And again, it is Landon who has just held 
spawn here, even when it looked like an ultimate victory there for Ottawa. Landon somehow turns that around, and now we're in a situation where a desperate monster is coming in with the shatter. Yeah, Nanoblade finds three, Landon somehow able to scrape his way out of this fight, just staring down main tanks in the middle of the fight, popping the Ant Matrix, helping the Hanzo get pocketed on. Who squeaks dive. We're seeing him just do so much stuff to enable this team, but he's not going to be done here. That solo shatter will put an end to his reign, and that is what Otto is going to have to do to deal with the likes of Landon. Three meters now to get on the point before it finds this second point finish line, and it looks like still Northwood might have this one with .06 to go. They're not out of this one yet. Landon does get res back up and immediately finds a pick. It's simplistic in the back line. Pushed back, maybe too far back, and that is the second point. Finally captured there for Northwood. We did see a little bit of a hiccup, though, Corbeck, and that was probably the first time we've seen it on Havana. A little bit of a hiccup. Really, oh. it was just it was just lump with a good nano blade, and... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Lump, oh, you can't dash through that, my man. No way. <laughs> Season just punches it back into the far wall. Not start coming out here on the Roadhog to, I think, just try and provide a little bit of contest, maybe two specifically seasons on that Doomfist, I'm assuming. Help with the ball a little bit, too. But uh, it's just it's just been a little bit of a, a difficult run here for Ottawa. I, you know, you said that they finally got through. Beautiful headshot from Tyrell, though. Tyrell has really been flexing the skills on the Widowmaker. It just unfortunately no, is just a not not enough. <laughs> he puts it in the chat too. DPS dip after landing that hook shot. So you can tell he's still finding his ways to have fun. That was a very nice play as the widow gets a highlight on the side of Ottawa, but it has still just been all north. But this is a point though where they could make something work with the widow. But Tyrell quickly does get dove on. It just looks like the dive is always on the same page here for North when it comes in so fast that Ottawa doesn't even know that Peel has to come through for Tyrell in that scenario. Yeah, Yumitra actually getting a really clean kill there <laughs> on the tail end to take out Tyrell. Tyrell going for the jump shot again. Oh! oh, he can't bring it down that time. Good effort, though. It looked like he was right on point, but I don't know anything about Widowmaker, so uh, I guess it was not. Uh, instead, it will be Tyrell who falls to the other side, so the DPS diff reasserted, and Nos lets him know about it. Nos picking up another one as well because Lump gets taken down. A jungle here from Squeak, but Squeak was deep in the back line. He does get land and Simplistic tagging one up as well, and now Nos is kind of uh, isolated in this extended forward point, but reinforcements are coming, and now Lump is showing us a Bastion. There it is in the chat again. You can see Tyrell hitting the headshot, winning the Widow duel, and time and time again. We're just going to see DPS dip anytime one of them gets a pick, and I, I'm i kind of for it. I'm not, not going to lie, Cortex. I'm pretty for it. Hey, man, oh. if it makes him happy, but Ivitra getting another clean kill onto Tyrell. The Lucio has been an absolute hunter of the Widowmaker here. And now they've got themselves a bit of a position, at least Ottawa University does, that they can try and fight out of here. But Landon, again, in the mix, will shut down their opposite number on Beach. So a little bit of a support diff as well. The kill feed starting to go red, red, red. Tyrell does secure one here, trying to get Landon as well, but can't quite find it. And there's no one to contest the points. And it will be in with a 1 minute 42 second time bank. Score. Finally, Northwood able to get through the third point. Once I saw those two support alts come through that B drop, and of course the amplification went, uh, window from Landon up on the high ground, that's when I knew that fight was over. But Ottawa did a good job just chipping away a few more seconds. And that is their best look today. 142 after three points here on Havana. That's a normal looking time bank, Corbeck. And that's the first time I've seen Northwood look normal in this game. Nor normal. <laughs> I, I'm putting that normal. in air quotes. Normal. I mean, there are a lot of teams that struggle to even finish him on us. So it's, it's yeah, I had some more reasonable time back. It's I'll give three and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's not three and a half. It, it, it certainly was a, was a bit of an interesting round. I think towards the end there, uh, it, it just got a little bit team deathmatchy when we were around the castle at the end, right? Like, it, it just seemed like people were mostly focusing on getting picks. I don't know that there was a lot of cohesiveness in terms of those team fights. It, it was really more just uh, who can kill more and quicker. And in the end, it was Northwood that was able to do so. I mean, obviously, Landon has been sort of the, the jewel in the crown of an otherwise very strong Northwood squad, but give a little bit of credit to you, Mitra as well, who was uh, doing some very good work on that Lucio, just being absolutely obnoxious, especially when it came to, to slowing Tyrell down. But on the other side, 
Uh, this is a, an old classic with a little bit of a twist, actually, because they've got a Torbjorn for kind of the, the double pirate ship, the battleship. I don't know exactly what we want to call that. Yeah, it's just a truck with a whole lot of firepower. You've got the seven-man comp. Two of those men are turrets out there and the double shields in front of them. Northward could find themselves pretty uncomfortable to start this game. It might take a composition adjustment. I don't think they're going to get the spawn trap going here on Havana. That would be insane coming out of this composition in particular. But Ottawa University, I mean, their back is up against the wall on this one. They're just trying to redeem this one a little bit. Putting on the pirate ship, I think, is a good way to go. But still, Nas up on this high ground. No one really focusing any of the hit scans on the side of Northwood. And they are raining free right now. Seasons finding three picks. Nas up there with two. It just looks like this Northwood team controls the map no matter where they are. Yeah, it's like a scene out of Black Hawk Down right there, to be honest. Just a just absolute firefight in the street. Not a whole lot that Ottawa University can do about it. And uh, I, I mean, I admire I admire the, the panache of trying to run this particular composition. I just don't know that they're going to be able to do it. But, oh, taking a little bit of flank and angle, coming through the post office. Sure, why not? Go ahead and throw yourself down right there, Tyrell. See what you can do. The answer, not very much. Unfortunately, Immortality Field coming in. The damage amplification matrix on the other side, not giving him a lot of room to breathe. Simplistic on the Zen Yada, trying to amplify those numbers. Not Sir with a good rock right there. Will actually manage to get Yamitra out of the fight. But then Not Sir himself is, well, burned down and out. Juggled, basically, back into the minefield. And here comes dynasty just trying to finish it off and well there there will be no letters sent from the post office today yeah none whatsoever they they are staring down just one heck of a defense i don't know what you focus on this defense dynasty throwing those shields out for anyone that's on an off angle who needs one cowman is making these moves so quick on the wrecking ball that even tyrell on the bastion with the discord to boot is not fast enough to take down Cowman in most of these fights. This Northwood team, I know I cheekily said they're playing fast when they were on dive comps, but to come and get in and out of a fight that quick against a Bastion comp with Discord and nobody dies, it's ridiculous. Well, Tyrell's got himself an ultimate. He is oh, in tank is. form double on that. They're going to use the Gravitic Flux here as well, just to really confirm it. I think the beatdown bongos were in play there too. So three ults invested, but it might have been enough to break it. Landon just damage amplification matrix and takes down Lump. He's not giving up again. He's dug in here using his ult to try and turn the course of a fight that he really should have no right to turn. Yeah, one thing about Northwood is Landon changes everything like when this team is down and out he will commit all of his resources his ultimate he'll be staring down a 1v3 but if he can get one pick out of it chances are he's able to sustain himself and that's what we're seeing here it's got to take a pulse bomb finding a pair and lump getting a third a transcendence as well a full investment from ottawa just for the first point Ottawa's battling. They're not giving it up. They're, they're not walking away. I, I appreciate the fight that they're showing. And by the way, Landon's still alive uh, and will, I think, continue to be so. Wait, we've seen that bit of tape before where Landon lures a tank to their unfortunate death like a siren of old. And then he'll go ahead and get Beach as well, because why wouldn't he? Oh, he'll get Lump too. <laughs> Flip shot it? on the beach and landing the one burst right as Yamitra slaps on the Discord. It looked like an insta kill. He's literally another DPS out there, and now Yamitra off the Lucio onto the Zenyatta. This Northwood team has more damage than ever, and it's showing they look so lethal in this one. Yeah, Beach trying to uh, do his best landed impersonation right there. Unfortunately, not able to bring Nos down. Nos escapes with a sliver of a shred of a health. Uh, Yamitra now taking a position on the high ground. And, well, we're about to see whether or not they can push back in. Tyrell sticking doggedly with this Bastion pick come hell or high water. I think they're trying to use him to farm a little bit of Transcendence. But Simplistic will die early on in this setup. And Yamitra just playing out from behind this pillar. Perfectly uncontested here in this position. Tyrell lend another tank ultimate loose here. See if he can find as many picks as his last one. Now the challenge from the opposite DPS comes over, and right when that ultimate is over, you can see that dive rolling in. It started with Cowman and the Genji Seasons right in tow as well. This team just collapses. The second Ottawa looks weak. They know exactly what that's supposed to look like, and they've taken advantage of it time and time again.
Landon basically just a DPS at this point in time. I mean, he's playing out of the back line in a position that you would expect maybe like a Tracer to be in with this Baptiste. It, healing is not even a priority for him anymore. It's simply just fragging out and really showing us the, the dangers of a solid Bastion player. Cowman getting taken down right there maybe is a bit of a stepping stone for moving forward. But then look, Landon and Seasons combined for some kills. Landon still in the back line now with the damage amplification matrix. And in chat, Lump says, Landon, please stop. I'm <laughs> Just a child, and honestly, man, it's it's getting brutal out here. He's about to murk yet another tank. They just keep sending bodies out of this. Is like the old kind of uh, juggernaut mode in Halo. They just can't bring him down. There it is. I mean, just the cry for help coming out from the lump right there. He knows where all of this firepower just resides in, and it is a land and just being that seventh man. It looks like this team is honestly on like the likes of a power play this entire time because Landon is filling two shoes when. There's only supposed to be six people out there in this northern team. Always looks like somehow they've got seven. It's just more like 80s. He's, he's a tank right now. He's taking space. He's he's doing DPS. He's healing. It's crazy. It's actually genuinely uh, one of the best sort of uh, solo performances I think I've seen in a long time from a support. Simplistic here with the Transcendence, just trying to keep the team alive, trying to keep the dream alive for that matter. Not Sir bringing in the Gravitic Flux. Unfortunately, not a lot of dice off the back of that. Thinks he can maybe secure a kill here, but won't find it. Tyrell is down. Simplistic is down. Lump now pushing back in, into the mix and a good bit of damage minification right there as Lump is just annihilated by a nice clean volley from Yumitra. And uh, that will stop this attack dead from Ottawa University. Ten seconds left on their lifespan. Yeah, and I don't know if they're going to find their way back to point here. The distillery looks just too far away when Northam puts up the pressure right in the spawn doors for the third time in this one. And there's going to be no overtime. That's a clean 3-0 for Northwood. This was a matchup again, Corbeck, where it was a three seed versus a four seed in the current standings for Legends Division. And Northwood, they just stepped away from the pack right there. Yeah, that's a that's a big step. Let's just put it at that. One one small leap from Northwood, one giant leap for the rest of the pack uh, in between that third and fourth seed. Lump, though, getting well-deserved play of the game. I mean, Lump trying his level best throughout all of this, just never really able to come back up on top. And part of that is just Landon was so devastating and still walked out of that with 26% of his team's damage taken as healing, keeping in mind that he was literally playing in the back line, Berkeley, uh, for a significant point portion of that defense not really focusing on heels at all just an insane individual player performance mvp stuff right there yeah and if we had to talk about a player of the game it's no question from oh, map yeah. one all the way through map three there was like never a wavering moment where he was just less than dominant in the lobby it had to be landon he is the team's captain likely the igl i would really be like looking to talk to him as a player be like how does your team operate around a baptiste calling all the shots you can't dive in with the tanks but he's just the soldier on the high ground he's the mercy pocket on baptiste he's everything for this team corvette he really is. It was it was exciting to watch. And that Northwood team, man, uh, you got to watch out for them up here. I'm I'm still a little shocked they're only the three seed, if I'm being honest, based on the uh, performance they put on for us today. But they will doubtless be back with more action. But speaking of more action, there's more Overwatch to come here today on the NECC. Our next match coming up in just a few minutes will be the Arcadia Knights versus CCE Blue. So don't go anywhere. I have been Tristan Parker, a.k.a. Corbeck, alongside me it has been berkeley stevens aka old charge we hope you enjoyed this match and we hope you'll continue to watch necc throughout the rest of the day What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. 
and get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting at no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
All right, welcome back. Game two of the night for NECC's Overwatch Thursday. I'm Berkeley Stevens, joined this time by Dryad. Dryad, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited looking to very, be here. <laughs> yeah, looking very flashy. You were saying pregame, you got a nice camera upgrade. Coming in crisp, might I say. We got uh, some action today. Challengers Yellow Division. A little step down from the Legend Division. The last game, Northwood looked like world beaters. Their play was so crisp, so clean. This is going to be a step down from competition, but these two teams are coming in very evenly map, not matched. Sorry, Neither one has a loss so far. Arcadia had that week one bye, and they're 1-0. Champlain College Esports Blue, they're coming in at 2-0. Dryad, what are you looking for out of today's game? I mean, oh, the matches that I've seen so far here and... and at ECC have been really really interesting so far especially when it comes to Overwatch right because there's been a lot of action coming in and there's a lot of stakes there's a lot of pressure that every single team has so I just want to keep seeing more of that I want to see all the teams really bringing a lot of different compositions last time that I had the opportunity to cast along along with Teptulans it was pretty much that it was a lot of variety that we could see being brought in and I feel like that's already a change because um, I want to say last year, every single composition pretty much that he saw from collegiate teams was the same. But now they're bringing a little bit of variety, and that's what I want to see more. Yeah, and a lot of it is going to come down to those maps as well. We're going to start off with Li Zhang. Through three points, compositions, different strategies can work vastly differently on that. And then map two, for hybrid, we've got Blizzard World, another one where point one, point two, and point three are so different. Strategy adjustments are going to have to be made. And then closing things out every single stream, we do play all three maps of the game. And we're going to be closing on Havana. So to start things off here, Li Zhang Tower, teams yet to pick sides. Once they do, we'll talk about those compositions a little bit. But Dryad, from your experience casting games, seeing them on this map in particular, what have you seen work very well for teams? Yeah, especially on this map more than anything, I feel like the rush is always a possibility to bring in like a little bit of the Reinhardt, a little bit of the Symmetra, the Lucio. Those are really good, not only to take control of the point right at the beginning, but also to keep holding that point. And there's a lot of varieties, like we talked about. There's a lot of different things that anyone can bring here, but I love seeing the Reinhardt. I love the pressure that uh, this main tank is able to put compared to anyone else on the tank side. And then you have the variety of where the schools are going to come in. I do think this meta though, that we're already seeing from both sides is going to be crucial to see who gets the point first. I think you're absolutely right. Both teams running the sim, so it's gonna be the race to the window to start things off here. Duncan varying that composition a little bit on the May, but with the bubble both teams now clashing the main tanks, trying to finally make that presence felt. And it's gonna be Latrick opening the pick up here with that kill onto Jerry Barry, and that's going to give the advantage immediately to Arcadia as they come into their second kill so far. Duncan is able to find one, but it's not enough here as Arcadia just finds six quick picks. Kirby does get out alive, but it's going to be a recollect here for CCE Blue. That is exactly what I like to see the Reinhardt. I mean, we saw so many kills coming in for this team. They take control for Arcadia, and now it's going to be the Shatter as well available. And they, that's when we start seeing the difference. A Shatter ready versus the 50. Yes, 60. Okay, never mind. They're about to build it again. Yeah, Pluto looking to lay one down here. Shield almost cracked, and there it is. Amplification Matrix going to be countered by that big main tank play. Nemo and Latrick stepping up into a pair of kills there, and Arcadia look to hold this one. 27% and climbing. And they want to keep building more. I like teams that seem to be this confident. I feel the Shatter coming in, and it is also the rest of the team for that support. They have the Coalescence as well very soon to start off the next fight, and that is pretty much everything you need. The sound barrier from the side of CZE Blue is not even close, and they really need this at least to use it aggressively. Arcadia just has so many resources to hold this point. That Shatter does send four to the floor, and the kill on the Pluto is there. The pin as well onto Latric, and they're not done out of this fight. It is the Sparrow Show here as he's able to find three quick kills in the feed. The team there with the follow-up damage. We saw some ultimates used there, Dryad, by Arcadia, and that sim wall is coming up empty with value. Yeah, but they're not too worried about it yet. I mean, they have both of the support ultimates, and they have 63. Ideally, they wanted to pass a 70 mark, but that didn't really happen. Now, this is the coalescence that he talked about that they can initiate, but they also saw the sound barrier, but ideally, when you see the sound barrier being used, they also have the teleporter that we see being used right now. And the teleporter, crucial, getting the team where they need to go. 
Getting a little bit of lag in here, but it looks like the team's still fighting hard out onto the point. Ultimate's now coming loose. I see Nam lets loose that coalescence of hers, and the amplification matrix is there for Wolf Raider. Both of these girls trying to keep their teams in this fight, fully sustained through it. Still, though, it's anyone's game as Duncan lets the mail go, and it's going to be two kills for Latra coming through, but the bomb doesn't find anything shielded by Pluto Arcadia. Not out of this fight, the beat drop committed. The fire strike scorches down Wolf Raider, and Arcadia might actually have this flip. Really good timing for it as well. The the sound barrier, which I was worried about, they were able to use it just in time just to finish off that fight. And there was a lot of action that happened, but the team is able to get back the point. CCE Blue, though, they still have a couple ultimates to use. They have the Symmetra ultimate more than anything to initiate the fight, try to go in and get a couple kills again. That Shatter is going to connect three stunned Nemo finished off as is Icing and Bubba falling as well with that oh. Graviton Surge and CCE Blue. They look to come in quick, but Pluto makes a great counterplay that's going to find a couple of picks. That means this fight's not over as easily as CCE Blue would have hoped, but it seems like once this Reaper is dealt with, the flip will come through their way. It's going back and forth. We saw a lot of control at the beginning for the side of Knights, but then they lost it, and then they, the ultimate economy wasn't that good for them. Sure, they had some good moments, but it made it a lot more difficult to keep the point. There's another try, though. And it's going to be the Immortality Field being used, the Sin Wall as well, to keep them up and sustained through the Graviton Surge from Bubba. Now Bubba in some pretty dangerous positioning as CCE Blue starts to collapse onto this backline Dryad. Arcadia made a great play there with the Sim TP coming through with the grab as well, but great support play and great Symmetra Wall there we saw from Martis. And I was going to say, that is exactly what CCE Blue had to do. They have to put pressure. They don't want to let the set of Knights get any sort of point control. This is going to be the last fight territory. A couple ultimates to use, including that Reaper 1, which can get a couple kills or at least break that shield from the Reinhardt. Good rotation to avoid this amplification matrix sent out there by Wolf Raider. Now making their way to the point. Latrick booped off, but makes it back onto the map in time. This is crucial because he's got the ultimate, but the Diva Bomb is right on the doorstep and taken down by that fantastic ultimate from Herbie. That keeps CCE Blue in this, and they're starting to batter away Arcadia. Overtime starting to tick down, and I don't know if the Knights get back in time. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be possible. Ideally, I mean, they want to try to touch the point one by one. Try to have any chance, but... All the, all the fire going for the same player makes it impossible, and with that, that is exactly what we see. CCE Blue making a little bit of a change of pace halfway through this map. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A good adjustment there from them as they start to make things work there with the May. It was pretty tough as the map opened up because May doesn't have that great of a presence getting into the point like we'll see the reaper does along with the symmetra just so much burst damage up front duncan wasn't quite finding that but eventually those may walls were coming up in very crucial moments walling off the arcadia tanks and the cce blue team they did find a lot of success with that hero but it did take some time and i want to see because both blue teams they look really close so far but the question is can cce blue finish its map here this is another of those maps where you have to see the reinhardt and the symmetra Pretty much every single time and that is exactly what they're going to be doing on the side of nights so though it is a junk crap coming in yeah they ditch the symmetra right after the tp but Ooh. they are a little bit slower on the rotation their crusher 99 is brought down by duncan who beams pluto as well three quick picks for cce blue and neither of these teams dryad have lost a map so far in the necc so if this map of lijian goes to cce blue arcadia are finally scratching their heads for the first time all season yeah, there's a lot at stake here. There's the pride of being able to win pretty much every single map that you play. But that is not possible for both of these two teams in this match, at least. And to see E-Blue, they get to capture the point. But it seems like the attacking, the attacking side is ready to go again. Arcadia coming back into this one. Latrick switches over to the McCree for this one, adding a stun to the team. Sparrow, though, has this shatter wound up, waiting to just let it loose. Looks to his left, might be looking to his right here on the other side of this pole. Needs to lay it down as it looks like his team They've got a couple of picks in this one, but now Arcadia comes back with two of their own. The shield is cracked. Resources are dwindling. CCE Blue needs to make a play quick to keep this point. It looks like they've just lost Duncan. The Shatter comes through. It's landed onto the McCree and onto the Moira. They're both finished off. A great final stand from CCE Blue to not let go of this point. 
a little bit more control and that is exactly what they need to do if they want to win this map as well it's a lot of control a lot of kills happening one by one delaying a full push from the side of the enemy team especially because now they're going to have a lot of ultimates to work with not only both of the support ultimates but the shatter as well which allowed them on the last map to initiate the fight Ludo has been very good with these shatters as the team wraps around the left side. The window not quite there for him to let it fly. I'm mean, going to now with more resources, but that one gets blocked as a fantastic play is made by Sparrow, but he does go down to Crusher in the front line. Nemo now has this Death Blossom ready, looking to line it up on some squishy targets, but a good Symmetra wall is going to delay this, and Herbie finds one with the bomb. Bubba has fallen as well, the Martist, and this is still a CCE blue team that is not out of this fight yet. The point is ticking up almost 80%, and they haven't let go. I feel like there's so many ultimates that knights could have used, but they completely wasted a guard taking down before they even got the chance. They had the dead eye, for example, at least to create that space. And by the time that they get back to point, this is really going to be their last chance. It's already 90% for CE CCE blue. Nemo comes in, already knocked low, though. Coming in the back line now with the death blossom, but the peel is there. Herbie eats it all up. Crusher able to find one, but the rip tire from Martis finds two in response. Latrick popping the high noon, doesn't hold it long enough to find any eliminations. And now Sparrow moves back in, trying to cleave down Nemo on this Reaper. Icing them has fallen. Latrick responds with a kill of his own. Duncan is down. Crusher not out of this fight yet, but no ultimates on the side of Arcadia. It's going to be a much harder point to hold as CCE starts to come back in with some force. And they have just won Li Zhang and given Arcadia their first map loss of the season. CCE Blue, really, really good job on this first map. And that is exactly the impression that I want to take from them. And it is that they, they started the map very slow. They lost the first fight. They lost the second one. The enemy team, they had 60%. But that didn't really stop them. They started playing more aggressive. They started using those ultimates in a way that was more beneficial for the team. And that way we saw it on the first one and on the second one as well. To the point where, like you said, they took the first map from the enemy. Yeah, it's going to be tough. How does Arcadia respond to that? It seemed like Champlain College Esports, they were just in sync with that rush comp. The speed boosts were always there for Sparrow, as you saw in that play of the game, just rushing in and taking three kills, taking down three knights. Arcadia, it's going to be their job to respond on Blizzard World. We'll take you to map two in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.
All right, welcome back to map two in our second game tonight between Arcadia and Champlain College Esports Blue. So far, Champlain College Esports are looking strong in this one. They just won Li Zhang Tower, two to nothing. We're going to be going to hybrid. That means Blizzard World up next. Dryad, after a map like that, how does Arcadia respond going up against this brawl comp we're seeing from CCE? Uh, I think they had the right idea, right? We saw it at the beginning, they had a re the right idea on how to play aggressive, how to initiate those fights. But it was about the ultimate timing to me. That was a little off for this team. And I want to see those changes. Even if they want to play the mirror match, I think it is possible. But it's more of a matter of being able to use those ultimates a little bit more effectively, more than anything using them. It sounds like it's such a simple idea, but using them before the enemy team makes a massive difference. That's why we saw CCE winning, because they were initiating those fights and they were making the difference, getting that initial kill. Yeah, I think you're right. CCC or CCE, sorry, definitely controlled the tempo, the speed boost from the Lucio as well, helping them do that. But once they had that alt economy built up, it did seem like they were using them first and just kind of battering Arcadia, making sure the pressure was always on them, never on CCE. That's how they were able to win Li Zhang 2 nothing. But Blizzard World is a different story, and that could mean different comps on a more open map like this, Dryad. What do you expect teams to be playing? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. I always like talking about the Winston and the Saria, the double yes. bubble composition is my favorite more than anything else just because i mean it is a composition that requires a lot of communication a lot of synergy especially with the tanks more than anyone else but on top of that it is a composition that brings something new that we don't really see with the reiner and the saria or the reiner and the diva it, it it gives you the high ground position and gives you the high ground pressure that you want to create in that second point especially that is so long and that i feel like might help both of these teams win the map I think if there was a team that was going to be more likely to play that comp, it would probably be Arcadia. We've seen Bubba not really switch off of the Zarya too much. Latrick has been on that Reaper with some time so far. Those are usually two key heroes in that competition. Obviously the Zarya, but the Reaper does very well in a double bubble. But instead we do see a little bit of a mix, mix match comp here. Bubba on the Orisa, Pluto on the Reinhardt. That looks a little broken to me. CCE Blue looks a lot more collected. Their game plan is clearly straightforward with Sparrow on the Ryan, Herbie on the Diva for that flank peel. Keeping Duncan on the May, though, on a more open map could be pretty tough, but Arcadia is going to have a long walk to this first point. Yeah, it is going to be long, and I want to say the changes that, yeah, there it is. The Reinhardt Sarger definitely makes a lot more sense, but for the side of the defense, CCE Blue... It is a composition that I like more than anything because of the May. Because the May is going to allow them to hold a lot of space, use those May walls to their benefit. Ideally, even isolated their Reinhardt. It just all depends on what Knight is able to do with that synergy of all pushing together so the Reinhardt doesn't get taken down early on. And even if he does fall early, Icy Nim is on this Mercy, so she will be able to res him back up. Maybe steal some tempo for the attackers here as they start to make their first push. Pluto closes in and starts to cleave away against Sparrow. Both of these teams just trying to make this stand around this crucial corner. No one taking an off angle in this fight so far. Nemo, the closest thing we've got to a flanker kicking out to that left side. But looking at the all charge here, Sparrow again winning the race to shatter convincingly. Pluto only at 50% and Sparrow does have that blue check mark. Look for the Reinhardt for CCE to surprise you as he comes around this corner here. Arcadia starts to look vulnerable and there it is, the slam that finds three. Herbie there with the follow-up and that is a quick team wipe for CCE Blue. That was so fast, so swift. And it was just a matter of the 3-2-1 to be able to go in and get the kills. And with that, they're going to have the amplification, which is massive to create space for this team. And that is exactly what they need to do. They consume over a minute for the attackers here. And now with the amplification, they can waste a couple more seconds. You're going to create a little bit of space, create a little bit of chaos. That, exa that is exactly what they're going to do and want to do here to continue holding this defense. Going to be up to Crusher to make the counterplay here with the Ant Matrix. Rig Pig also has that online. Pluto finally having that shatter up, that red check mark ready to go as the rotation on the right side comes through. No speed boost to help him, but they do find the angle. And the Ant Matrix comes up, but that's a big wall by Duncan, locking Pluto up in the front line, and he will be capitalized on Duncan. Getting that kill, helping himself out with that great May wall, taking down the main tank, and that sends Arcadia running. And now there's definitely no opportunity for that Rusty to come in. The Reinhardt died 
pretty much on point where no one else was able to get there in time. A couple more kills coming in for the set of the defense. This is pretty much over for the attackers. They were playing so aggressive. They were trying to do a, a, a just pushing in and using that shatter. But once again, it is all about that communication. If your Reinhardt pushes alone a little too far, that may that is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to isolate you, take you down, even before your team is able to break down the wall. And we are seeing Arcadia take a different rotation this time. Dryer, they're going up to the high ground. That's a much better look considering they finally got some alts online to start taking advantage of this map. When the hand toes well, I like it. It's going to create a lot of space for them with the dragons and it's about to be ready as well. Now the ultimate starts to get let loose. Mart is popping the high noon to get things started here. Icy number responding with that Valk. That is going to keep the attackers up significantly here very well sustained but support ultimates for the defense cce blue they start to come through and again pluto shield just cracks in this fight and now sparrow has a free shatter he's just waiting for it the team though rolling in they know these kills are there's no ultimates needed to finish off this fight the more i see this map the more and more confidence cce blue seem i mean they don't have to use a lot of ultimates maybe why are teasing to be enough for them and there's a lot of ultimate still for them to use, and we talked about it. Knights, they're going to have available those dragons, and maybe the grab dragons coming in. That is pretty much their biggest opportunity. Ideally, taking the Lucio down first, though, because that sound barrier is going to keep them alive. There's a lot of weight on Jerry Berry's shoulders here to get a clutch sound barrier to win this fight for them. Arcadia has their best chance now to take a fight, but CCE still has so much of their alt economy left to play with. And that grab comes in, not eaten. The dragons are going to come through as well. The May ult, a full investment here, but it's Herbie's what? bomb finding two. Nemo's Blizzard will find a pair as well. It's an even fight as Jerry Berry goes down. The defense finally looking weak here, and the res coming through onto the main tank. Pluto back in the mix, and that should be the first point here capped for Arcadian Knights. And just at the last minute possible, just at the last second, they're able to make this happen and start moving that payload. But that was really clutch scenario. We saw two kills happening for this diva from CCE Blue. They almost got control finally. But they lost it immediately. It, it was so many ultimates that completely overwhelmed the defense. And now at least they have the high ground. Yeah, CCE Blue, they know exactly where to go here on this map to stop this point under this first choke wheel on second pluto wants to get up to this high ground but everyone on cce blue just ran out of spawn controlling the most important part of this map and now sparrow he looked to be making an aggressive play there that does back down pluto and the ant matrix keeps everyone on arcadia pushed back even farther but no one has fallen yet they're still in this fight ready to go back in with resources of their own it's all about the kills though that whoever gets that first kill is going to allow the payload to stop or to keep moving and that is why the defense they don't want to give them any space here Oh, Herbie, though, d Nemo falling as well. That's a one for one. But the off tank missing for the defense could prove to be fatal here. Sparrow trying to just get aggressive by his team, some space by his team, some time as Herbie tries to charge up that Diva mech and get back in as soon as possible. Still, the Reinhardt's locked in this duel. Both of them having the Earth Shatter, neither of them using it. There's so much tension around this corner as Latrick lets the Dragon Strike fly, pushing and now Storm Arrowing down Sparrow's shield. The Shatter comes through, only finding one, and that's bigger for Pluto. That is four quick kills for the man himself. And it is gonna be the Pluto show here on Street Space. A minute to push this payload to its destination. A minute, but that is not a lot of time. There's going to be another fight that we might be seeing towards the end. At least, like we talked about, the high ground positioning is going to go for this team, but they don't have a lot. If they lose it, the Reinhardt and the Saria are not going to be fast enough to get back up. And on the other hand, CCE Blue, they have the Lucio, and they have a little bit more mobility with the D.Va. They don't even need them, though. No, they don't. Mortis <laughs> comes in with a high noon and nothing is there to block it. That is just this defense pouring out a spawn, using one ultimate to control the rest of this game. Now with 25 seconds left, they still have Herbie's Bomb and Duncan's Blizzard. And Jerry Berry has the beat drop in case things get very testy here for final fight. They have pretty much everything they could need. It's going to be 13 seconds remaining. The defense holding strong, the payload moving back, and Knights... Amplification is not really going to get the kills. That is an ultimate that you can avoid. Deadeye, it is exactly the same thing. Bubba will have the Graviton Surge coming up. It's going to have to be huge. And there's no Better touch. touch. <laughs> no one makes it for Arcadia. Oh, my word. The ultimates come in, but it's already too late. The round stopped. CCE Blue with a big second point hold. And I think they know that Arcadia just... Uh, they, mm. they messed up getting to point right there, Dryad. 
They had plenty of time. Arcadia, they, they needed to have someone to touch. I don't know if it was a mistake that uh, they, they couldn't touch the point, but there was definitely the possibility, even if they had to change a couple of the heroes to get that speed, they, there was a possibility with the ultimates that they had. They had the Graviton, and they needed that close range more than anything, but that is very unfortunate for them. They don't really make it very far. They don't even make it past the second point. And that leaves a huge opportunity for CCE Blue to win their second map. It is a lot of confidence that we're seeing from this team. We saw it on the defense over and over again. They didn't even have to use ultimates to get the kills and to initiate the fight, completely shutting down the set of Arcadia. And talking about CCE Blue, they look so good on all the comps they've played so far. This one very different from the rest, though. This Wrecking Ball dive comp they have. Arcadia is going to have such a difficult time finding a target to focus. Likely it'll be a support, but the tanks and the DPS on this composition can just take so many angles around Brawl comps. Arcadia is going to have a very difficult time defending as they're going to be constantly turned around every which way. I feel like this comp is pretty much a nightmare because you have... Everyone, I mean, it's going to be the Wrecking Ball in the back line, the Diva putting pressure in the front line, giving a little bit of support to the to to the supports more than anyone else. And then you have the Echo in the air putting pressure. And looking at the composition for Arcadia, they pretty much have to play so close together that this is a recipe for disaster for them. Yeah, they really have to just blow up the Wrecking Ball. Hope Nemo can get in a good wall or a clutch freeze to take care of a tank because it's going to be so crucial to get the first pick in all of these fights because dive has so much more potential to swing a fight if it goes on too long and now we see the first one starting to transpire as martist almost gets taken down going with some early tracer action there as the slam comes in from sparrow duncan is there with the sticky grenades and finally this dive beginning to close in cooldowns have been used no immortality field for crusher no maywall left for nemo and sparrow has fallen first Latra coming with the kill in onto him in this death ball. Looks okay for now as the dive has been thwarted off once, but they've got to be careful. Cooldown's coming back online for CCE Blue. Could just turn the tide. And once again, it is all about the pressure. It is all about building, building those ultimates again. And we can see the pressure that the church is just putting in the back lane. No one even looking at her. No, Marta's pretty much running free, hasn't been finished off yet. Rigpig comes in with a Discord kill onto the main tank. Pluto, Pluto does get rezzed back in, and Jerry Berry goes down as well. So CCE Blue having to commit this transcendence to keep their tanks alive in this fight. And now the Maywall's coming through. Pulse Bomb attached to the Reinhardt. Sparrow rolling through as Pluto is finished off by the Pulse. Still, though, looking for answers as CCE Blue. Sparrow is knocked low, has to be careful, doesn't make it out alive as Latrick is able to get that kill, but not before Duncan is able to find Crusher. And now the attackers are starting to look good here. I see them on 1 HP behind the post, will eventually fall to Rig Pig, but hiding from that Diva Bomb on a very small kitchen tile. Finally, this out of Arcadia getting taken down, but CCE Blue, even though it took them a little bit, they were able to not only get the point, but build a couple ultimates that are going to be ready very, very soon. And that includes that Riley. We always talk about this Riley and how strong it can be. This is especially the case for this team. They've been doing so good. They've been playing so aggressive that this Riley is going to give them that extra boost that they need to go in. Okay, the trees are getting taken down, but the payload is going to keep moving. And they also have to duplicate more than anything. They can turn into pretty much anyone that they want and it's going to be good enough. Yeah, Duncan's ultimate is so huge in this scenario. All of these targets on Arcadia are insane for the copy. Pluto coming down to the back line. And he's got the shadow looking for a moment to use it. And it comes down there. The hammer brought down on Duncan. And that should be three picks. One of them is Duncan mm -hmm. in the copy, but it's more than enough. Arcadia able to hold this point here. And all with the shatter. That is exactly what I wanted to see from Arcadia. Just making one ultimate be effective. We talked about it in the last map. There were a lot of mistakes of using too many ultimates at once. No, using them when they needed to. But the shatter came in exactly in time to for them to take control of the point again. To stop the payload from moving forward. And also wasted the duplicate from CCE Blue. Which we talked about. It could have been so beneficial for them. That was their best looking ultimate in that previous fight. Now they're going to have the Pulse Bomb, which is stuck onto the Mercy, and Icy Nim is taken down. That means no res available here, but Martis is taken down. Again, a 5 versus 5 fight. The freeze onto the Diva, not enough to finish off Herbie. And now they should be coming in with the support ults, but Jerry Berry falls the pin from Pluto Connects. Oh. 
the there amplification is. as well. It's just not making it easy for any of the teams. It's just all about the trades coming back and forth. That was a good matrix there just to keep the attackers alive in that fight. The res does come through onto Crusher here, but the payload just getting closer and closer to the finish line. CCE though, they've got some ultimates to work with. Still the support alts available for them in this fight. And a That's pretty a desperate rest that we saw as well coming through. Just trying to make it work. But if your Mercy getting, is, gets taken down at the end, it seems like it was completely pointless. I thought that Diva Bomb flying in over the top would have found a little more value, but it did come up empty. And it's just a trade fest here. It looks like a team deathmatch as these teams are just not quitting. Ultimate's committed late in this fight, but always finding value. It looks like CCE does have the edge here as the attackers are able to finish Blizzard World with 157 on the clock to move up 2-0 in this game. And so far, looking really good. I mean, I feel like they should have uh, held a, a defense on that first point, like we saw from CCE. They were so strong, they were winning every fight, and it was just in the last second that they were overwhelmed by the ultimates from the enemy team. But they definitely have proved themselves to be the better team, already winning two maps. Pluto has made such a difference in this one for Arcadia, but it hasn't been enough. That was a great play of the game there to block the Earth Shatter and then counter that window by hitting that four-man shatter of his own. We'll see if those efforts pay off in our next map. Havana's compositions, I'm sure, will change. But, Drya, do you think Arcadia has a good chance in this one? It seemed like they were able to make CCE look a lot more human on Blizzard World. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have a chance here. They they have some really good fights, but the, mat, the, the thing here is that they're not really able to keep up winning those fights and that is the the thing that we talked about is it is a lot of the ultimates it is a lot of mistakes in their positioning and that is causing them two maps already and even though cce has gotten the win as always here we play every map for map differential going into the playoffs at the very end of the semester so don't go anywhere havana right around the corner
Welcome back, back map number three, Havana, about to be underway between CCE and Arcadia. So far, it's been CCE, the story of this one, just strong arming Arcadia on two maps and many different comps through this one. Going into Havana, we can see poke work a lot, but Arcadia, I think they go to comfort picks to finally make CCE look a little bit weaker in this one. Dryad, what do you think? Yeah, it, I feel like more than anything, Havana is one of those maps that we either see... Uh, a completion of the map and pretty much over time or we don't even see the second part of the map i feel like there's no in between because it is so difficult uh, i like when the defense they like to play that rush at the beginning they like to play with a reinhardt and they go right into the spawn i feel like that is so effective at least to waste a minute and a half maybe from the enemy team from the attacking team who are just trying to get out and getting taken down so I would say to start it off, I would like to see the Reinhardt coming in, but there's a lot of possibilities. I feel like this is one of those maps that, like you mentioned, there's a lot of poke potential more than any other map. But there's also the possibility to bring even a dive if, they, if one of the teams really, really wants to. Yeah, and on that, on that third point, excuse me, when things really start to open up and dive tanks can be a little more mobile, that's when that could look yeah. really good. But points one and two, just so strong for a brawl or a poke comp, like we've said. And like you were pointing out, this is one of the few maps in Overwatch where just holding the spawn doors, like the welcome mat to the map, is one of the most effective strategies yeah. <laughs> on this payload map. Yeah, it is so effective. That's what I'm saying is one of my favorite things to see. And, you know, when, when the game, when the map came out, I was a little hesitant about it because I was like, hmm. I mean, you're going to get taken down at some point, right? And, and it feels pointless, especially if you're going to change heroes right after. But it is so effective just because of how strong it is and how strong the positioning of the defense can be there. That you're often able to waste at least, I feel like, 45 seconds. I'm, I feel like I've never seen the attackers take down the defense immediately if they're going for that strategy. Yeah, it always will chew up some time on the clock. And in payload, that's the most important thing. No matter when you reach the third point, you always get a crack at a second attack if this one is tied 3-3 after the first round. So time is crucial in this game mode. And now we finally get to see the compositions. Arcadia still on this Brawl comp, Bubba on the Zarya, Nemo on the May, and then CCE, they're still with a dive comp. But Dryad, this looks a little funny. Martist on Torb, Duncan on Genji. I think we, I think we see things switch up a little bit here. Hmm, I feel like you're feeling a little too confident. Uh, and, you know, this is that is something that you like to see, but at the same time, if it doesn't work at the beginning, you better change it fast. And for the set of Arcadia, they are bringing exactly like we talked about. It is a composition, pretty much a rush, that is going to hold them very, very close. Yeah, the May really does just design this strategy, May walling them in spawn, just trying to split up the team a little bit. We'll see how CCE responds as Nemo will just try to be disrupting the entire time. That wall does come through. Pluto doesn't know what to do with the Discord on his head. Finally does get that shield up and he's able to stay alive. Yeah, and it's going to be a lot of the back and forth as well. If the attackers want to get out of here, they do get one massive pick though. The Reinhardt getting taken down. That's going to be big going forward here. Latrick trying to go crazy on this McCree with a Peacekeeper. Throws in that stun. Unable to hit the headshot to finish off Herbie. But it doesn't seem to matter. CCE Blue has a number of picks in this one. And the payload should be pushing forward here. It will be moving forward. And yeah, like we talked about, they get taken down pretty fast for the set of a defense. But they're able to wait a little bit of time, which at the end, that is exactly what they wanted to do. They're able to hold the point again before it gets to that first checkpoint. And that is pretty much all they need before they build this ultimate. Sparrow coming in right now on the Wrecking Ball. Has that Mines farmed up. Has to be careful not to get stunned and sent back to spawn quickly by Arcadia. And it looks like that's going to happen. Nemo with the Helix and the damage boost from the Mercy. Taking down the Wrecking Ball. That is crucial. Member loss there for CCE as the Pulse Bomb is stuck on the Bubba. But somehow Bubba kept up by these supports. Crusher though does fall to the one clip from Mardist. And Mardis, despite coming up empty on that Pulse Bomb, still making the presence felt, finding both supports as CCE gets back to the payload in just the right time. And once again, it continues to be back and forth. I'm so hesitant because this Wrecking Ball is trying to stay alive for so long, but always playing a little bit more into the back lane than I would like to. That is pretty much the job of this tank, but you have to be careful not getting taken down and 
We see CCE Blue, they get to capture the first point. And on top of that, they're going to have EMP, which is massive against the composition that we see Arcadia playing. That is going to be huge for them in this fight. Duncan has to get a ton of value with that ultimate up here. And there it is, the EMP finding five members of Arcadia as they're brought up with the Flux. And the Mines are there to find four. A fifth found as Martis comes into the back line, helping Sparrow out with these final couple of kills. What a fantastic ultimate from the tank player for CCE Blue. Uh, that was so good to see the Wrecking Ball that I was talking about, being able to get four kills. And there's nothing else that I like more than those flashy kills that really make a difference, those flashy ultimates. And that is exactly what CCE Blue is able to do. They continue to move the payload, they continue to have ultimates, and now they can initiate with the rally. And now the side of Arcadia, they are running out of options here on the second point. Martis has just been a thorn in their sides all game, but finally brought down to start a fight here. Latrick popping the hind end, but again, no Elims found as Herbie. Gobbles that one up in Diva's defensive matrix, and the ultimates for CCE Blue start to come in, but countered by the Valkyrie. He's going to bring out the bomb and the Transcendence. The bomb comes up empty. The Trance does keep the team active in this fight for a little while longer. But it's going to be Crusher from the high ground with the Ant Matrix, probably holding second point here for Arcadia. And a little bit of a defense that they were able to get in the second point. They almost lost it, but this last kills really made a difference for this out of Arcadia. And on top of that, they're going to have the rest for Nemo, which has always been official. But one thing, though, CCE Blue, they didn't use that rally. So that is something that we can expect, even along with the mines, I wouldn't deny. Just because they're able to rotate this ultimate so well. Great piece of work there from the defense to make sure they kept three ultimates, like you were saying. Or sorry, from the attack to keep those three ultimates because that fight, once Crusher popped that Matrix, it was all said and done there. Now going in for their second attempt, Jerry does pop that rally, keeping them all alive as Sparrow comes in with the minefield. And they've got the EMP if they need it, but those ultimates, Dry, they just come up so empty there. All the kills on the ground found by Arcadia, and they're finally looking very good on a defense. And I know I talked about how CCE Blue was good about using those ultimates first, but I feel like that Riley was way too early for the team. They didn't even engage in time. And that is also not an ultimate that you have a lot of time to react to because the team is the enemy team is also able to prepare for it. So now all it, it all goes back to the EMP. It all goes back to this classic ultimate to try to make a difference this time around. That is so much about what this composition is based around, but Arcadia is able to set up this defense very spread out. Bubba, however, does fall early. Good support play there to keep up. I see an MTPing now for the EMP, and that's going to find three members. Can they finish off any? It doesn't look like the follow up is quite there. Pluto does go down the main tank, not able to make it out of the hack, and that is two picks now as they're trying to get one back from spawn. Seems like CCE Blue has this, despite not getting much value on many ultimates. EMP Dryad, it never fails. It never fails, and the thing that made a difference there was that EMP was able to hack the Mercy, making her unable to use that Valkyrie. And that Valkyrie would have kept the team alive for a little bit longer, but this Mercy, completely unable to do anything, doesn't really give the control that Arcadia needed on the defense for a little bit longer. And so the payload is going to continue moving. The side of CCE Blue is going to continue rotating those ultimates, and now is when it gets a lot more difficult for them as well. Yeah, as the streets phase of this map really starts to open up here, Latrick on this hit scan, already finding value, headshots down Martis, those flanks coming up empty, Pluto sends in a shatter, but it doesn't find anyone, instead the response here from Rigpig with the Transcendence, the Discord still on Pluto, and he is going to be melted away with everyone on his side falling as well, that pulse bomb, the final say in the matter. One pulse bomb and... Look at that, it was three or four kills I feel like that I saw for this Tracer as well. And this is one of those heroes that we don't talk about that often, but it's always making a difference. Even if they're not able to get the kills, they're able to put enough pressure on the tanks, melting that HP away, and then allowing their rest of the team for success. We also see a couple changes now, Arcadia on the Sigma. And Nemo coming out on the Widow as well, trying to take advantage of these sight lines. Latrick is able to find the first pick of the fight with a little help from Crusher's Ant Matrix there. The hit scan looks so strong on this final point. It's just such a long walk from the spawn here on third point. And these sight lines for hit scan are always so wide open. And I'm looking at CCE. At some point, you have to put a shield on because the double hit scan threat has to have something in the way. 
Yeah, unless they're able to get the support in the backline, but even that is not going to be easy. They have an immortality, and they also have the Mercy, who is able to fly away, potentially. So, like you said, they need a little bit more damage, they need a little bit more of those conclusive kills, which so far haven't really shown up. They're hoping to get that EMP for the last fight. Great Mercy Pocket here to keep Latrick alive, trying to find this Wrecking Ball, and Sparrow will go down. Just 40 seconds on the clock. CCE would be smart to regroup quick and go again for a next fight instead of choosing to engage right now. But the Graviton Surge, it does come through Arcadia, pushing their advantage now. The rally in response, but Nemo headshots down Duncan. Artist able to get the pick onto him, and it's back to a five versus five as Sparrow is back in the mix. Coming in now with the slam, but it's stunned out. The Wrecking Ball Mine still deployed here. Dryad still, anyone's fight up five versus five. The defenders have their member back from spawn. The bomb coming in, Jerry Berry with the only kill though. And it's with a shield bash onto the Mercy. Now the dive right onto the Sigma here. Pluto erased, Bubba gone. The attacker's looking very good. Trying to finish off Ivana here, 10 meters to go. Wow, that was such a perfect flux of, uh, of ultimates as well coming through for the set of CCE Blue. One by one, they were using those ultimates trying to get the kills. But this is going to be the overtime where the defense tries to get a little bit of a boost. And there it is. It's just a wrecking ball spinning and trying to get a chance here. Esports ready strats from Bubba right there. <laughs> Spin the win just like Coach threw it up. But unfortunately, the tanks have already gone down. Overtime yeah. starting to dwindle. The Matrix from Crusher in the corner might be the last hope. But it's not finding any picks. It's all CCE blue. And they're able to finish the map in overtime. Even if the defense has the advantage here, it is not possible. And wow, CCE Blue, what an amazing performance that we've seen from them so far. And I talked about it. This is one of those maps where they either go to overtime or we <laughs> don't even see the second point. So I want to see what Arcadia is able to do now. That was Arcadia's best map, and it wasn't even close. They really looked good right there. It made me think that if they ended up touching the point on Blizzard World, they might have been able to win it. Because, again, CCE yeah. <laughs> doesn't have the greatest looking attack there. We can see that. They're a defense first team, I would say, Dryad. And, it, and it's so risky as well. I feel like there's some teams that, even though I would always go with the defense, I feel like there's some teams that are so good at attacking that I, I kind of get why they would want to attack first. But for the set of CCE Blue, they're good at attacking and defending from what you've seen from them. Sure, it went to overtime. This is a map that... It started off as is very difficult to complete. So uh, the fact that they were able to do so really shows the level that they have on top of the two other maps that we already saw from them. But Arcadia, they even with the spawn advantage that they had at the end, it was so difficult again because they weren't really rotating those ultimates the way that the enemy was doing. It was either using two ultimates at once or keeping them for a little bit too long, or maybe even if they were able to use that ball screen even run away a little bit because they don't have a Lucio to avoid that EMP, that would have been ideal for them. You're absolutely right. Just like you were in the pregame when you talked about holding spawn here up on top of the gas station with the <laughs> Reinhardt and everyone else. I mean, that's just a nice little friendly group up there. We're seeing from CCE as they start to spill into this first corner and just deny everything for Arcadia. But Bubba ends up coming up big, as does Nemo. The pick starting to be found from Arcadia. A great first push out of spawn here. It's going to give them some serious alt charge for the next fight. And really not as much time as CCE Blue was hoping to chew off with that hold. It was actually really fast for this team. Everyone got taken down and didn't even get a chance. They were, they were seeing the changes coming through very fast. And unfortunate situation, but again, at least so when you lose that defense, you're able to come back and try to make something happen and ideally build those ultimates before they pass this corner. And they're coming in now. Sparrow just looking for a slam and all these targets looking real juicy down below. Comes in, but Martis has gone down. The DPS missing here for CCE Blue's dive. It's going to be very tough to re-engage on this fight as Arcadia finally has some ultimates coming online. The res will get Rig Pig back in the action, but still CCE Blue is missing a member coming back from spawn. Latrick on this left side, waiting to pop this high noon. This entire team shifting this way, trying to set up the window, trying to set up the high noon to finish off this first point. I love the way Arcadia is playing in this map. They're very together, all on the same page. And now we see the window coming in, and this should be enough, Dryad. This definitely should be enough. The amplification, just creating that necessary space, pushing everyone that was still alive all the way back or taking them down. 
And with Arcadia, they look like a completely different team now. They are playing so aggressive. They won that first fight. And they haven't lost it. They've lost a couple members, but that doesn't really affect them too much as they continue to build up Halo. They continue to have those ultimates. That is all they need right now. I would like to see him give Latrick a little bit of help. I think he's got the right idea going up to that high ground early, but without support from the team, he's got to back off around the first corner because CCE can engage so fast onto a McCree with this dive comp. Latrick, though, has the Mercy Pocket with him, and that is enough to take down Sparrow. Now should have plenty of room to use this High Noon, taking down the Echo as well, the Mercy above him. This is where things can really start to steamroll here for Arcadia in the distillery. And the payload in the meantime continues to move. It seemed like CCE Blue, they were feeling a little too confident here. They didn't expect so much aggression coming from the set of Arcadia, who already took down this Inyata. It's going to be the rest, but it's already wasted for the fight. Yeah, you would love to have that for mid-fight just to swing the tempo back, but Rig Pig does come out with the Transcendence just to try and keep the uh, Defender CCE in this fight because Latrick, he's doing so much work in the McCree. He's everywhere with the with the Mercy Pocket, sorry. And Bubba up front, pretty much frontlining for this team alongside Pluto. With Latrick on the outside like that, it's just so tricky to find a target for this dive to focus. Did they go frontline? Did they go for Latrick? Nothing seems to be working right now for CCE Blue. And it's going to be a complete change here. I don't know if it, in my view, though, the potential change of those heroes that have not been effective so far. But the minefield might be creating a little bit of space very soon. Even though that is not enough, they ideally need some protection if they want to play aggressive, if they want to play close and stop this payload. Yeah, you're right. And CCE Blue, they haven't been doing themselves any favors by kind of playing mystery heroes. This round, we can see Arcadia has had the advantage in ultimates all round long and that headshot there another one oh the hanzo letting the arrows fly nemo is starting to feel it with the hot hand the res getting the zen back into the action here for the defense but i think the damage has been done from arcadia they've got the grab they've got the dragons a window coming up soon latrick has the high noon this should be all the alt economy they need to buy this third point are we sure this is the same cce that we saw before no, I'm not. <laughs> little confused by what they're doing here they're about to build a couple ultimates though and they also have the defensive defensive advantage but no kill so far no that grab doesn't have the dragon sent through it and it does come up empty on kills a good ultimate there from sparrow to just keep the attackers at bay but they're coming in now with that second wind crusher lets that window up does a little bit of construction work by the payload and we should start seeing some more ultimates used soon as duncan sends in the dragon strike Martis will have the pulse bomb here, but it looks like Arcadia is starting Ooh. to use something to make some space. That's a huge stick right there onto the Hanzo, taking down Pluto on Ryan as well, and CCE. It didn't look good for them, but now it looks like they're able to survive another fight. That is, I think, the first fight that we see this team completely win. It was going only for the set of Arcadia on the last fights that we've seen on first, second, and this third part of the map. But they have a stop finally for this payload but i mean even then there's over two minutes for the attackers to make something work and they just need a couple ultimates to get that confidence going especially those dragons they were so effective they created so much space and it is also one of those ultimates that you're able to build so fast Arrow does go down first here, but the Wrecking Ball will have no problem getting out of spawn for this last fight. Arcadia has to make the move quick. The Shatterlands, the High Noon finding the Tracer. That is three picks down. Closing in now on the Zenyatta Rig Pig, taken care of by Bubba with the Mercy damage boost. Icy Nim popping the Valk, and that is going to do all the support work this Arcadia team needs. As long as they live from this minefield, this should be the third point for the Knights. Oh, but the last opportunity here to touch one by one, ideally not getting taken down, but that is not going to be possible because these attackers, they're playing so aggressive. They actually get a lot more time than CCE Blue. A very good round for Arcadia there, finally making CCE Blue look human. Again, this CCE Blue team has not dropped a map all season, so even though the game has been won by CCE Blue, map differential always matters toward the end of the semester. I've casted NECC for a year now, and I've seen over five teams make it in by one or two maps at the end of a season, so these matter. They're going to come around for these top four teams if you're on the bubble. 
every single map could matter. So CCE Blue, they are not looking to give this one away. They are not trying to be soft on Arcadia here. Arcadia has just been so well put together here on Havana. That is one of my favorite things about NECC, and is that we have every single team, they know the importance of playing their best at all times. Like you said, the map differential, they can, it can affect them a lot as we get closer and closer to playoffs and as defining who is going to be in the top of that table. So it, it, there's a lot of tournaments where we don't see this happening, where teams, maybe they don't feel like they need to win every single map. But here, there's a lot of pressure every single time for every player to play their best. And that is exactly what they're doing. Even though there is... Okay, never mind. There was going to be Genji. Not anymore. So <laughs> there's we are, never we a Genji good. triad. There's never I a got Genji. scared for a second. There is a possibility. I feel like the last week I saw one, so... A rare occurrence. That's a yeah. big stun there. The tank's looking weak. It looks like, again, using the May, using the McCree, trying to hold this spawn. A very good strategy here for the overtime. CCE Blue attacking with less time than Arcadia. Again, starting to build up a little bit of Ultimate's Rig Pig. Already does have that window ready to go. Crusher 99, not even at 50%. The attackers use it to finally make some space, but instead shut down Crusher and Nemo. There with the eliminations and still stuck in spawn is CCE. 20 seconds remaining. There's not a lot of time to work with as well. Playing this very passive. I don't know if they're going to push together. It's a little disorganized here, but out the right side they go. Sparrow getting close to that Earth Shatter. No other teammates on the side of CCE have that many, have that much ult charge. The Shatter gets frozen. Ooh. Big play from Duncan there to deny it. And Sparrow now has a Shatter that he's looking to line up. Out of the way of the shield and landing it down onto two. The Ant Matrix coming through, trying to make this final stand for the defense last here in the spawn door as overtime begins to tick away. Latrick giving the defense a little more hope here with the pick onto Duncan. Grab gets eaten up by Herbie. What? A massive play. The attackers, CCE Blue, not out of this one yet. Sending a fire strike through three members, but finding no kills. Latrick now with the high noon around the left side, but brought down by Rig Pig. Herbie finding a pick as well, and the payload should continue to push here. And just in time, that was so... What a, what an intense fight that we just saw. It was the grab getting eaten. It was also the worst possible timing for the Shatter as the Reinhardt gets frozen. But finally, the attackers for CTE Blue, they get a chance to move the payload a little bit. They get a chance here, once again, here in Havana to see if they're also able to win this map. And they have a couple ultimates. They have the Shatter to initiate, but... Well, at least it can't get frozen. <laughs> it can't get frozen, Latrick. Might be able to stun it though. Now the bomb comes in. Ultimate Tempo taking advantage of again. Two kills found on the back of that bomb. The space was made to erase Pluto with the help of Duncan freezing him up. And that is going to be more than enough here for CCE to take the first point. But Dryad, I'm looking at the time banks and Arcadia did such a great job on attack that this isn't even that, that scary of a position to be in. Their time bank up near three minutes could be plenty of time to get well past the first point. I think the only time when you start getting worried about this is if the attackers are able to get past the second point. That is when you start questioning if you also have enough time to make it happen. But CCE Blue, they're looking a lot better than we saw them doing that last round where they didn't really look them like themselves. They have a couple ultimates. They have the Blizzard more than anything to create the space here. Big headshot there onto Jerry Berry. Sends the attackers on the back foot. That shatter comes up empty there. And ultimate starting to be set loose here from Arcadia coming in now. Nemo on the outside has found three picks, no, four in this fight. The arrows are finding bullseyes out here, Dryad. And it should be Arcadia stopping this right here, what? right now. I'm pretty sure no one ever looked at Nemo. I'm pretty sure no one really turned around to leak this hand. So throughout the entire uh, part of the second uh, of the second part it was insane so many hitches as well with those arrows and that is what i like to see from this team finally ending the push that the attackers from cce blue were getting and getting a chance for arcadia i said it the time where they would start to worry was if the payload passed the second part but he didn't so they have a lot of time to work with yeah, the objective of that last fight was finding Nemo. The difficulty was impossible. He did so <laughs> much work on that high ground. And that, to your point, exactly right. Halfway through second point, a very achievable game in the reach of Arcadia. They're going to have to get out of spawn. They were very fast at 
getting past the spawn hold from CCE in the first round. It all comes down to this overtime, though. They've got to get out of there quickly and with alt charge. Yeah, like I said, it all comes down to this. As well as opportunity to see for Katie, they're able to win at least one map. They already lost two. But the map differential, we talked about it, it is so important. And on top of that, you want to have the confidence that you're able to beat the enemy team. Because CCE Blue, even though they were doing so well in that first and second map, they lost a couple fights and that was an indication that Arcadia, they had an opening and they're making it happen now. I like how every time CCE is like, yeah, we're going to set up here, up on top, for no <laughs> reason at all, but we'll be up there. And then they just come down right away, up to the corner. Yep. This is, this is when a mistake could happen, though. That Maywall does wall off the attackers, though. The pin for Sparrow connects, and the Immortality Field already taken care of. Crusher now without that ability. The attackers, Arcadia, already backing up into spawn. They don't want to take any chances here. They don't want to go at a fight where maybe they try and find a pick. No, just wave after wave. Don't mess with the time bank here. That is exactly what you need to do. All, work all together because you're going to continue getting taken down. And also, more than anything, you have to watch for Nemo, who no one's looking at again. Now, it seems like he's never with his team. And even though I hate seeing players in my games do that, Nemo is able to make it work. No one looking at him still in the background. <laughs> Finally get some attention from the Lucio, but not before some picks get found here. Latra coming in on the backside. With the McCree rolling into three kills there, Nemo able to finally take down one. But Dryad, you're so right. The strategy for this team is just hide Nemo, have Nemo get all the attention of CCE, and that's when the front line goes in. I, I was really questioning if anyone could see Nemo. I mean, everyone was turning around, and okay, he wasn't getting the kills right away, but he was putting he was putting damage, he was putting pressure, and the minute that he looked at oh. him, though. Uh, the, the McCree on the other side got the kill, so it was pretty much a nightmare of how strong these two DPS are working together. And this is how things can change going into a poke map. It could be your team just has that cracked out Hanzo player. Nemo gets the hot hand and the arrows start finding foreheads because that's been the story of this one is Nemo giving his team that hope they need to take a map off of CCE Blue. Ant Matrix coming out to open off this fight. Arcadia though sitting on some ultimates. Shatter sounds like it gets used. High noon popped as well. Not sure who's in this fight as I am lagging like crazy, but CCE is there with a couple of kills out of response. Finally defending Will. And the kills coming back and forth, but it's going to be CCE Blue, the ones coming up on top at the end, stopping the payload. And all the time that we talked about, it is going away. And there's only. 40 seconds remaining, Arcadia Knights, who had so much time remaining and so many opportunities, they're wasting them. This could be the last fight territory for them. Yeah, I would say it certainly is last fight territory because even if they win this one, Nemo with another big pick on the off angle, but even if they win this one, it's still going to be an overtime by the time they reach the finish line. So even though the kills are coming through right now, it's not like CCE has given up on this game. They are going to have four ultimates coming online for this true last fight in Distillery, but overtime is bound to be underway shortly. Arcadia is looking at just the grab and the Dragon Strike along with a Valk for a support alt. Is that going to be enough, Dryad, to win them this final fight? I mean, that just puts a lot of pressure into her beyond this diva to try to eat the grab. And even to retreat the dragons, I mean, either or, that would be enough to keep the team alive. Because if the dra grab dragons comes in, there's pretty much no way to stop it. Grab does not get eaten. The dragons come through early, and that should be enough to finish up. Three kills there for Nemo. Herbie does send in the bomb, only finding one, though. The Mercy taken down for Arcadia, but that is not enough picks. Put a stop to this payload yet. Blizzard from Duncan also sent out to the pitch. Bubba actually taken down. Nemo falling as well. The payload still awfully close. Just three meters to go. A touch has to be there soon, but it's not prevalent in Arcadia. Able to take a map off of CCE Blue for the first time all season. And not able to touch at the end. The May almost coming in clutch, but at the end, this map will go for the side of Arcadia, who did a really good job. Changing the narrative, proving that they could also win a couple of maps against CCE. And and winning so many fights, I feel like this is the most fights that we've seen them win uh, on every map that we saw today. Yeah, I think you're right. They really just looked like a well-oiled machine on compositions. They seem to have practiced a lot more in that last one. So I love to see that from this team finally coming up with some great play late in the game, stealing a map off of one of the better teams in their division. 
mean, Champlain College Esports, they're no slouches. They looked so strong in maps one and two. So for Arcadia to bounce back like that and take Havana pretty convincingly, at least in the first round, that is a great look for their team going forward. I think they're still keeping their heads held high despite the loss this week. Dryad, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially because it was 2-1 at the end. And that is, that is something that you need for confidence. Knowing that you can beat the enemy team if you maybe play a better composition, play a map that it is more beneficial to you. And that is exactly what we saw Arcadia do. Like you said, and we keep bringing up, the map differential can play a massive part. So they got away with one. And on the other hand, CCE, they are looking really good as well. I would have to say that both of these two teams are going to look like Titans in their division. Dryad, talking about player of the game, did you have anyone in mind for this one? It's going to be... I, I Honestly, I want to give it to Nemo because that last... The, everything that we saw towards the end really changed what we had. But I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really a tough one, especially when we talk about CCE. Everyone was doing a massive job at working together, right? Yeah, you're totally right. I think the biggest difference maker in the game on tank, probably Herbie, but still it's so much more than that because yeah. Nemo made this a different outcome on Havana. It looked like it should have been a 3-0 and then Nemo just kept Arcadia in this through Havana and got his team the map win. I think you got the right idea with Nemo though because his team without his help on the Hanzo, it would have not been the same outcome. Yeah, and, and I mean, honestly, CCE, they, they really did a really good job, like you mentioned, the tanks were able to play a lot of different compositions and that made a difference for them and on top of that everyone was playing together they were coordinating when they wanted to go in when they wanted to go out when the may wall more than anything like we saw in blister world was going to get used to isolate the target so i feel like everyone really did a good job for both of the teams it was just the narrative that allowed arcadia to win the last map was pretty much all about nemo it was definitely all about Nemo. Chat, make sure you stick around. We've got three more games tonight. The next one going to be Augustana College versus North Central Timberwolves. So make sure you stick around for that. I've been Berkeley Stevens alongside Dryad. It's been a pleasure. Hope you have a good rest of the stream here for the NECC. As Overwatch action continues, stick around. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with a hometown gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
And we are back, friends. My name is Jeff. This is my friend Billy coming in. Props to Dryden Old Charge for starting the night off strong. But we are here to guide you through games three and four of week three here in the NECC Fall Tournament. Yep. Well, looking at Augustana College, uh, looking at a 2-0 and record to start our season off here, led by Vanilla Big Hug in the flex role. It looks like they're going to be playing in the tank role, according to our lobby. Going up against the 0-2 North Technical College, North Central Technical College. Uh, haven't won a map yet, so this might be a one-sided affair. However, this is Overwatch, and just like any other sport, any other esport out there, any given day, you can win. So it will all depend on what Battle Angel and company can bring out for North Central Technical College here today in week three. But they're going to have a, a real tall order going up against the uh, 2 and 0 uh, Augustana College. And uh, they have only dropped one map so far in this NECC season. Here we are in week three. So uh, time to get on to the horse if you are North Central Technical College and start bringing the firepower out. Yeah, the Timberwolves out of Wausau, Wisconsin, uh, have, have struggled a little bit here so far in this season. But, hey, it's early. There's plenty of time to turn it around, Billy. This is going to be a tough opponent. Like you said, Augustana coming in so far undefeated, only dropped one map here in our opening two weeks. So they've got their work cut out for them. Uh, and I think we, we did get a, a little bit of an amendment there coming down the pipe. I think we're actually going to get Breadman and Superbeat leading the way here for Augustana. So we'll be looking for them in the tank role to set the pace, set the tone here for our first match. This is a fixed map pool, three, uh, best of three. Uh, we play all three maps, no matter the results of the first two. Uh, so your maps for week three are Ali Zhang Tower, Blizzard World, and Havana. Oh boy, compositional differences here on Li Zhang. I mean, obviously we want to look at gardens. We want to be looking to take control. Uh, have some mobility and be able to defend any aggressors coming onto the point. Uh, Night market now. really want to see. I, I mean, you can either run an ice wizard comp with the May and Symmetra uh, and getting on the point and establishing predominance right there. Also, Doomfist is great, not only on Night Garden, but also on Control Center when you want to go a little bit more brawly. You want to get right up in their face and take the action to them. So. Uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, what these two teams are going to bring out compositionally for Lijong Garden, and we'll see what they can do. Uh, I, I really want to see, uh, you know, North Central Technical College get that goose egg out of their map differential, because come the end of the season, regardless of where teams are at, every single map is going to count. It's going to be the difference between you getting into the playoffs and not getting into the playoffs. So, Really, you know, if you're a front-running team right now, you still got to be thinking about those map differentials. So you're ob obviously going to be wanting to go for that 3-0 sweep. Uh, so we'll see if Augustana can get another 3-0 sweep here in week three and only still have lost just one map. Or if we can get the goose egg off and maybe even get a win out of North Central Technical College. And uh, yeah, we heard earlier in the broadcast just how important those those map wins can be. Uh, there's definitely going to be some teams at the end of the season squeaking by purely on map score. You're bound to have some ties, uh, and, and it's gonna, those maps, it's each and every one super important, especially since there's only three per series. Each one carries that much more weight. So even, even if the Timberwolves can't get a win here today, yeah, like you're saying, getting, getting rid of the goose egg in the map score is, is a big step forward. Yeah, I mean, Old Charge uh, in the previous series, having cast here last year, giving us that bit of nuggets. So I stole from here and put it on there mm -hmm. for my own. So, of course, thanks to our good friend from the console days, uh, known as uh, Yell Crab back in those days, but Old Charge uh, being one of our best casting buddies out there. So, you know, I, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing which map we get first. Uh, I want to see if people do have the uh, the Wrecking Ball in their pocket, especially Garden is such a great Wrecking Ball map. You can also run the... Uh, you can also run the Winston there as well if you're going to go in with a dive. Uh, I've seen teams run, you know, straight up Ryan Zarya as well. They get Brawly on the guards too. So it's all really dependent upon where you're comfortable with. Not necessarily sure. sticking to, you know, a prescribed meta, uh, as it were, as uh, we hear in the Challenger scene. So we'll see uh, what these teams come out with and, and see how they progress through the night. But I can't wait to get into this match. It's going to be a banger. And, uh, you know, I love here being here in the NECC because – Different schools, different teams that we haven't had a chance to experience before. Some teams may be making their first time onto a stream. So this is exciting not only for us as casters, but also for the teams to get be able to show their wares on a national stage. Yeah, you bet. And get to just see uh, other competitors from around the country. 
Uh, I know a, a lot of students are just excited to, to get to compete. And, you know, some of these schools are a lot smaller than others. And I believe North Central is one of those. It's one of the smaller schools. So a smaller pool of players uh, you know, available to them. And, you know, that can put you at a, a little bit of a disadvantage, you know, having 2,500 students as opposed to 18,000 or, you know, some of the larger schools we have competing here. Yeah, I mean, you just have fewer options. So, I mean, there's really nothing to hang your head about. Uh, just getting to, to get on this national stage uh, is is a lot of fun and it's, and it's good to see the competition out there. And that's going to sharpen your skills in of itself, make you a better player, make you a better competitor. Uh, but another point you touched on was being in this challengers division. Um, and that really does lend to playing to your strengths, playing to the the compositions where you have practice, where you have the synergy, and you're you're really acutely aware of what your teammates are going to do, what your plan is, and the tempo you want to set. And so I think that really does play a huge part in this division where you don't have to stick to that meta like you were saying. That you can, I mean, you can run double shield on pretty much anything. Um, particularly with the maps that we have available today. I mean, if that's if that's where your strengths lie. Right. And I, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed just seeing coming down the pipe here that one of my favorite uh, battle tags here for one of the players, Are You Hungry? is not actually going to be Are You Hungry? It's going to be Kawaii Jelly. So cute jelly, uh, if you want to translate it from the Japanese, will be playing uh, under the Are You Hungry world. We'll be replacing the Are You Hungry battle tag. Um, looking at what we saw uh, from Augustana College in uh, their first week, they uh, lost the map to Murray State Gold. Um, so that was a nail biter. Uh, but then the second week uh, against Valparaiso Shield, they won 3 0. So that's how they got to 2 0. Uh, UC Davis and UBCO Serpents Gold were the two losses for North Central Technical College. Uh, like I said, they haven't won a map yet. Let's hope they can get that off the board tonight. Looks like we are going to start off in Control Center. Uh, traditionally a very brawling map, a lot of close quarters, a lot of corridors to work with. Uh, a junk rat could work very well here. One of the few maps where I really think a junk rat is a, is a smart pick. But I stand by my previous statement. Now we play to your strengths, teams. Let's uh, let's see the synergy in the teamwork. Good use of cooldown, smart ult rotation will win you a fight every time more than playing meta, particularly in this in this challengers division. Yeah, I mean, I, I would anticipate to see a Symmetra, uh, especially since she does so well here. Uh, really looking to see if they can get in there and get their team aggressed onto the point first and establish that dominance on the point and see where they pick out from. And we do see Kawhi Jelly, previously known as Are You Hungry? They are flashing us that Symmetra right now, not to be outdone by Augustana's dad showing the Symmetra as well. Uh, looks like we're going Zarya versus Diva in the off tank role, and I like it on both sides because one provides a third DPS while the other provides a peel and a frontline presence that you just don't have with the Zarya. And the Zarya will be able to protect the Reinhardt in burst and enable some aggression, but there's not a whole lot to guard that Zarya's team up. So the Photon Cannon might struggle to find max damage uh, against the May Sim, against the Ice Queen. And we can see already right out of the gate, a good wall and two quick picks to start things off. Reinhardt down, Sim gone. Augustana taking control of this immediately, driving back, even putting up a good wall to find some exit picks. Yeah, I mean, you love to see that from a May player, knowing their win condition, knowing that if you can really conceal people away from getting away, uh, then you're going to get all the value out of it. And uh, we'll see, you know, how this Junkrat is actually going to do. Um, against the D.Va and the shielding of a Reinhardt. That big glowing rectangle is going to stop a lot of this aggression coming in. Oh, and not to mention the Sim turrets on top of the door. I mean, it's just, speaking of slowing, it will physically slow them as they try to approach, not to mention the damage done. Looks like NTC have been able to push through the doorway and are trying to make their way on a point, but they lose oh, Mason no. on the approach, caught off in the rotation. And now Breadman here with the Shatter, looking for it. He's going to throw it down, only find Sloth with it. Uh, got caught up in Shadows, Junkrat Trap, not able to pursue. Yeah, I mean, this is just great recognition of being able to push forward. WM1 all the way into NTC's team. And, uh, you, you know, they just get the cleanup after that. Now looking at this Photon Barrier online, that's going to be another slowing tool for Augustana College to stop the aggression coming in. They can just really use this to really defend against this upcoming Amplification Matrix. Yep. North Central Timberwolves do have this tire to open up with. Uh, so, I mean, there's not really a whole lot to block it. Not even support ult online. And we already see the Immortality Field used by Harvecle. 
So this tire could be the opening that the Timberwolves are looking for to try to get in here, but they got to wait for their entire six to get back, regroup, push together. I mean, we're approaching last opportunity here for North Central Timberwolves. We absolutely are. There is an aggressive Ant Matrix and all the foul. Oh my God, that's foul. Yeah, that's a double damage fire strike taking Shadow out of the fight before they can press Q. And we had another Shatter invested as well. Augustana holding the door, not letting anybody pass. You know, are you hungry now, Kawhi Jelly? And uh, I want to put the Hodor <laughs> reference for Game of Thrones there, but there's a big tire coming. Let's see what they can get. A tire finally coming out. Yeah, but this time the Immortality Field was ready. Harbeckle did not wait for it to get invested early. Grab from Sloth, found a few in it, but it doesn't look like the follow-up's quite there. In fact, they lose Drag Oreo, who was so close to that shatter. Now the Otis is on Sloth to push forward. Salbier used aggressively, but as the shields fade, still no kills for North Central Technical College. This has been all one-way traffic. Overtime Wick burning. Uh, the inevitable Overtime Wick will burn down after a little bit of cleanup. Yeah, it's all over about the crying and, and, and with overtime running that long it's going to burn down quickly and uh symmetra goes burr that's one lesson that we need to learn right now uh symmetra goes burr very bigly especially when you get that microwave beam up to level three just absolutely melting shields and deleting members of ntc off the server now as we head going to gardens here jeff i'm looking for a little bit of compositional shift looks like we're going to get a little bit of blackout dps of Reaper and Sombra, big burst healing potential available to them as well. Breadman's opting for the Winston here. So we'll see what they got coming out the gate here because NTC looks like they've compositionally shifted their DPS to a little bit more pokiness, especially when you bring out the pharmacy. Yeah, they're here. definitely going to come out with a Pharmacy in the 76. Very much a, a kind of spam poke oriented composition versus pure rush. This is a Winston rush comp from Augustana. They want to just pounce on your front line as quickly as possible and burst down anybody who gets in their way. Uh, this zombie comp is very difficult to kill. Nobody wants to die. Everybody has escapes. There's so much healing available. And look at the room Augustana are created. They Ooh. control center pillar. They control the entirety of the map around the objective. Dad looking for a little manual hack over the side. Didn't quite get it. Has to fall back as the spam comes through from Kawhi Jelly, a.k.a. Are You Hungry? Good pick there for Are You Hungry. Speaking of... As the freshman is able to find first blood for NTC, both Winston's off the battlefield and res available here for North Central Timberwolves. They're now pushing on. They got Tac Visor at the ready, coming up on barrage. But all the while, Augustana are building up percentage, and they've got a coalescence to maintain. Oh, it's going to be free too if they can get it off in time. But that's a huge down here coming out from Vanilla Big Hug. Yeah, it's uh, I think you're gonna have to run with it here for a second, Billy. My uh, I'm having a little technical issue on my end. Did CDMP come out? That got five, it did. I get five, and now Beard, uh, Breaded Man is popping the primal and gets an environmental kill here. Why Jelly still being pretty uncontested on the side? It's been up to dad so far to deal with the Fara Super Super B has been getting into the air though to really deny the valid for, value from this spam comp coming in. I'm looking at Mason right now, gonna probably throw this. Nano onto Drag Oreo, one of my favorite names here, uh, to be able to take care and get them built up to another Primal Rage. Yeah, I mean, really, Augustana's only plan for the far is just avoid. Just stay out of LOS. Nice eat from Super B. Takes the grab off the table and the punish onto Drag Oreo. With the Winston gone, there's no initiation. Mason not able to use that Nano Boost in time. And that's really what you're looking for here. And despite Augustana losing their Winston as well, they still have all the cards in this fight. I mean, what am I looking at right now? I mean, Shadow swapping off the Soldier 76 onto the McCree to deal with Dad on this Sombra to see if they can uh, get them and kind of flash them out of getting manual hacks going on. But Death Blossom ready to go! And Death Blossom finds both supports in the back, supported by a Coalescence coming through. And this is threatening to be another 100 to zero. As the last two remaining members, the Timberwolves get hacked up, deleted. That's all she wrote. Screen goes dark. That's a one in the Augustana win column. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's two things that's going on here right now. There's an MTD difference right now uh, going between Augustana and, and MTD. And I mean, breaded band right now is just absolutely shredding. And then the support difference as well. Uh, I'm really liking, you know, especially with having the zombie comp that you were talking about, all the mobility going in, you know, there's the burst healing that was available to them. I'm running the Moira Lucio there on gardens. Um, they were ba able to basically swing and zap with impunity and oh, yeah. do what they needed to so do. So much healing. Dad on that Sombra was a breath of fresh air. We haven't seen a lot of Sombra here lately uh, in our current meta situation. And seeing it come out here and seeing the efficaciousness of it, that was something that I just absolutely was applauding. I had my own little golf clap going on. The five man EMP, of course, was a stunner, you know, and they got manual hacks going on to the Pharah as well. So dad was doing his job pretty darn good. Yep, clipping those wings just a little. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And, you know, far can't do anything. <laughs> Get no angle. You just fall out of the sky like a stone. Uh, makes life easy for your team. Uh, but, you know, hey, there you go. Augustana so far keeping up their great record uh, and halfway to winning this series. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go to Blizzard World. We'll have some more NECC action for you.
It is time for map number two. We are headed to Blizzard World. Augustana College, the Vikings out of Illinois, coming out so winging two 100 to zeros to start things off there, Billy. <laughs> Whew, pretty emphatic from them, too. I mean, once they wrestled yeah. control of the point, they never let go of it. So, I mean, right now, kind of a main tank difference, a support line difference for Augustana College. But I think, you know, we did see some moments of brilliance. I really like the soldiers that came out of North, Tech, North Central Technical College. I mean, got attacked Pfizer in the first fight and a half. I mean, that's not normal, uh, especially with what they were running into. And I mean, the uh, breaded man was really laying down some good Winston bubbles. Uh, I don't think that the, uh, I don't think that the, uh, the, the diva was mitigating as much damage as maybe they could have. Um, they seem to really like the Zarya as well. Uh, I think right. if you run a diva, you're going to have a lot more fun uh, in the game right now. I also think that you're also going to have a lot more damage mitigation and being able to, you know, get on top of players, being able to let your Reinhardt or your monkey get onto the point. Uh, and, you know, it kind of with from Augustana College. So you know, we do see a side swap here. Or we are going to see North Technical College here uh, on the defense as they uh, want to see what kind of a benchmark they're going to have to look at here and uh, looking at a little bit of a uh, halt and hammer line coming out in the tanks for north central technical college Kawhi jelly and shadow bring out double hit scans so looking at a little bit from range looking at a little bit of extra healing potential as well with that biotic field so we'll see if, what augustana college could do i mean they use the speed and the immortality fields to great effect in a very brawl centric map of control center on legion gardens all right, all right. I, I gotta make an amendment here. When I say you know, play to your own strengths, like you still need some synergy. You still need some synergy in your compositions. Uh, I mean, we're, we're seeing a little bit of disconnect here from North Central Technical College Ooh. as far as the way their players are gonna interact. Now, that was a good hook. Uh, able to get super, at least dislodged and kind of not where they wanna be. They've gotta make a rotation and it slows down the push. But Dad was able to find a pick, and now Augustana are going to go ahead and threaten this point. You got Super B moving up to the high ground. Oh, man, that was literally one tick. That has 30 health left. Falls back, grabs the healing. Look at the old charge on the Baptiste. Harvacol has been doing work. That's the point picked up. Good Lord. Oh, they're going to go ahead and use that Ant Matrix right out the gate. So, I mean, shielding's going to be under oh, yeah. the barrage. Everything's out. out. Yep, so the Street Sweeper is in full effect. Blizzard World streets are clean. Not a lick of trash left. Uh, Shadow will get rezzed up. That is the one benefit of having Battle Angel there. Uh, and of course, you do get a little bit of the damage boost onto Ch Ch Now we do see Drag Oreo move over to the Diva. So I like this a little bit more. Uh, your Reinhardt wants to play close and fast while the Ash and the Soldier want to sit back and poke a little bit more. Now the Soldier is more capable of brawling it uh, up in the face with the Reinhardt. But this is kind of part of that... Uh, I mean, it's lack of synergy uh, is uh, the best thing I can come up with at the moment. Uh, is Shadow able to get a good pick? We see Breadman get a little too big for his britches there, Billy. Yeah, but I mean, it was also an anti-nade going in on top of them. I mean, the damage mitigation from Super B was not there to eat that nade. And that's one of the biggest roles here for the Divas to be able to deal with that nade coming in. So, I mean, Kawhi Jelly, both the DPS could let loose with a massive torrent of ultimates here in the next fight. Yep, it's going to be the Bob coming out first. Now let's, let's see how many North Central Technical College spin oh. to make this hold. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a that's a detrimental loss to the self-destruct with Battle Angel taken out of the fight. Self-destruct coming in from the defense. And the sloth very low, back and up. Mason doesn't have a great angle on the tanks, has to rotate back around and try to get some healing down. And sloth and drag Oreo are taking so much damage from the attackers. The defense just getting pushed back all the way off where they need to be contesting. Drag Oreo flying up out of the range of the Shatter. Back both Shatters coming down simultaneously. Shadow investing the attack visor as well into this, but nobody survives the Blizzard on point. Drag Oreo sticking around. Uh, some good movement in there. Able to stay elusive despite being frozen up there momentarily, but it's Dad coming up with some clutch picks. Drag Oreo finally out of mech. Yeah, smart holding of the queue there as well from Mason, because I you can see them wanting to put that in there and get that nano invested. Man, this push coming from uh, from Augustana once again is just absolutely filth on a bucket. And now we've got the rolling hammer composition coming in. The Hammond and the 
Reinhardt. So you want to pressure the back with the ball. You want to get the front line presence and pushability of breaded man on the Reinhardt. And then McFlurry in the DPS. I mean, this is going to be a very difficult proposition for NTC to deal with. And North Central Technical, they, they unleashed five ultimates into that fight, into a losing fight. And it seemed uh, kind of just hitting him an opportunity, not really having a plan. I, I would highly suggest well, before the fight starts, you talk about what order you're going to throw those ults, how you're going to try to accomplish your win condition. I feel like that nano boost had, it should have come out a long time ago. So lost under pressure. Now would be a good opportunity. But no, here comes the shatter down. The aggression from Augustana is just wow. too much. Not even giving him an opportunity to press Q. Super B swapped to this Hammond at the beginning of this push, and they had mines available into the second fight. Uh, I mean, that is just filthy. 356. I've got to check my record books, but that may be pretty close to one of the fastest times that I've ever seen on Blizzard World. There was just, uh, for lack of a better word, jello resistance coming out of NTC. And, uh, man... I mean, I, I'm scared to see what Augustana is going to bring out defensively here. NTC's back's against the wall. And I mean, we're only a map and a half in, Jeff, and it's already looking pretty dire straits for the small school uh, from North Central Technical College. So uh, some changes got to come out here. Uh, I mean, the hammer and, and hook, uh, that was a pretty dicey tank line to start the game off with. I think that... You know, Diva right now is in one of the best spots that she has been in the game since its inception. Uh, I, I think she's so balanced now. I think that, you know, giving a little nerf to the micro missiles, but also a little bit more damage with the poke going in, being able to get the booster resets as well. I mean, everything is working in favor of having a Diva on the field, and Sloth and Drag Oreo are going to bring that out, looks like, on their offense. But a uh, little bit of Ryan Zarya here from Augustana, so kind of flipping the script here. Going to give a little bit more viability to Brennan Man to get in there and get even more aggressive, which I didn't think was going to be possible. But you know they're going to be doing that right now, and you're going to have the immortality field of Havercle. So we'll see uh, what will come out here offensively for NTC. It's funny about D.Va, you know, when they nerfed the defense matrix from the 15 meters to the 10 meters, Eight. she just vanished out of play. Uh, and... It just took time for people, I think, to get used to it. And then there were some adjustments to, like, the region number on the defense matrix. But, yeah, D.Va is being spotted in all kinds of compositions back in use, whether you're playing Rush, even alongside an Orisa. Uh, <laughs> so it's, D.Va's in a great spot. Nice sleep on a breaded man there. Uh, but still, 81%. Look at the old charge difference between these two Reinhardts right now. It is bread man with all the aggression. And just fearlessly pushing forward, despite the best efforts of, of Mason and the rest of NTC. All right, let's talk about the last fight, though, Jeff. Uh, the wall by Weezer was absolutely brilliant. But I like the fact that Battle Angel was willing to speed the team on and try and get on top of Augustana and really take the, the aggression to them. But the wall, the wall separated everything, and you saw the kills come out right away. And I mean, right now, Weezer's got to be the linchpin of this entire defense. Yeah, but Ice Wall is a Reinhardt's worst enemy. And you've got to play around it. Drag Oreo has to be cautious of Weezer on this mate as they try to make this push. It's going to be the Nano Boost, and there's another wonderful wall from Weezer. Ready Man backing up. Has that Shatter ready to go? Oh, Dad opening things up once again. Dad has been absolutely on fire here today. Ant Matrix is going to chew through the attacking ranks of NTC. And Bread Man doesn't even have to use that Shatter. Yeah, I mean, Superb invested the Graviton Surge into that. I think it may have gotten eaten by Sloth. I didn't see the exact benefit of it. But Breaded Bad being able to keep Shatter into the next fight, as well as a Deadeye as to boot, that is going to be fantastic work for them. I mean, you can Shatter, Deadeye, nothing really to deny that damage other than Sloth. And if they get put on their back, that's going to be a free look at it. And that's, I mean, you know, a manual freeze. Reeves are probably looking for a manual freeze on to Sloth to, to open things up for that Blizzard. Uh, you can also throw the wall down and just throw the Blizzard into the wall. Give me Deadeye. Start things off from Shadow. Try oh! to open it up. Nice! That's both supports. Falling to the pace caper. Dad tried to respond. Finds one. Gets the shot onto Drag Oreo as well. So with the Reinhardt out of the picture from both sides, the defense of Augustana barely holds on. But the best look we've seen from North Central Technical just thus far. 
yeah, I mean, they actually really invested in the great angle from Shadow with the Dead Eye as well, even with the wall that came up from Weezer. But I don't, I mean, I, I don't think it was enough. And the spawn differential right now, if Vanilla Big Hug has gone back and taxied members of Augustana back, it's going to be dire straits for them. We're entering into just a minute left. You're looking at Grab Blizzard. Sloth has got to be a hungry, hungry hippo here. Yep, keeping a sharp eye on this defense matrix of Sloth. Let's see how Reason wants to approach. There's the wall. Is the Blizzard coming out? No, they decide to hold on to it. They're just going to pressure down, throw out the grab. Big grab. The Battle Angel has the sound barrier to help them survive it. But I don't know for how long. Those shields have been chewed through. Super B is just absolutely glowing. A big red ball of death. And it is just terrifying. Nightmare fuel for NTC right now. And you get to keep the Blizzard, Jeff. So, uh... What I'm looking for, NTC here. Uh, throw a nano onto the ulting Reaper. That should give them a lot of staying power and a lot of killing power as well. And really pull out all the defensive capabilities from this self-destruct. Wonderful ult rotation from Augustana. Shadow goes down early. Oh, that is not what you're looking for. Great sleep. Mason has been putting up some great nades and some good sleeps here. Uh, I want to see a proactive nano here to start this fight. We started the first fight. And it kind of worked. We've got the Shatter and the Blizzard coming out. Will the Death Blossom be enough to turn the tide? It doesn't look like it. They find Harveckle, but it's just not enough. The damage had already been done. Baptiste work was done. And now overtime with Burn. Shadow can't make it back even with the speedy shoes. And that is done. And Dusted, a 3-0 here on Blizzard World. That'll give Augustana the series with a 2-0 lead. We still will play Havana, though, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast. I mean, just the work being done by Super B here, glowing like a Christmas tree, getting all the value that they needed out of it. I mean, that was some serious work from the tank line, uh, not to mention the DPS as well. I mean, Weezer was hitting some nasty icicles to domes and uh, holding, you know, their alt rotations really smartly. That was a big difference there for Blizzard World. I mean, you know, the aggression on their offense, they were willing to push forward and just take the two. NTC and then defensively, they just absorbed all the damage in. You know, the yeah. allied bubbles were especially chef's kiss from me from Super B, keeping Bearded Man up in these fights and really allowing him to swing with impunity. I mean, we saw after that first fight, 80% to like 12. <laughs> and uh, oh, as I far mean, as like, old charge on the Reinhardt's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was more than that. It was like 95 to 12. I, mean, <laughs> it I, was, I was kidding. Uh, they he had shatter after first fight. <laughs> uh, it didn't even have to use it. Like, didn't use it in that second fight. Was able to hold on to it. But smart, I mean, and that goes back to that smart ult rotation. Augustana, they have a plan. You can see that they're discussing how they want to use their ultimates in between fights. And that discussion is so huge. You're When you get into the fight, you don't want to be thinking about it. When you get into the fight, it's just action. You, you, you let your instincts take over. Let those gamer instincts kick in. But in between fights, that's when the cerebral part happens. That's when you discuss and figure out how your approach each individual engagement and how you want to use your ultimates. I mean, hey, you, you you plan for success. You know, you just set yourself up for, for success there, Billy. Like it's, yeah, I mean, it's that easy. It's that easy. It's that just, easy. just talk forehead. Just like, talk forehead. Yes. That's all there is to it. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> all right. know, that being said, I mean, it's two nil. Uh, and that is, it is two nil. Uh, to Augustana college. Let's see if NTC can get that blasted goose egg off the board. They're going to have to have a little huddle. Uh, and talk about it. We're going to take a quick break. Give them that opportunity to do it. We'll see you back here in just a few.
And we are back from at number three. We are headed to Cuba, going to beautiful Havana for our final map of the series. And, you know, North Central Technical College still looking for that first map one of the season. Yep, looking at a little bit of uh, roll swaps right now. Shadow going to the tank roll. Mm -hmm. Well, Dragorio going to DPS, a little bit of swap up there. See what they can bring. Maybe a little bit of change up here. Uh, maybe trying out something new. Anything can be good uh to go here i mean if it isn't working as it is uh try to change something up so you know they are uh avoiding that clinical terminology of being insane if it keep, you keep trying to do the same thing over and over and expecting a different result that is the definition of insanity so as we look to see what these teams are going to bring out respectively ntc will be on the defense here and looks like they're going to flash us a little bit of double shield and i don't hate that especially if they use the sigma as kind of a shooting blind uh with the experimental barrier on the high grounds here with that long sight line down if you can get Kawhi jelly and drag oreo uh both in uh sniper positions here battle angel could have their feast on who to damage boost here and see if they can get some early frags out of a on the college but uh you know we'll see uh if they've got the uh Temperament and the aim down today. Uh, hopefully they will get that going. Augustana College bring out a little bit of sniper looks themselves. It looks like they're going to mirror this double shield look. Yep, so no close holds this time around on Havana. It is going to be double snipers, double shields. You have Weezer on this Hanzo. will be able to provide a lot more shield pressure. Uh, can, can break down those shields a little bit quicker. Of course, you have the range. Let's we'll get Oreo can find an opening these two shields find an opening pick here there it is super b the first to fall on havana yeah drag Oreo getting a nice shot in there and not enough healing resources there so we got a little bit of a greedy back line going on right now for augustana college uh with the then and the bat bat is going to have the lion pair of healing here whereas they're going to try and really focus down these discorded targets that vanilla big hook takes out but drag Oreo with two in the beginning here so they're going to need to deal with this uh Sniper here up top. I think you need to get a diva out there to uh, get up in the face of Drag Oreo and uh, teach them for their moxie. Yeah, the freshman with many talents coming into the DPS role, and Kawhi Jelly picks up their second of the of the series or well, of the map rather. So these snipers are, are really kind of starting to find their rhythm here a little bit. Maybe double shields, what they should have been running all along. Maybe. I mean, you're, they're already seeing the early benefits out of it. A minute off the clock already. Nice sight lines being used here by Drag Oreo. Looking to get some uh, extra ult charge with that Venom mine. Oh. Ooh. And that one came from the Baptiste. Harvack all able to just thread the needle there. Kawhi able to land the headshot followed by the follow-up. Takes Vanilla Big Hug down, and Arveckle's immortality field is forced out a little bit early. But this defense are having to back up, scramble for cover, see if they get everybody topped off. Kawhi Jelly goes low, goes down the hands of the Hypersphere from Super B. Yeah, I mean, this is great work coming in from August and a college dad oh! with this huge ult angle. And my gosh, that halt from Breaded Man, Jeff, that sealed everything. Oh, and a wonderful accretion from Super B to interrupt the Reds. Uh, that was a, a heck of a one-two punch, and it just knocked North Central Technical right on back to spot. Yeah, they do get the uh, they do get the uh, venom in mind here on top of the Zenyatta. So Vanilla Big Hug having to kind of duck around the corner here, but uh, you know, Transcendence still 45% away. I'm looking for Harbuckle to really put out this this barrier and start shooting through the window. Drag Oreo with this very aggressive angle. You don't see Widows take that one a lot. It pays off. Whoa! Look at that. Two headshots, two supports down. Drag Oreo falls up with a great headshot on Super B as well. And Augustana running for the hills. I would too uh, with this sniper that's uh, clicking heads here. Where is this at in the first two maps? That's what I want to know. But On tank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, on tank, you're absolutely correct. But uh, both tank <laughs> ultimates ready to go here as well as an ant matrix for Augustana. This should net them the second point. There's nothing really to defend against it other than an answering Ant Matrix coming from Mason. Uh, I mean, this looks like a whole new team. I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. Both wow. Ant Matrix up. Shadow is going to find that pick on the Super B. Augustana wanted that Gravitic Flux to open the fight. Absolutely denied the Ant Matrix, the Hall, everything in sync right now for MTC. This looks like a brand new squad. They should have been running Double Shield this whole time. I mean, yeah. You can run it on every single map, too. That's the whole kicker of the deal is that 
Especially if you're running with a Mercy and this Baptiste. You can damage boost certain members to get even more value out of them and build up that ult so much faster. I mean, you gotta be a little creative with it on, on certain maps. I mean, Havana is like designed for long range poke engagements, uh, but it's absolutely doable. Again, especially in this challengers division, uh, Weezer is able to open things up this time around. Might be an opportunity for Augustine to use this massive war chest of ultimates they have overflowing right now. Uh, it's actually gonna be Sloth starting things off. And look at even aggressive ult usage. The accretion miss, lost, able to dodge that, get the slam uh -oh. in. Vanilla Big Hug does respond with the Transcendence. Might enable Augustana to get aggressive, and Super B's going to respond with a flux of their own. That's Dragons underneath it. This could be deadly. Mason's going to oh, get no. slammed down. That lion share the healing off the table. Back in spot, it goes. Drag Oreo falls to some damage spheres coming out of Vanilla Big Hug. And Augustana are finally going to make their way through the distillery. Oh, Battle Angel lost the tether to Kawhi there and got left behind in a Super B said, hello, you're going to go back to spawn now. So uh, still, the push is on. Three members on the cart. Uh, Kawhi Jelly's got to get their act together and start laying some contestation here. Yeah, I mean, they've got time. Wow. Uh, Bob... That sounded like a, there. There's the Bob coming out from from Dad. I think my my audio is a little out of sync from everything else, but it is eventually capped by Augustana. They got two points on the board. They're gonna make start making their way to to Nas's house, as we heard it called <laughs> uh, in some other streams earlier today. Uh, yeah, and Dad swapping over and echoing this Ash uh, was a massive boon to them getting that second point there. Looking right now uh, at, at Super B. See what they can get done with the Sigma here. Uh, damage mitigation is going to be the biggest thing for them right now. Wow. Yep, that, that Ant Matrix is, is just going to open up all kinds of opportunity. I mean, look at all the <laughs> assists on the skill coming through here. And it's just Augustana have just claimed space all down the streets, all the way through the entrance. They have so much ground to work with. North Central Technical are, are forced to kind of use that top left high ground and try to find an opening. You can drag Oreo down on the low ground. Uh, the contestation from Bob has been dealt with. And now NTC are finally starting to push out. That's a, a good pick. We'll see if they can uh, turn it into a fight with Billy. I don't Ant Matrix on the table. Battle Angel is out. A lot of damage coming through from the defense. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you love to see it. And we'll see uh, what can get done here. Weezer finding that Venom Mine. And, of course, the site there will be available to drag Oriole. I mean, Transcendence can hold them up through any number of ultimates coming up. Wow. Ooh. Nice shot. Drag Oreo is able to find that kill on the dad. Finally taking Perch back up on the high ground. Oh, and another one. Drag Oreo has been absolutely impressive on this Widowmaker. I've got to, I've got to put the Hanzo line out there, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> no, yeah, not Go gonna find the jump shot there though. Jeff. <laughs> Go, going for that grapple, was looking for it. Uh, you can see Vanilla Big Hog kind of holding their breath for a moment. <laughs> oh, the Ant Matrix out. Double damage takes Harveckle down. They are able to deploy their own Ant Matrix on the other side. And uh, putting a lot of shots down. It's claimed a little bit of space, but Augustana needs to get some more work done. They have the tools to do it. Five ults online as they start to enter the fortress. It's going to be the amp the big Omnic Butler thrown into the back. In fact, both of the seventh men on the battlefield right now. Defensive Flux out first. That Transcendence will block it. Sloth taken out of the sky by the Bob. Now Super B has the opportunity to move it and use one of their own. Man, they may not even need it except to take care of the people coming out to contest the final end of the of the point here oh good night i mean that yeah. is just a rotation right there that is filth on a stick jeff yep yeah, just a, a uh excuse me a wrecking ball out here trying to buy as much time as possible if they can get it down to overtime i mean it's an escort so i mean it's, uh, both teams will get a fight if they complete either way and the, the delay has ceased 1.21 meters Shadow makes it back quickly. Demex disposed. I guess on a complete Havana, which is a feat in of itself. Oh, I mean, I, it's one of the hardest maps to compete, especially uh, on the ladder. 
And uh, they made it look pretty easy. Some good stalls, some good fight back from North Central Technical College, though, Jeff. Let's talk about that uh, as we prepare to see them come out on attack. I mean, the double sniper look was pretty darn effective for them DPS-wise. Tank line? Yeah, uh, there is a little bit of positioning errors that I saw. But, I mean, they got more aggressive. I think they were feeling more of what they wanted to do there, Jeff. And they were getting a lot better. I mean, when they did get the good position, they were able to really lock down Augustana and not allow them to just get the free push and live free in their heads. Uh, it's going to give Augustana something to think about coming out. Uh, and they're bringing out the Ryan Diva here with the Ice Princess or the Ice Wizard composition. So, man, this is going to be difficult for an attacking team here, especially as slow as NTC are going to be playing here, uh, I mean, you're going to really need Breaded Man to get on top of Shadow and Sloth. That's what Vanilla Big Hug is going to be there for, to speed them on top and start getting in close. And it looks like we are going to get a close hold here, Jeff. Yeah, I, that was a decade as soon as they pulled out that Reinhardt. You you want to go up and hold this door with the May. Uh, I, I don't like the idea of her being an ice princess. I mean, she's a bit of an evil princess sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, but, but nevertheless, royalty, particularly at these close holds. Right, man, I like this positioning. Just sitting around the door. Has the opportunity uh -oh. to, to kind of fall back line cart. Now, this angle could be dangerous. As NTC do circle around, this is the right play. Try to open up these angles here. The teleporter is out to allow Augustana to quickly maneuver around the front of this objective. And so far, they are holding strong, Billy. They absolutely are. And I mean, drag Oreo out on the Genji right now to deal with a lot of this damage going in. The poke coming in, being able to deflect it back. Nice accretion coming out from Sloth as well. Shadow is super low, but the support is there once again. Now they're going to try to rotate back around the other direction. Augustana read this uh, as they move back to the, the front door. And, you know, back to the alley we go. It's a, it's a little do -si do here in Havana right now as NTC are searching for weaknesses, but there are just none to be had so far. Both tanks fall. Oh, you lost an opportunity there, Kawhi Jelly, to let your Mercy get a little bit of extra ult charge to pop that Valkyrie and be able to give a team-wide damage boost out as well. So uh, maybe a little missed opportunity there. Looking for uh, Nano Blade here. So close for Drag Oreo. Yeah, that might be the ticket. You know, Bob coming out, try to put some damage into the back line. Well placed, but quickly dealt with. Oh! Blade totally shut down. Super B absolutely dismantled two ultimates in a row and then kills Mason before they're able to put the nano out onto anybody. Oh, my goodness. What a play from Super B. Uh, that's got to be play of the match so far, Jeff. I mean, if we're talking about, uh, you know, just pure appeal and pure value out of a single player that was an incredible display coming out from super b uh, north central technical they're gonna go over to the cowboy to to try to break this hold i might think about that pharmacy we saw on Li Zhang. far is able to get up on top of the roofs there's really nothing on augustana i mean you can send super b after it but then you're dedicating the resource of the diva to the skies which means your front line might have an easier shatter from the other side uh that that shatter was just monstrous as you see the feed starting to light up red yeah it started to light up red and uh, a little bit of a frozen stream as well so uh we'll see what this photon barrier can actually do uh in this next fight i mean they have the blizzard online as well i do believe question mark question mark <laughs> yes the big reveal yes blizzard is online and ready to go <laughs> yeah and so, I mean, now we're looking at Supercharger available. Uh, and there's the Blizzard out, as I forementioned before. So we'll see uh, what they can do here. Uh, and, and quickly, two kills light up. And uh, that was the last thing I saw before everything went gray. Everything absolutely gray here on my site as well. I mean, they were, <laughs> Augustine was winning up in this fight. So uh, we NTC will see. feeling a little gray right now, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're, uh, they're feeling gray. They're not feeling blue. And uh, yeah, it looks like we've got a disconnect as well. Battle Angel going out of the game. So we're going to have to wait for them to reconnect here. But uh, man, oh, what I a... think Battle Angel might have had Valk too. That I hurts. think they did have Valk. I really do oh, think they had Valk. Oh, that hurts. So they're not going to have that, uh, that, that defensive or offensive push to come out and give the team-wide damage boost as well. So 
that's a big yikeser from me on that. But I mean, they were being able to flip back and forth. I really like the positioning of Weezer's um, teleporters going from to spawn door to spawn yeah. door. They were able to aggress really back. Nice. And I mean, you also saw um, Heracles or ha- Hervicle. I, I can't. I keep butchering that name. <laughs> I'm going off. Of, I'm going off a of brain memory right now. So he's a, forgive me on that one. Hervicle. Hervicle. But uh, he's Herveckle. actually going kind of opposite of what the rest of the team is doing, and uh, kind of being on the opposite teleporter, so he can keep pumping in the damage through, uh, or uh, keeping the healing coming through while at range. So I'm liking that as well. So I mean, just big brain plays coming out from Augustana right now. Uh, this could absolutely be a, a situation where I MTC might not be able to touch the cart either. I mean, they got close to it once, uh, but coming out with the Genji against the brawl and the turrets and everything else. I mean, that was just a disastrous beginning for them coming out and they haven't really stabilized since. Yeah, I still think the fire might be the ticket. Uh, get on that rooftop. Uh, if anything, you draw the resources. The Baptiste and the Diva are forced to to look up in the sky uh, to deal with the far. So you can at least pull the direction, pull the attention in different ways. You know, change the eye level, and yeah, and then then you're not just all running into the brunt of six people focusing down. Um, I mean, you can also use flankers to the same avail. Um, you know, go with a, a tracer somber mm-hmm. if that's in their wheelhouse. Uh, I mean, of course, we, we don't really know what these hero pools look like for these players. It's the first time seeing them on stream. Uh, but these are, I mean, just suggestions off the top of my head. But I wanted, I wanted to circle back. Uh, what in the world is a Harvekel? If, if you know out there, friends, please, please let us know. Um, I mean, I don't know. Do you have any guesses, Billy? I, I have no idea. Unit of I mean, measurement? Like a, or maybe a, fifth, a 16th century French interrogation weapon? <laughs> uh, that's what ouch i mean i don't know it's one of the two that's where i'm going that's that's mine uh but you know what i what i'm really thinking about here uh, if we're getting back to the meat of it i think that i would really like to see a mirror come out um you know even teleporting the team beyond the point and then coming back and turning the defenders into the attackers and, and really pinning them up against the gas station there um, that might be a way to go. Yeah, you might be able to go out the left own. alley, like yeah. teleport to that far left side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's ways to address around a full hold like this. Uh, I think that the May wall is what's really the kicker here. Uh, right. It's just it's it's cordoning off not only physically the team, but also the healing resources coming in. So exactly you know, that right now, I mean, they're not living a very happy life right now. Drag Oreo has got to figure out something. The Genji was not it going into a Symmetra May. Uh, once he saw the Symmetra out there, I would have gone back in, swapped and brought out something completely different. Um, even a Torbjorn with a turret in the back, maybe might have been able to deal with something. Uh, put a little extra pressure down onto the shielding of Breaded Man. It just there's so many different ways to do it. We'll see what can be done uh, once we do get back in. All right. It sounds like Battle Angel has returned. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, ult charge reset. But Supercharger now out. Bob on the battlefield. And Nano Boost used on the Sloth. Nevertheless, despite the damage mitigation, Sloth still taking a ton of damage. But finally, some kills on the board for North Central Technical. Uh, the Timberwolves, now with just 30 seconds left, have started to put some cracks into this defense. Yeah, and taking down Harvicle right now is probably the biggest thing that they could have done. That is the prime source of your healing. Even though Sound Bear is available, you might need to deploy it here. Yeah, and Super B with two quick responses. Yeah, Vanilla Big Hug is going to go ahead and invest that Sound Barrier. Uh, that, at the very least, is going to get this down into overtime before this cart gets any real progress. Uh, Shadow come through from Sloth, going right under the cart, and they get Super B out of there. Super B has been such an outstanding player on this D.Va. Uh, I've, I've uh, been just absolutely astounded by their performance here on Havana in particular. Well, it's going to take three fights, especially with how slow this composition is uh, for NTC, especially since Vanilla Big Hug does have uh, the speed advantage as well. So Shatter and Photon Barrier available to both. I think you save the Photon Barrier for when... Drag it, Drag Oreo takes care of this. Look at that, right in its face. Oh, yeah, just just eats up all of that. Uh, like it's 
Super B ha has been exactly where they need to be, and, and the Diva's job it can be quite difficult. Uh, it's just not as bad against a double shield as it is against some other compositions, but still a difficult job indeed. But NTC, look like they are fighting some value. Mason, uh, I think, has been the most impressive player on that side, got yet another nano boost up, and they're able to use that to win that second fight. Question is, is there time for another contest? Uh, I mean, Team Kill, I mean, they really heavily invested in that fight. Maybe a little bit of overinvestment as well. And uh, we'll see. I mean, they're going to get this first point unlocked. They get an extra two and a half minutes onto their time bank. Uh, Bob and Valk ready to go for the offense. However, they're going to be stopped out right by an Ant Matrix and following up with the Blizzard. Yep, as uh, I hit the two minute mark, Kawhi Jelly falls immediately. And we're gonna get the supercharger out. And DC trying to open up this distillery. I mean, they pretty much have to be perfect from here on out, Billy. Uh, they had gotten so much timing off the clock back on that close hold. Uh, for them to even make it to the fortress is gonna be a real feat. Yeah, I mean, kills coming through in a fast and furious manner here for Augustana. Uh, you know, they have a little bit of a difference here. They're running a completely weird double shield variant here with the Rhine and the Arisa double main tank. And yeah. uh, that's really what helped precipitate all this push moving forward for them because you've got the movable barrier of Sloth moving forward, being able to take space and then get the shield up once again. Then you've got the static barrier of Shadow where you can allow Mason and Battle Angel and Kawhi to stand back and just get poke in. So Augustana right now, uh, they need to get a little bit of compositionally different. Uh, I, I mean, I think just one hold here will take care of it. Yeah, it's not going to take much. That shatter will get countered by the sound barrier. Vanilla Big Hug keeping everybody up. Sloth uh, just gets melted. That health bar disappeared in an instant. Battle Angel! Oh, got a, a little antsy and flies too far up. And the res is canceled. Trying to get the frontline Reinhardt back into battle, but to no avail. And with the player advantage, August on a run over the rest of the defense. Yep. Or uh, the attackers, rather. Yeah, Ant Matrix available to the defenders here. They're going to be able to cordon off certain lines of sight here. And NTC are just going to have to throw bodies at the point here because you're going to be about, what, 10 seconds by the time everybody's back. You have zero speed to get you there as well. So uh, we'll see what they can bring in. And Shatter from Breadman could be all that wrote. And, and Brett has had some good ones today already. Uh, we've got an Ant Matrix coming out from the defense, and uh, we will find out what happens next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, there's a kill scan through, though. Uh, two coming out for Kawhi Jelly. Yeah, yeah, it gets Great. the bomb on the battlefield, able to hold. Nice headshot down on the Super B. Mason's back in this fight. NTC, I love their persistence, I love their perseverance. They go down early, and they're able to swing it back. That's the best fight we've seen from North Central Technical all day. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, never say never. Uh, there is one thing on the field, though, Amen. that they don't have anything to deal with. Unless Shadow could eat this, uh, Weezer's coming up on a blizzard. Yep. And that, that could that could be the one right there. I mean, there's nothing. The old bank is dry as a bone for North Central Technical. Nice anti keeps breaded on the defensive, not able to get aggressive like a Reinhardt wants to do. Uh, and, I mean, that's just another great play coming out of Mason. Uh, has, has been my favorite player so far for NTC, really enabling them to stay alive through this comps. Uh, getting the res on a Mason enabled that last fight, but this one is not going to be enough. They cannot complete Augustana, oh, they, they get the 3-0, taking Havana, uh, moving up to 3-0 and on the season, and a 8-1 and map differential. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty clean for them, so uh, maybe a little bit of bobble there, uh, you know, at the end of uh, their defensive phase, but uh, I tell you what, Breaded Man and, and, and Super B tank line, very scary here in the Challengers division. Uh, somebody to be looked out for, but... We saw signs of life from North Central Technical College. Definitely. And uh, I think that if they get their early game jitters out of the way and maybe start with a double shield next time, I think they get a little bit more success, my friend. And you may have to practice it. You know, on maps like Li Zhang, you're going to have to be clever about it. Nightmark, you got to sit at the back. You can't hold super close. Otherwise, you're going to get run over by Ryan Hearts. There are ways to adjust, though, and I couldn't agree more. Their double shield was their best look. 
Uh, and and we saw Oreo clicking heads on the Widowmaker. Uh, I mean, again, Mason, I thought was a fantastic Ana. Uh, really had some some good stuff in there. So things that they can take away, positive things for North Central Technical to take away from from this series. Uh, you, don't get don't let your hopes go down. You, you've, you've got the talent, friends. Just focus on that double shield, and, and we you know we'll hope to see you again here on stream. But hey, the story has to be about Augustana right now. Um, maintaining a, a perfect record here so far, at least as far as, as series wins go. Yeah, I mean, nine and one on the season now, Not, as far as map difference. Uh, eight and one, I think. Eight and one, that's right. Yeah, they were two one. Eight and one. Two one. Uh, that one match. I, I'm thinking of other stuff. But, you know, eight and one is still a pretty darn good map difference, obviously, plus seven going in uh, to week four. Uh, sets them pretty near the top of the leaderboard. I'll have to take a check of that while we go into our break. But, uh, Still, I mean, tank line scary from Augustana College. Other they not do not run the same thing all the time, and uh, they're very well no. versed in being able to swap off and, and really take it map dependently. So that's the one thing that I think sh other teams should be scared about is that they are map dependent with what they want to run as far as their tank line and also between offensive defense. They really do have a well coached team and a well rehearsed set of plans here. Their battle map must be just pages long of what happens this, what happens if. So, you know, you saw the comms there, you saw the rotations, and I mean, the end result is what we kind of expected, a quick 3-0 sweep. Uh, a very strong looking squad for sure. One we're going to be keeping a sharp eye on here in the, the uh, Challengers Cyan division. So, uh, I mean, well, hats off to them. Uh, applauded. congratulations on the victory. Uh, but we are not done. That's our third series in the books. When we come back, we will have more into NECC action. Let me turn the page. Ah, it's going to be Cal State U. Ada Dominguez Hills going up against Central Methodist University will be your fourth match. We'll see you in just a few with that one. What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
We appreciate your patience. We are back ready for our fourth match of the night. Heading to the champions division for this one. Jeff and Billy back here with you. And we're going to see Cal State U Dominguez Hills taking on CMU Varsity. So far, CMU have been flawless this season. They have. And uh, uh, CSUA DH coming in. I'm going to shorten that out because that is a mouthful. <laughs> we're going to have to call them Dominguez Hills. From here Dominguez on Hills. out, uh, yeah. they're one and one. Uh, they're even on their map differential. So uh, they put, face both Purdue teams. The Boilermakers giving them a fit in the first game, their gold squad, but they get the revenge on the junior squad uh, in the second game, two to one. So they are one and one, zero map differential. Uh, on the other side, Central Methodist University. They're coming in two and zero oh on a six and zero oh tear map wise, and I mean we got a chance to see them last week on stream. They are extremely potent, and definitely looking forward to some of this blackout DPS zombie comps coming in as well. We'll see what yeah. they bring to the table, my friend. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Dominguez Hills can actually bring uh, to this Central Methodist University team because they looked pretty darn dominant last week. Yeah, uh, CMU ran a lot of rush and a lot of brawl, uh, even on Rialto, a map with a lot of space that you traditionally see more poke oriented compositions. They still just ran the Reinhardt, ran the Winston uh, at the helm. Is Black Magic playing the main tank? Uh, he was a tour to force last week on stream. <laughs> we saw him. And they were up against Aquinas, who was coming into that. They 3 0 their first week. So it wasn't. There wasn't a bottom feeder team that they were up against. They, they, they were up against somebody who had a perfect record coming in. I mean, granted, it was just after one week, very small sample size. But CMU were 100% dominant. It was it, it was a, a great showing from them. And, I mean, well, it's nice to say Dominguez Hills has their work cut out for them tonight. Yeah. I mean, we'll just see uh, what starts out here. Li Zhang Tower, of course, will yeah. be our first map here, Jeff. And, uh, you know, the wind sink is very viable on at least two of these maps. You can run it third one too if you run a double bubble or a bulldozer comp if you want to go that with that on control center. But definitely gardens is uh Winston's playground as well as the wrecking ball. We didn't see that come out of them last week. We'll see if Dominguez Hills has one in their back pocket. Because that would give a little bit of pause for concern to a Winston player with the knockback potential. Yeah, but Black Magic has a mean Reinhardt as well, which I anticipate will come out on control center. Uh, this is a best of three with a fixed map pool all night long. So, like you mentioned, we are here on Lijong start things off. We will go to Blizzard World after that, followed by Havana. We play all three maps, uh, despite whoever wins the first two. You can claim the series after two maps, but you still got to play that third one. Map score is always oh so important. Yeah, and I mean, I am really looking forward to seeing what we see out of Andy and uh, Sky here. Uh luna as well i mean black magic was really good uh in their last match and uh maybe a little oh, bit yeah, there's no black magic on the battlefield they're, they're running sky in the main tank role this week so uh, hey you know perhaps a little dodging of the bullets i don't know if black magic is just unavailable to play tonight or if this is a tactical move uh but black magic looked really dominant in the main tank role uh, Dominguez Hills might have dodged a bullet. This could be the opportunity to, to put a dent in the so far flawless squad of Central Methodist U. Well, we're also looking at Q Papaya in for Silent that we saw last week. So a uh, little bit of compositional shift here for this team. But uh, look at this. They're just coming out swinging, getting super aggressive. Immortality field already out, Jeff. That's going to be a push in for go for Sky and Company. Yeah, and Maelstrom's low is taking a bunch of damage. I can't believe they survived as long as they had. Sky with an early shatter, just chasing the defense all the way back. But Night Fury doing a wonderful job. She's keeping this team alive and standing and somehow has both of her tanks still left in this fight. And it's been enough to turn it around. Night Fury on point, an early ant matrix. Look at the kills coming through. This uh, sophomore is lighting up the feed, Billy. I mean, a little bit of a Zarya diff right now, as well as having that speed there from E-Metal. They flipped the point at 17%. That is kind of scary. And actually, Sky, I'm looking at it right now. Sky actually invested a Shatter into a losing fight, so that's not going to be on the table. So definitely I mean, it looking... wasn't. they weren't losing it when the Shatter was invested. <laughs> well, I mean, they didn't use it. I mean, it went out with the Shatter. It came back and actually invested it then. So, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Andy started to click. Yep, and Wiki Tricks, that grab uh, is coming out here. Immortality Field 
Well, it was keeping him alive, and Andy's able to counter back with a nice dead eye to prevent any further damage done as CMU came back angry. Uh, Angie, the CMU players here, and uh, they've got Sound Barrier for the next fight. Heavy investment, though, from CMU. Kind of what we are not expecting from this team because they were very old this point the last time that we saw them on stream. So, uh, Terriermon, also a different tank player here for CMU. This is almost like a second squad look. Yeah, Terriermon listed as a support player. Uh, play of the deal oh! here. Oh, oh my! Sky, just doing him dirty! Oh my goodness! Oh! Oh, that's just filth. Filth I felt that in my bones, Billy. I mean, we both play a lot of Reinhardt, let's be honest. And you know that I was smiling just as big as you were <laughs> seeing that come out. So, uh, keep in mind here on the Sombra, haven't seen very many manual hacks come out, but they're coming up on their EMP, and that should win them another fight and put them in the last fight territory. Now, Cupid Pie has been playing kind of a frontline uh, Sombra, and there's the EMP there, but doesn't catch E Metal. E Metal is able to get the sound barrier off. Wonderful positioning. Now the response is Georgia going to try to get aggressive, and yet another dead eye from Andy. That one picks up one. And despite the great play from E Metal, CMU have managed to hold the line. They're peeling back a little bit as Maelstrom picks up two. Maelstrom fearlessly charging into the pack. Finally gets taken down by Terry or Mont. And CMU have suffered some casualties, but they might be able to build this above oh! 90%. Oh my goodness. Andy, you gonna bring this back? Really? Kills through the amp matrix. Now the self-destruct is there, but Sky is right back with the shield. Everybody is able to find cover. Oh! And another oh! big shatter for the main tank, Sky. Oh my word. Sky. Uh, making black magic oh, a little, little bit. Uh, MTD. I mean, we called MTD last week. Uh, he just went right into Maelstrom and just said, you know what? I don't care if your shield's up. I'm going to swing and then I'm going to shatter you and you're going to go down. Bye bye. See you later. Oh, I'm already loving both of these main takes. <laughs> this is this is going to be a battle here tonight uh, as uh, both swap. Maelstrom is pulling out that wrecking ball. Uh, Sky going to a more Winston centric composition. It, indeed, they're going over to that zombie comp like we saw last week. They're very good at this composition. Granted, there was some different players on the battlefield for CMU when we saw them last week. We'll see if they still have that same level of aggression, that same level of lethality going into the uh, pseudo dive comp from Dominguez Hills. Well, you saw George and Andy last week play this uh, zombie comp, so we'll see what uh, Sky and Terriermon can bring to this. Cupid Pie is going to be the answer for me right now. Hacks have to be centered on Maelstrom, on the wrecking ball to keep Sky into these fights and, you know, reduce that knockback potential, Jeff. I'm also looking for the burst healing coming out of Luna. That early coalescence should win them a couple fights. And Dominguez Hill's approaching the danger zone here. As soon as they get in this doorway, they're going to be at the brunt of all of this damage. Those hacks you're talking about, wow. the Hellfire shotguns. Nice bio. Sky goes low and is forced to back up. This is going to buy some space. But Dominguez Hills need to strike fast. They need to strike now. Maelstrom trying to go in. Gets oh, just pushed George! all the way off the side into the pond to swim with the fishies, goes Maelstrom. And now CMU getting aggressive. George, George, George out of the jungle, quick as he can be. How far Watch can out move? for that scene. <laughs> Watch out for the Q, more like it. Uh, looking for <laughs> looking for the EMP coming up from Cuba Pie. Great ultimate charge from the entirety of the team. No support ultimates having to be used as well. So, you know, I, I called it out, and they're playing according to what I told them they need to be doing, which is taking care of Maelstrom with these manual hacks. Uh, you need to watch the disruption factor coming around. What I'm looking for right now, though, is Danny. Pulse bomb in hand. Nothing really to defend against it. And I like this. Maelstrom trying to circle around, see if they can kind of start pulling CMU in different directions. But CMU are going to raid it. Nice! What a fade! Oh, woken up in time to fade, and now drops the coalescence into the back, and Dominguez Hills have already lost half their squad, including both supports. And that's done and dusted for that fight. Oh, Night Fury with a beautiful sleep. The stick was there. Luna able to fade and tie. You know what I'm not seeing right now is any kind of defense for uh, poor Maelstrom on this wrecking ball. Getting a little bit too far ahead of their supports because you want to use that Brigida to get the shield bash and knock the manual hacks out of Cupify and having them to relocate with the translocator. So Rally should get them into this fight, but four ultimates, including the MP, coming into this next fight. Yep, and... 
Circling back towards white as the rest of the team on Wiki Tricks is going to be the one trying to pull at the seams here. Nice kill to start things off. Danny's able to move in and get one. EMP does come out, but the rally is there and will keep healing up the rest of the team. Losing only one. Dominguez Hills push on to this point, and the Turos will flip it after a little bit of stall. Uh, Terrier? I mean, I mean, yeah, that's a bit of a scratchy uh, self destruct. I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I would have invested that. I mean, they're so far up in capture percentage that you could use that as a uh, as an initiation tool for the next fight. However, Danny's worked up to another pulse bomb and you know, love low fives has been holding on to this dead eye for a minute. This guy's gonna go ahead and pop the primal rage Beautiful. to start. We'll see if low fives wants to pull the trigger on that dead eye. Getting booped around right now. Does try to pull it, but gets taken right out of it. Cupapaya shuts down the cowboy ultimate, follows up with the hack and the kill on the maelstrom as well. Cupapaya making life oh so difficult for Dominguez Hills. And almost, I mean, just coming up on another EMP, you'll have that. May not even need it. As the fade out of the self-destruct takes care of Wiki before they can get back into mech. Nice timing there from Andy. Here to put an exclamation point on the back end of our opening round. Or yeah. opening map, rather. I mean, it was just filth. It was just filth coming in for them. That's going to be an ad major coming out. Might be able to get a little damage in there. Yeah, I mean, they might find some joy, but not really. Yeah, unfortunately, Low Fives goes down, who would be able to most benefit from the double damage. Uh, there's yet another self-destruct. That's going to keep Wiki Tricks from doing anything cheeky. And Central Methodist University, the Eagles, take map one. Even, I mean, was the first week that we saw them on stream their B team, Jeff? Because this was even more dominant than what we saw last week on stream. So, I mean, this is their uh, A team? I don't think so, because like I said, Terriermon is listed as a support um, from the information we have, and Black Magic is listed up top as their tank. I'm willing to bet that Black Magic just is unavailable tonight, uh, but it does, it, I mean, it makes you question, because you're 100% right. Like, <laughs> that's, the aggression was there, the coordination was there. It didn't seem to matter which players they have in here. I mean, that's just props to the coaching and props to the synergy of this squad, because they look just as deadly. Ugh, Andy. We did see them on stream last week. It popped off last week, and now we're seeing it again. Uh, they had a very good Reaper last week, and so we're seeing it, it once again. Oh, my goodness. I mean, both Luna and uh, Andy avoiding uh, explosives uh, on the point there, one with a shadow step and one with a fade. And, uh, I mean, that that would have you know won fights there. So great recognition coming out. Of Central Methodist, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what happens in our next map of Blizzard World. Uh, I mean, I, I'm anticipating they're going to stick with the same comp. They're going to stick well the step style, the same style of comps. Uh, be it the Reinhardt variation, perhaps a, a little bit slower brawl, or just go for the the zombie rush down hyper tempo. Uh, just taking as many fights as you can. It's I, I think it's going to be one of those two. I mean, that's all we've seen from them so far. Hey, maybe they've got more in their wheelhouse. Maybe, maybe. I mean, Blizzard World presents its own challenges, especially running with the zombie comp. I mean, if you run with the zombie comp and you've got the cooldowns managed, like we saw come out there. Uh, I mean, Winston's going to be just fine because he was going into these engagements, you know, just knuckling through and then jumping out when he needed to, propping the primal uh, when he felt any kind of a whiff of going down. Great recognition of their win cons great recognition of being able to keep their cooldowns uh in yep. check and, as well and good old rotation to boot uh I mean, like we had what one self-destruct that was maybe questionable mm -hmm. uh and, and then the, that was right back up i mean we, we saw uh terry get that get that ultimate right back in the very next fight so uh, like that was that was the only one uh a great back and forth on control center for you hard, hard back to the first sub map that we saw mm -hmm. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the Reinhardt battle. Uh, definitely some signs of life there from Cal State U Dominguez Hills, right. uh, particularly on the front line with Maelstrom leading the charge. So, I mean, there's there's time. There's room for them to bounce back. It's only one map. You know, we got Blizzard World coming up. Perhaps perhaps they're more practiced on this map. You can still be the first one to, to put a one in the loss column uh, in CMU's map score. Uh, there, there's still time, Billy. There's still hope. You're still hoping? I'm just giving him some. I'm just giving him some hopium right now. I mean, just just <laughs> that hopium. That's... 
Well, what they do have that I, I saw that could really give them some problems, though, uh, for C for Central Methodist is that Maelstrom has a very good ball. Um, even though they were running the summer against it, I, I, I would have swapped a little bit earlier uh, to something different uh, once they bring that summer out. And if they stick with what Central Methodist is known for, this zombie comp, even with the blackout DPS just by themselves, even if they're running the Ryan Diva into it, um, Maelstrom's going to have to be wary and stay a little bit closer with the team yeah. to be able to let their Brigitte or whoever's playing with them be able to mitigate that manual hack. Because once you're manual hack, no adaptive shielding, no escapability, and you're just sitting a duck right there. I mean, it, it's a tough call, right? Because part of the strength of the Winston or of the Wrecking Ball, forgive me, is, is to be able to to rotate your lines of sight so that the the zombie comp isn't all just looking one direction, all six guns pointed at one target. You 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 divert attention. You you pull the back line where the back line has to focus on staying alive and and can't focus on keeping the those tanks alive. Like that's the strength of that Wrecking Ball. So it, it becomes kind of a catch twenty two. You just have to be really careful um i mean if you're, if you're just going to play wrecking ball in, in your own front line i think you might as well you know pull out an orisa who, if you want to just keep shooting while having a shield you know play a more passive style with that or just go to the reinhardt and, and just go shield to shield yeah i mean shield to shield works man uh i i think i mean looking at what we saw come out of of Dominguez hills i, I think that you know oof uh a little bit of peel might have been a little bit better as well. I, I thought that they, their, their diva was doing their job. I just don't think they had enough support and oomph in the background, to, especially with an Ana on the field. Um, anti nades are good, but it's not the same burst healing as a Lucio and, and a Moira. So I think they got a little bit support yeah. if they're um, in the Brigida coming out as well. I mean, once you get the Inspire up, it's great healing, but you've got to get in there and get Brawly. And with a Wrecking Ball, it's a bit more difficult because, like you said, you're trying to go for the disruption in the back. You're trying to get that created chaos and, you know, not enough punching power in front with just the Brigida. Well, we're going to take a quick break, get a, our team set up. When we come back, Blizzard World, we'll see you in a moment.
All right, time for map number two here in our matchup between Dominguez Hills and CMU Varsity. We are headed to Blizzard World for map number two. We got a couple subs coming in, Billy. We do. We've got uh, I mean, it's three Ds. I guess one sub. Three Ds. Yeah. Three Ds. Three D Hizzy. Three D Hizzy. Hizzy. Three D Hizzy. I'll get through this. Uh, it's a fun day. It's a fun day. Three D Hizzy coming in for low fives in the DPS role. So. Yep. Uh, that is one substitute coming in. And we're, we're talking about and looking over the rosters as we were uh, trying to dissect what exactly was going on with uh, Central Methodist. And Cuba Pie is actually listed as a support player, and you could not tell that uh, nope. with the play that happened there. The manual hacks were uh, just breathtakingly good. And uh, I mean, Terrier Mon, yeah, also a support player playing in the off tank role. So what we're what we're deducing and inferring from this is that Black Magic and Silent not available this week for Central Methodist. So uh, other teams members have stepped up, got into off roles, and uh, still the uh, Central Methodist University train is full barrel down the tracks and uh, just absolutely snow plowing through everybody that they encounter along their way to what could be a playoff potential. So far, so good. Um, and we got word from our wonderful people in production that uh, Dominguez Hills actually won their division last year. So I mean, this is this is not a weak team. This is this is not a throwaway game by any means uh, for CMU. And even with not having, we'll we'll surmise their starting roster. Uh, you were one hundred percent on point. You could not tell the aggression was there. Uh, the coordination was there. Uh, Keep a pile of great on the somber. There was that fight in particular. Got the got the McCree or the and then turned around and, and killed the wrecking ball. Uh, built up great EMP charge. Had a great EMP there on gardens. Uh, and now CMU going on the defense. And for the first time out of this squad that I've seen personally, we got some double shields coming out. We do, and I mean this. We saw it in the last match uh, when you're feeling a little bit overpowered. Sometimes running the double shield here with the Orisa and the Sigma. Uh, just provides a little bit of extra protection, especially if Terrier Bond goes high ground, which I do believe they're going to do, and provides what I call the shooting blind with the experimental barrier up there. Uh, and they can just, you know, shoot with impunity, especially with Luna. She's going to be on the uh, support here. And uh, I tell you what, uh, this could be a very tricky look coming in for Dominguez Hills. And uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they bring to the table. Tracer on the board, though. Yep, 3D Hizzy, the new sub coming in, picking up that Tracer. And with the split defense, okay, we did see Terrier Mon, uh, Andy, and company drop down. So they have oh. joined the Orisa on the front line. Uh, yeah, that, that was a whole damage boost at Andy, and everybody focused down Maelstrom right out of the gate. You love to see it. I mean, you absolutely love to see it. But rotations coming through for the Toros. Uh, looking to take a little bit of high ground here. You've got the Diva up there to, damage, to, to mitigate some damage. So... What I'm really looking forward right now uh, is dealing with the rotations coming in for the DPS players, especially 3D Hizzy. Ooh, Maelstrom's going to go ahead and swap off. Uh, so, I mean, you don't have as much mobility. Uh, not quite as able to get up there. Maelstrom, okay, okay, doing a little poke. Opening pick here for Dominguez Hills. It's CSUDH on the right-hand side. Maelstrom able to control this right-hand side, put a lot of pressure on the tanks. And it is back to a plus two player advantage for the attacking Dominguez Hills. The Toros out of California. And they're going to get point one and a lot more. Oh, they're they're pushing into it, too. So uh, we'll call him Schwandy. Uh, if, I, if I'm going to the phonetic pronunciation of his name, because it's a schwa. The upside down E. But Andy uh, putting in some work <laughs> there. Uh, still getting, uh, <laughs> still getting uh, a lot of pushback going up against them so sky swapping over to the winston of their own uh double snipers not really getting a lot of work done here for central methodist this is a uh, looking like a different csu team that we just saw that's a good look uh unfortunately 3d hizzy goes down early in this fight and seeing you are going to reclaim this all important high ground extremely even more so uh with the double snipers as cupa Pia finds their second pick of the fight and and cmu just take all that space right on back you know, and I, I was taking a little peek uh, in our intermission and uh, seeing uh, SGK Carol uh, in the chat, leading the chat, the Twitch chat, uh, was actually voted for a Game Hers Award. So congratulations to them. And uh, good luck in the voting. But, uh, you know, 
dif definite difference coming out here from the supports as well. There's a lot of work going into this back line. Uh, a lot of work indeed. Uh, speaking of her, as Night Fury invested that nano and enabled him to get a couple of picks uh, with Maelstrom diving in, but unfortunately both tanks have gone down since and seeing you are looking to strike back as... I mean, it's still kind of anybody's game, but Sky's able to hold the line. You've got that big beefy scientist up on the front. Ooh, 3D! 3D just sneaks right past the Winston and is able to pick up a pair. This could be the opening they need. Maelstrom's now back in this fight, Billy. They really are. And I mean, look at the, the, the old charge coming through. I mean, the focus fire is there. I'm I mean, they're working in concert now. This is a different looking team. This might give Central Methodist room to pause. And, and seeing you are going to go ahead and swap over to the zombie comp now. Uh, I mean, that was all set up by 3D Hizzy. If both teams had lost a couple of players and 3D able to sneak past and pick up a, that all-important kill onto Luna, uh, Luna does return with that coalescence. So it's not enough to cap the point just yet as Sky picks up an important kill but sacrifices themselves for it. In the end, it is Maelstrom on the retreat. Oh, my He's still going in here? Why not? I mean, right. they took the main tank out of the fight. That's going to be... I mean, this should yeah. be the point being taken by uh, the Dominguez Hills. Yeah, I mean, I was more confused by the fact that Maelstrom backed up while the rest of the team pushed forward. But hey, it worked out for him. You drop a dead eye in, uh, and, and they're going to cap point B here. Uh, I, I assume that's what's happened. Yes. Now that the feed has come back up for me. Uh, 3D Hizzy, uh, the super sub coming in and laying hell into Central Methodist, and they don't know how to deal with the tracer yet. I think... George or Luna needs to go over to a Baptiste and or a uh, a Brigitte. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. I mean, those would definitely be good ways of dealing with a tracer. I think if Kyoko Papaya could find the manual, uh, you know, just play defensive enough to to mark those flanks, uh, that could also do the trick. We'll see how they choose to to deal with 3D Hizzy. Because 3D Hizzy is certainly having a great time on the tracer right now. Uh, has made their impact known coming in on this second map. Andy going in. Death Blossom at the ready is trying to pepper down that Diva. Diva is demecked. There's going to be nothing to block the dancing Hellfire shotguns when they finally decide to unleash them. If they even need to, Boop into the well. Wiki Tricks is gone. And George chasing him down the aggressive Lucio, picking up a pair. You know, uh, our, our, our one of our uh, observers and directors here, Christine, was a quote unquote aggressive DPS style. Lucio main that played against Caroline, yes. sorry, Caroline, uh, <laughs> that uh, decided that they were going to uh, uh, let us know. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to love an aggressive Lucio, but uh, uh, George is down on that side. Uh, EMP coming out, but it's not gonna be enough. The self-destruct def denied the follow up onto that EMP. And CSU DH, Dominguez Hills are able to push forward. Looking pretty good. Definitely a uh, time for a contest here. One more fight to go. A couple of ults for the defense. Yeah, I mean, you've got Sound Barrier to keep you up through the fight. Uh, Winston can keep themselves definitely in the fight for a long time by popping Primal. What I'm looking forward to, this, though, is once the DMAC comes through, if it does come through on Tricky or Wiki, getting him out. Uh, Sound Barrier coming in from both sides. Andy, first of all, trying to use that Death Blossom, but gets immediately shut down. Wicked Tricks was all over that one. You got Sky in the back, angry, finds that kill on to Night Fury. Uh, this is self struct is thrown on as well. They have to invest a few ultimates to make it happen, but seeing you make a stand. Uh, Danny getting a flashbang onto Andy there, denying the Death Blossom, just canceled him out of his ult. And now, self destruct will be available to Wicked Tricks. We've seen them get a great self destruct earlier in this map. But uh, that we did. Uh, not an easy feat. The self-destruct usually just kind of a zoning ult, but you can find kills with it. There you go. Danny's going to unleash the dead eye. Speaking of zoning ults, that's going to force the defense back. Uh-oh. Don't think trades look good. There's a little Cupapaya betting on that mini coming up. Knock it. Tox fire is there. Cupapaya. I even got interrupted out of EMP. Did I see that right? You oh, saw it right. no, disastrous turn for the defense of CMU. And now Dominguez Hill with a clear shot at completing this point. Nice stick! Woo-hoo! <laughs> Immediate impact. And, I mean, self-destruct is going to clear enough space for them. They're probably going to be able to get this point with time left in the bank.
Yep, there's 42 seconds remaining. CNU is able to at least get it under the minute mark, so as long as they complete, they are guaranteed an attack, but Dominguez Hills coming to life in map two. No, no. Woo! Man, butchering names, butchering our staff members' names. What wasn't butchered <laughs> there was Dominguez Hill. Absolutely I mean, they, they butchered flipping. the defense. They butchered the defense and got it through <laughs> in time, and I tell you what... Uh, that's a different look for them. 3D Hizzy, gotta be labeled with super stuff above their name. Uh, we'll see what they can do defensively now because Tracer on defense, while, you know, pesky and, and really worthwhile, if they can pressure down the supports again, Central Methodists are just going to have a heck of a time trying to traverse this map of Blizzard World. They've got a long way to go. Uh, I mean, it was keep up high. They got themselves stuck. And we were talking about a map where they look so good. The support player moving to the DPS role, picking up Sombra, uh, which can, can be a, a very difficult DPS to play as far as your positioning, your timing need to be spot on. Uh, got themselves cornered in that little mini room and panic ult on the EMP, which was their major win con for that defense. That was the turning point. Good job to Dominguez Hills for finding the Sombra, getting her cornered. Uh, that that was it. It was it was all downhill from there for Dominguez Hills. Well, we'll see uh, what Central Methodist can bring out here in response to the Super Sub 3D Hizzy, and uh, we'll see what they can bring out here because uh, they kind of got diffed there with this tracer. Uh, I mean, we saw Andy, you know, dome 3D Hizzy once. So that's about the only time that we saw the tracer really get dealt with. So. Uh, hacks are going to have to be better if they do decide to run the Sombra again. And we'll see uh, what they can bring out here as the gates are going to open, I assume, here shortly. No, well, one can hope. One can hope. There we go. Uh, and seeing you are sticking with this uh, Tracer Echo composition. The Echo, very versatile hero. You can sit back and spam and poke. Uh, obviously, no damage fall off for that try shot. You can fly in or you know, approach from a flank and then use your flight to get out and create a dive in conjunction with the Tracer and the Winston. So there's there's a lot of potential to this composition. It's I have to agree with you, though. It's going to be up to keeping 3D Hizzy in control on those flanks, marking those flanks. And uh, we can see 3D Hizzy's already halfway to the first pulse and getting a lot more work done than Andy is on the other side. Oh, indeed. I mean, but... Papaya, I think it's going to be the key to this. I, I think, you know, with the sticky bombs and the try shots and focusing beam in concert, uh, if they can take down Fury and, and E-Metal in the back, I think that's one of their win cons here. I think Terriamon needs to dive in with him, though. Oh, that's 3D. Has he winning that Tracer duel? Now free to rule the flanks. Uh, and, uh, and another point, uh, aside from the DPS, is Maelstrom versus Sky yet again. As we see the nano boost come up almost simultaneously for both of our Winstons, both of them charged up, looking to go get work done. But it's Dominguez Hills who find the back line first, including a great pick from Night Fury, equally as impressive on the Ana as she was on the Baptiste. And there's 3D Hizzy to clean things up. Yep, I mean, lots of ultimates invested there and zero joy for it, so. Uh, time to make some swaps here. Yep, we see Andy going over to the McCree. That was going to be one of my suggestions to deal with the Tracer. It's just getting him with the Flashbang. But if you don't get the kill off of that Flashbang, you are absolutely rendered helpless and with your pants down. So, uh, hacks and Flashbangs to deal with 3D Hizzy. Yeah, we'll see if the team can all respond and kind of help out, not just rely on the single headshot. It's going to be a dead eye from that high ground. Danny up there channeling it up, finds no joy with it, but drops down and is able to fan the hammer on the sky. Take the Reinhardt out of the picture. The cornerstone of this rush composition is gone, and the rest just fall into pieces. Uh, Yeah, this is a Dominguez Hill team that has completely flipped our early season script here, Jeff, and... I mean, they're looking absolutely indomitable. 60 seconds. This could be a full hold here for Dominguez Hills, and they've got two ultimates ready to go. Nano ready for Maelstrom here very shortly. I mean, no matter how you slice it, Central Method is have their work cut out for them. Even if they can complete on this fight, they have lost so much time uh, that Dominguez Hills have put themselves in a successful position here. Beautiful. Uh, Maelstrom picking up a couple kills, and CMU aren't even going to win this fight. Maelstrom's able to run over everybody, doesn't even need the Primal Rage. 
No. I mean, three ultimates, four almost, ready to go for Dominguez Hills. Self-destruct is the only thing on the board for Central Methodist. They're going to have to lob it and hope and pray that they get something out of it. Well, and it's another great nano boost from Night Fury with the resetting of the comp. CMU kind of threw themselves out of the ult race. And Dominguez Hills are rotating theirs beautifully and getting max value. As you see the, the stick slip. land, Andy's out of the picture. Oh, but Terrier Bond looking to finally break this thing open. Finds both supports with the self-destruct. The answer coming back from Wikitrix. No, no such luck, but it's the DPS duo who are there clean house. Get Varsity, get CMU out of the stables. Dominguez Hills rules Blizzard World. They are going to hand Central Methodist University their first map loss of the season. Oh, massive gold star to them. They understood their win con and bringing in 3D or 3D Hizzy. Oh, my word. Super sub is just a small token of my appreciation for this Tracer player. And I tell you what, I mean, this is just beautiful work coming out for them. We do see George here getting the uh, the steal of the boop there. Not sure what happened there, but uh, great work put in from both teams here. But full held Central Methodist University, not what we are expecting whatsoever. And we've got a series on our hands here. Yes, we do, Billy. Yes, we do. Looking so strong in map one, you know, we were talking about our story going into map two was, hey, we've we're seeing different players than we saw last week, but the team looks just as strong. Ooh, might have, we might have counted our chickens before they started hatching because <laughs> it looks like a weakness has been found and exploited by Dominguez Hills. And now it all comes down to map three. They can still steal, steal this series away. That was a lot of S's. Uh, I, I butchered my alliteration talking about butchering things. But hey, <laughs> we're, we're going to go to a quick break. Give me a chance to get my tongue untwisted. When we come back, it's Havana. We'll see you in a moment.
We are all tied up after two here in our best of three series. As Dominguez Hills came out on absolute fire, white hot on Blizzard World. See if they can ride that momentum into Havana. Can we talk about Night Fury? She is putting on a master class in how to play the Ana. Uh, getting great sight lines for sleeps. I mean, we what we didn't notice a lot. I mean, I, I was noticing it because I was like really into it. The sleeps that came out of Night Fury into on-rushing Reinhardt's, uh, yep. flanking uh, McCree's Cowboys. Are you, say, are you saying I should call more sleep darts in my cast, Billy? Is that what you're trying to hint no, at? That's is my that... job. It's not my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, they I mean, were gorgeous. What, they were they It's, were it's gorgeous. just what I'm noticing, you know, because, uh, I mean, your play-by-play is just stellar. But I notice these little small nuance things. That's kind of what I do as a color caster. And, uh, I mean, the sleeps were nutty. The biotic grenades coming from Night Fury. I mean, she is absolutely exquisite yeah. with them. And the application of Nano. I mean, Maelstrom better be buying that young lady a bowl of ramen after this or maybe some uh, chilaquiles or some other, like, uh, maybe a Cuban Cuban sandwich after this because I love Cubans. if they go into like this again, I mean, they need to give... 3D hizzy, like, I don't know if they're old enough, but uh, at least a, a six pack of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> 3 hizzy is a senior, so most likely old enough to drink beer. Get us some tequila. Uh, you never know. I mean, you did, I, I don't ever want to assume anything. Uh, but yeah, Night Fury, the sophomore, has been outstanding tonight. Um, be it on the BAP, which we're seeing right now, that there's still plenty of, time, plenty of time for them to change their mind on that, or the Ana, like we saw on Blizzard World. Uh, Night Fury doing a fantastic job uh, of keeping Dominguez Hills in these fights, of building up those ultimates and using them to great value, uh, max value out of the cooldowns as well. So we'll we'll see if that momentum rides here into Havana. Uh, Varsity CMU not opting for the double shield this time. This might be a map where you expect to see more of the double shield. No, it's going to be the close hold. Here they come right at you, right at the gates. CMU Varsity looking angry. We'll see if they can steal this map back. It all comes down to map three, Billy, and it's Andy down first. Nice freeze onto the supports, but Dominguez Hill is able to retreat into the safety of their spawn. I mean, it's a McFlurry comp coming out from CMU. We haven't seen this for just a little bit. It's still in high favor. Great walls coming out from Q Papaya, though. Danny knows the far trick, though. This is something I was suggesting in our last match, and you can see why. Danny's able to circumvent the shielding, circumvent the brawl comp, pick up two important kills early in the fight, snowball that into an engagement victory. Uh, Q Papaya might want to think about getting off of this May. Yep, there we go. Yeah. Double sniper. There's the double, double shield. shield. Yeah. Love it, and I love the damage boost as well. So there's going to be one little slight variation here, Jeff. Uh, and what it's going to be is going to be you're not going to have the speed, you're not going to have a Discord orb as well. Headshot on the sky! Woo! And it's George that falls, so the healing's not there. Luna's going to find that res. Sky's got to stay safe long enough for George to get back on their feet and get those heal grenades down. It's actually an immortality field used. That's what the desperate, desperate situation they are in. But here come oh the boy. ults. The Ant Matrix is going to charge up all the other ults. There's a supercharger available, but they don't even need the war drums. Two quick kills courtesy of that double damage from Night Fury. And she continues to be a difference maker for Dominguez Hills. Uh, can we talk about 3D Hizzy once again? Uh, the shots coming out of the uh, Assassin. Uh, absolutely crucial. Pulling out the res early as well. Andy, though, answering back with that, it's still going to be point A to CSU. So now what they need to do is worry about how to displace CMU from this high ground. Terriamon, uh not really getting a lot of work done with the Sigma so far. There's a good kill though. Yep, you spoke it into existence and boom, Danny back in spawn. What concerns me is also the ult rotation. Dominguez Hills are really going to start rotating through these ults. CMU are going to have to win with only a Bob online. It's going to be the Infrasites to start things off, set things up. So Wiki Tricks can come in here with the Scrivetic Flux, spots him in that far left corner. Up they go. Maelstrom does not have the gold. No Fortify. Uh, excuse me, that was Sky. As Maelstrom now moving in. Big Holt! Oh, and not even the Ant Matrix. It's enough for Central Methodist University to maintain that high ground. They're just getting smothered in damage right now, Billy. They just got smoked. There's no other way to... Put it and uh, let me talk about wiki tricks real quick. We haven't talked about the off tank player very often for CSU, but they use the gravitic flux to get on top of the distiller 
and then was just raining hyperspills in hell all into them. And I mean, this is a small, tiny Overwatch scene here. Yep, and it's back to that old rotation. Now support ults online and ready to go. And Danny finds an opening pick. George is gone. That's going to force an early res out. And all the while, cart drifting ever closer. Less than two and a half meters to go. Hold on to Danny Sky with the follow up gone. Pretty his. He was trying to hide on top of those stills. And oh, Wiki! Some off of me. Well, on the front line, Wiki's got a pair. And <laughs> this is inevitable. Wiki with her third of the fight. And Terrymon, Terriermon even invests the flux into this. Andy picks up two. No way you bring this back. Andy gets the kill on a 3D hizzy. You're kidding me. They hold the line, Billy. They hold the line. 2.37 meters. They have Dragon Strike and... There's the only two of them left. I know. And I mean, Wiki Trix was probably on about 75 health when they let loose with the Gravitic Flux. Are you kidding? And got maximum value out of it. I, I don't believe it. I thought that was a fool's flux for sure, but Terramon and Andy hold on. But here comes the response. Wiki Shrex is going to go ahead and drop theirs down and use a transcendence. I mean, this hill's going to try to push oh. forward, but it's Supercharger and Amp Matrix on the other side. There's a lot of damage on the battlefield right now. Uh, just like sneeze on somebody, they're going to die with this much <laughs> damage ample on the board. So uh, you better hope the other team doesn't have a cold right now, but it's Sky feeling cold back in spawn. Wiki Trix with the response these teams are going neck and neck here on the back of the still of the distillery this guy's back in this fight it's gonna give the edge to the defense uh, okay 3d hizzy time to get off the widowmaker go with something a little bit more utility i know that you were clicking heads earlier but now the sight lines are not the same dragon's gonna come out though i i'm not crazy about that one it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of follow-up uh, you can use those dragons to split somebody off and then pounce on a displaced member of the defense uh, Danny is then going to fall as well. So, I mean, I think that's the, the first ult out of the Dominguez Hills that was a little out of place for me. So far, they've been really good on that ult rotation, but now they've got 90 seconds left. Still got a couple to work with. Yeah, but Bob is ready to go. So, Immortality Field might be Ooh. worn out early. What a shot from Hizzy, though. Yeah, that's like, no, I will stay on this Widowmaker and I will find value. I'm going to click heads, Billy. That's what 3D is. Oh, stun Oh, the stun. So, oh, Terry Irvine trying to drop that way too close to home. Uh, and eats a rock from Wikitrix. Taken out of that. Couple of more kills for the attacking team as they plant their feet on the back of point B. Oh, boy. This is a this is bad situation. Yep, Terry Mon going down. That's half of their shielding out. This should be the pickup here. Yeah, you can see Sky just making their way up the stairs now. Uh, and look like they are going to try to contest. Uh, I see about three or four members of the defense. They're going to drop the Ant Matrix Transcendence out from the other side. Wikitrix throwing down the Flux. Didn't quite see where that would land. I think they went after Sky, who had the Fortify ready to go. But in the end, it's going to be Night Fury in 3D, lighten up the feed. Night Fury continues to impress, continues to inflict tons of damage and tons of healing output. Yeah, but I think the wiki tricks have, have inserted themselves into this conversation a lot more uh, here on this third map. I mean, we've, we haven't really spoken their name, but I mean, as an off tank, sometimes you don't do that. I mean, they were doing their job as a diva very well in the other maps, but as the Sigma here, they have been getting maximum value. Absolutely. I mean, just look where they're leading the charge there. Uh, I mean, using the flux a little early, just building up a little bit of that extra shielding. They didn't really try to buy any position from it. But what they're doing is they're forcing Central Methodist University to fight to take this corner while they're able to just put one person on cart and escort it up. But Andy finds this crazy off angle on the far left hand side. What a creative spot for a Widowmaker and getting value out of it. Now we've got the war drums out from both sides. Superchargers on the battlefield. Maelstrom made a ton of damage from those dragons. It forces out the immortality field. This could be the defense's turn to get aggressive. They got a lot of resources Woo! out. Now they've got the kills to follow it up. Man, they took a ton of damage. That is the second Ant Matrix in that fight, Jeff. That's how much output George was doing on this Baptiste. And they get the value once again. All the alt charges going back up for Central Methodist. I mean, they just put a lot of work and a lot of resources into that fight. But now you're looking at they dragons did. and Ant Matrix force. I'll stay here. Oh my goodness, Chef. This could be a dynamic fight. Uh, and I feel like it took this long for CMU to get back into the old conversation. 
Uh, dragons from Danny are gonna force everybody from the defense back, and that's what I'm talking about. Sky got split up, and they pounce on the Orisa. That was a much better Dragons than we saw on point B. And Maelstrom gets the kill onto the Baptista boot. That's two high priority picks for the attackers, and they're starting to storm the gates here, Billy. I mean, this is like, gonna be a huge flux. Do they have anything to respond to it? Yes, the Transcendence is there. And you able to try to get close, but no, the response from Wiki counter it back. Oh, and they don't touch. Oh, not my. like this to being his hills. Not like this. Somebody, uh, please put the sign out. Everything was going city. so well for him. Everything was going so well. They Zero had the days. olds to take it home. <laughs> and uh, that that is a letter number, friends. That is textbook. There were six members of Dominguez Hill alive. Harumph. That's all I got to say. Harumph. Uh, I, I, you, uh, that's you that's some know. spaghetti. There's spaghetti all over the place, Billy. Uh, I've slipped on the spaghetti. Let, there's let's talk there's about this. spaghetti all over the place. It is fully lubricated spaghetti as well. All, all covered right, in all right. olive oil. All covered but, in olive oil. We have to move on. They got to move on. <sighs> All right. Uh, you got to just forget about that. Yep, that happened. You wish yeah. it hadn't happened, but that happened. So now Dominguez Hills needs a stalwart defense, uh, which we saw them do on Blizzard World. So, I mean, it's they're still within absolute range of taking this thir uh, third and final map. Well, let's see uh, what kind of a double shield defense coming out from the Toros here will consist of. Uh, 3D Hizzy has not picked a character yet, so they might be a little late to the fight. I wonder if they were going to think about bringing the Tracer to bear. Well, no, they're pulling out the Widow. Which, hey, I mean, quality Widow. Uh, let's see if they... Uh, they probably got time using that grapple to kind of speed themselves forward. I'm... I'm sure they got time to get in a in a good position. Oh, what a halt rock! Have an impact here. Yeah, it was a nice little halt rock. Does get the the fortify out of Maelstrom. They use that to get the shield up. Shield burned down. Second shield burned down. Opportunity for CMU to push forward. Opportunity for these snipers of Central Methodist to find an opening. I mean, a battle on this corner. Both teams just. Throwing damage back and forth, but it seems you gaining ground the whole time. Dominguez Hills are running out of cover. They're running out of places to hide. Oh my gosh. Early Ant Matrix coming out from Central Methodist as well. That's going to be double damage going through there. Shields are going to be at a premium. I mean, it's all about the shield break war right now, Jeff. That is what's going to win whoever is going to win this first engagement. Uh, whoever takes down the shielding first. So look at Terry Mon trying to get a little aggressive on the flank here. I like it. Uh, they're putting pressure down, and they're kind of trying to box in a little bit. I mean, you've got a nice little duel between the Sigmas going on. Immortality field up, trying to give Wiki Tricks the edge. I mean, Wiki Tricks wasn't close. Uh, Andy is able to find the shot from the other side. And Central Methodist University are doing a good job of opening this up. But now they've lost Sky. They've lost everybody. It all started to fall. Once the reset goes down, it's dominoes, and the rest fall with him. Yep, and now it's just time for a tactical reset. Oh, a minute and a half. Uh, off of their original time bank, gone now. Both tank ultimates ready to go for CSU. Sky just lacking a little bit far behind, not too far behind of Maelstrom in the supercharger department. But what I'm really looking at is E Metal with this transcendence going to be able to survive Dragon's War Flux. Oh, it's nice shooting. And Maelstrom is the first to fall this time. And nice fortify avoids the gravitic flux and those health bars from Central Method is looking oh so low and that M Matrix is only gonna do up dirty. Now, Andy does fall. Night Fury strikes back, even without their Orisa. Dominguez Hills looking dangerous, but they don't have the control to stick around. They don't have the positioning to stick around. And now they have lost too many reinforcements. They're gonna go ahead and drop a supercharger, but it's just three members left. And what? Sky doesn't last long without that. He or excuse me, it was Maelstrom. I mean, Sky both fall. It's are you kidding? Me? A two-person retake? Yeah. Hey, hey if it's a good for the goose, it's good for the gander, Jeff. And that's exactly what they've done here. Flip the script, and now. See, you had the numbers so badly. Yes, sir. They did, and but you're. I mean, the transcendence was good. Uh, the kite back was good. The use of the supercharger to make that recontest happen was absolutely brilliant. I wouldn't have invested it, but, you know, they're playing way better than I ever would. 
Hey, uh, yeah, you got to respect it. I mean, with both the races going down, the defense holds on. CMU goes for the reset, which I can't blame him with the amount of time left on the clock. But now Andy is off the battlefield. And it's Central Method is fighting from a deficit. Terrier Mon gets d -macked. I mean, look at his wiki tricks. It's just right in oh. their face. I mean, he might as well just be punching them with that right hand. No hypersphere is necessary. Landing haymakers left and right. Good Lord. They got families, man. Oh, nice. Nice exit picks. Nice exit picks. All right. I mean, yeah. Wiki tricks having an absolutely fantastic map here. Uh, that is 900,000 IQ from them just to be able to push for WM1 all into the offense there. Gained themselves another Gravitic Flux here. So, I mean, Terriamon swapping to the Diva now going back to the Sigma. Alt charge reset. Andy with the Infrasides to start things off. Hit Matrix down, but here comes Wiki Tricks. Drop it in the Flux. There's no gold. Sky is gone. Give me two picks for the office, but here comes the clap back no yet again. Dominguez Hills all over it. George is down. Overtime wick is burning. Night Fury picks up another one. And Dominguez Hills are going to hand Central Methodist their first loss of the season. They come back from a 1-0 deficit. They come back from being down in so many fights. And they stand victorious on the back of this series. Holy cow. That was not on my script for today there, Jeff. Uh, two and O team not having dropped a map the entirety of our fledgling season here, and now Wiki Tricks and company just absolutely taking it to them. The super sub of, of, of easy, good lord, coming in, but Wiki Tricks came alive on Havana. Whoo boy, that just turned our season, at least as far as the top of the leaderboard, upside down, sideways, whichever way you want to put it. Put a scoop of ice cream on it. They done. They're now two and one. And now, <laughs> Dominguez Hills, as Caroline was telling us, that you know they she said that they didn't look necessarily like the Dominguez Hills that, that took them out of the uh, the playoffs last season. But now, they're looking very strong. <sighs> Man, Maelstrom and and I, I, I just wow, just wow. A little bit tongue tied, a little bit flustered. Was not expecting that, but I tell you what, the work was put in there. Yikes, scariness here in our champions division. Yeah, Central Methodist University don't know what hit them either. I mean, that, that was nobody got the number of that truck. They got ran <laughs> over. The defense, so good. That's two full holds back to back. Uh, Dominguez Hills did not give up a single point on Blizzard World, did not give up a single point on Havana. And I mean, wow, what an outstanding performance they have. They have now stamped themselves in my brain and should be in yours as well at home, friends. This is a team to watch out for here in the Champions Division. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, uh, goodness gracious, Night Fury, uh, my MVP of the day. I was going to say, do you go with the freshman in Wiki Tricks or are we going to go with the sophomore that is Night Fury and the back line on the bop and the, on the bap and the Anna or the uh, bop and the Anna, uh, whatever. Bop Anna? Well, Pana. Bop Anna. Oh, no, no. oh, no, no. Right. no. Okay, anyways. No, just, just, no. no. Uh, we're going with, uh, we're going with, the, we're the, with Night Fury, at least from my side. <laughs> no, I, I'd have to agree with you. Uh, as great a performance as Wikitrix put up in map three on this Sigma, Night Fury was outstanding all map long. Uh, I mean, all the way to Lijong Tower, though they lost that map, the bat performance was fantastic there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, Night Fury is is your player of the match, at least according to your two casters for whatever that's worth. But, hey, that's uh, I, I was impressed. I was impressed. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where they go here in, in NACC's season because Champions Division, I thought it was going to be a Central Methodist kind of, you know, bulldoze through it. I mean, map number one, completely different team than what we saw. Very one side. Out two and three. Yeah. So, Man, I mean, that's all to play for. This is exactly why you come on any given day. Anything can happen. As I said in our previous match, and here we see it. Dominguez Hills, reverse sweep, take the 2-1 victory. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward, and I cross my fingers that we get to see these two meet, perhaps in postseason, uh, and Black Magic back in the lineup, and have Silent back in the lineup, and what what we presume to be the actual starting roster for Central Methodist University. I want to see them at a full 100% going up against the squad from Dominguez Hills. That's I, I hope we get that, Billy, because that would be just hype as could be. Absolutely. Uh, it's a banner match. Looking forward to it. But, you know, that is a uh, debt later on down the line. We'll see what happens come playoff times. But yeah. uh, it's our last match of the night for us. It, it is. Sad face.
but we've had a blast doing it uh we really appreciate all the people behind the scenes we got tofu on prod we had uh caroline and shelton doing the camera work for you uh so big shout out to them uh keeping us in check here on the front and thank you very much for hanging out with us and you'll have one more match coming up our final match of the evening uh so stick around and uh, we will see you next week. Uh, the two of us will be back next week. Well, I think so. At least I'll be back next week. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, stick around for our fifth match of the night. And we'll have that for you again in just a few. Bye, guys. Love y'all. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NECC. It's the last Overwatch match of the day. Redbird Overwatch White versus WCU Overwatch A. That's Illinois State University taking on Western Colorado University here to cap things off for today's action. I'm Corbeck, and alongside me is Tropic Theory. And Tropic, not quite sure what to make of this one, just based on the records. It could very well be an interesting match, all no, things considered. Honestly, it's definitely. And to really also... Uh, add in that Redbird White has a sub for their DPS Froza. So Bagel will actually be playing while we wait for Froza. So we'll see how that goes. But to also comment on WCA, now, right now, they are at that eight ranking of the leaderboards for the Emergent Scion Division. And their team above them, number seven, Concordia Western uh Western University of Wisconsin Falcons has a map differential of three, six to three. So currently, right now, WCUA to really keep that number eight ranking wants to win these next three maps that we have to really get them neck and neck with them. Though red or white, you know, this could be the week if their comeback to get to that next level. Currently, they are ranked number 10. Uh, but Corbeck, we are only on week, week three of our NC NECC season. Yeah, it's early days yet, mm -hmm. right? And a good opportunity for a team with a zero and two record to turn itself around tonight. Obviously, like you said, with that one and one, uh, WCU looking for the opportunity to sort of put themselves ahead. And of course, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with the NECC, we will be playing all three maps here. Uh, so map points do matter. They are critical for these standings. So teams really have everything to play for here. Uh, as we go ahead and get started, it will be Li Zhang Tower to start us off. Always the perennially popular choice here oh yeah this is one of our classic overwatch overwatch maps and you know again different map terrains and we're going to be starting on the control map center which typically i'm thinking a lot more brawl i'm thinking we might have some junk rat we might have some high damage damage uh dps for these tight areas so we'll see what these teams will be choosing currently we are in this middle waiting phase to really kick this off <laughs> though you know i do see bagel playing around with that farah and you know when i think of farah i think of a mercy and when i see mercy i hope that they will go for that battle mercy kill corbeck <laughs> yeah no it would be something but uh long loading time somebody got them punch <laughs> showdown loading times over there uh on one of these two teams but that's okay looks like looks like everybody's in it now and we can get started when we see the hero picks coming out i agree with you uh tropic in regards to the brawl that's kind of what i saw here earlier today uh, an interesting mix-up of kind of a cowboy junk rat setup versus a symmetra junk rat setup uh, unfortunately the symmetra setup never really seemed to get going as much mm. as it could the sustain was just not there but certainly raising some interesting prospects and we actually see some metros coming out on both sides of the ball here and you know when i see this metro i really look to see who's going to be making their their way on the point first you know who's going to be setting up those tallies to really get that junk rat into position and also those shields in pos into position to really deal that damage so i'm looking at uh you know to dare coming in and actually we are not going to be having a junk rat on the wca side interesting you are sacrificing i think a fair amount of damage here to have there yeah. there in on the hanzo interesting too ghostly choosing to go with the stigma here is the off tank compared yeah. to the aria I don't know, necessarily know what to make of that trouble. I feel like you're almost kind of handing your, your handicapping yourself in an early state. Yeah, certainly. But, you know, that, that Sigma ultimate could be really uh, beneficial, especially for, you know, True. our, our uh, DPS coming in. Well, they're playing it very cagey here around the server room, but the initial push in coming from Titan right there. The turret's obviously slowing them down for a half second, but nothing that he can't really deal with. Those turrets, I think, got eliminated shortly thereafter. They're trying to play this outside angle, actually, which is what we would expect. Trodare getting taken down early on, just clipped by the headshot. That'll leave some room here for Ultra to get aggressive. The Junkrat taking the place of his opponent and just pushing up there, but still not a lot of kills feeding forward for any of these teams. The Amplification Matrix coming out early on. That's IE Crayons Melton. There goes the rest of Red Edward White, and the only member still holding out here is Ghostly, who will narrowly avoid the pin before being brought down. Now, within that fight, we really saw that, you know, Redbird White was really holding strong on that really center area. But again, we were talking about that difference of Sigma versus Zarya, and we're really seeing that. That Titan has that uh, that benefit of, this, of his, the bubble to really be able to get aggressive when he has that opportunity. 
Well, they're pushing right in again. They're going to use the Symmetra Barrier to give them a little bit of room. But again, oh, it's just oh. Ultra all the time. They really can't do anything about this Junkrat dominating in the tight space of that choke point and helping him out right there as Nona Nona, who just looks like they bathe in nuclear waste at the moment. They're so charged up. <laughs> oh, exactly. She, they are a very shiny Zarya at the moment. And we have to comment on these ultimates coming in through WCA. You know, they have the ultimates ready to be able to use that combination of Nona Nona and Zaro's, uh, you know, that drab uh, dragons combination, and that is just a powerful combination to ha be proactive in the fight. Ooh, but those things are a little low. Oh, they're already running into Ultra Cook here, who's really just being a bit of a problem. There's the tire that comes over the top. Crimson is down, and that's the main source of healing. The Immortality Field, the whole kit and caboodle taken out of the equation early on as Ultra Cook continues to just be a real pain here. That's Troder who gets taken down yet again, and honestly, feel like they, they haven't really ever stabilized from that first fight. No, they haven't. They've had these ultimates. They continue to keep charging them, that they're being, they're just proactive each and every time. But though we are in this last fight territory, 70, 70% and counting, Red Bird White have the ultimates to really push in and get this. So they, I'm looking for them to really, right now, they really need Ultra Cook to go down to really make their way in. Uh, they're going to have to get through this dangerous choke oh. point here. The aggressive play on the grab. Bagel manages to turn a kill out of it. The dragon's just a little too slow, I think. Oh, no, it's just enough. Crimson got caught out. The immortality field was taken down. Trader going to go ahead and try and use the tire here. It's really the only chance that they have. He's got to get a kill with it. A sound barrier was invested oh. here as well, I believe, to just keep the team up. But they still will secure two kills with the tire. No, 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 though. Still fighting it out. And I don't think anybody's going to be able to touch. And sure enough, WCUA will walk away with stage one victory here. And you know, I have to say that we have to comment on that junk rat. You know, we consistently saw Reinhardt on the Redbird White side shield go down, and that is where the team just had their fun of uh, you know, getting the ultimate charge that they needed to be really proactive in that fight each and every time. But you know what? New map, new area, Redbird White, this could be the one. We're seeing some changes here where we are seeing some sky. Uh, friendly heroes, Trader actually go into that Echo, and you know, Echo can be so powerful, especially you know, depending on who you duplicate. You know, we could see a very quick, uh, you know, Diva Ultimate coming in if he duplicates Nona Nona, um, and that could be pretty big. Yes, unleash the flyers, right? Let, let, <laughs> let them have their go here on the one map where uh, uh, of the series where I think they're the most effective, arguably, and they're getting right into the thick of it. An interesting little double bubble oh, composition on what? one side. The ball goes for the knockoff, does manage to get Snoop Sensei down, but Crimson immediately returning the favor right there with a quick whip shot from the hip to knock him off the edge. And now both teams going into this in a 5v5. A little bit of superiority, though. I think the, the on a trade was a little rough. Crimson going down there means they won't have any healing just yet either so a lot of this fight i think is going to turn into a matter of just academic how long is it going to take to wipe out the remaining members of redbird white but they're holding out relatively well here tro dare though getting caught down and i think that should Ooh. signal the end of this push and you know i really want to comment on redbird white side right now tro dare doesn't have that mercy to really continue to give them that damage boost and up one up uh you know or really stay life for life with ultra cook and uh Medrejan. uh so I'm really looking for, to, for potentially Crimson to swap to that, though I do see why we chose Brig to really, uh, you know, try to deal with Titan in the background. But, oh, we're, again, we are seeing that support coming in from Ultra Cook to just really, uh, you know, Trader was the first one down. Yeah, Ultra Cook really does seem to have Troder's number throughout most of these <laughs> fights. Bagel now trying to push their way forward here. Can't get much value out of it. And look, there's Ultra Cook with the clone coming in over the top as well. But it'll be Titan with the double boop right there who really oh. shuts this down. And Redbird White goes see sailing off the edge of the map. They'll add one more kill there as well. Snoop Sensei, Senpai sent the west the way of the rest of the team. And that will signal the end of any hopes and dreams of that attack. And you know, we're really seeing WCA playing aggressively, really really uh, playing on those opening uh, picks that Ultra Cook is baking for them. And that is when we see that dive, that is when we see Titan go in that back and really consistently be up in each fight. Now we have some ultimates coming up for Redbird White. So Crimson's, uh, Crimson's rally could be exactly what they need to really get through this 
this damage that WCA is really pushing out right now. Oh, as I say that, Caster Ooh, an curse. early pick there onto Crimson. Oh, that'll just cut the legs right out from underneath the support. They can't brawl with that. The dragon coming out on the back end as well. A minefield going in too. They'll throw a diva bomb in there for good measure. Everything oh. but the kitchen sink being chucked into white right there. And that is pretty much the entirety of Redbird White sent back to the spawn. But, you know, WCA, they use quite a bit of ultimates. The only one that they'll really have coming up is Loose Goose. So if Redbird Wright really calculates this, this could be exactly what they need. But Corbeck, 95%, can anybody even touch? They might be able to sneak one in oh. here. Bagel can move fast enough, but it'll actually be IE Crayons coming over the top. Pops the Primal and immediately goes into fight or flight mode. Bagel will actually secure a kill in the midst of all of this. Bagel gets another one, but IE Crayons is dead, and that was their main source of kind of contest here. A very desperate effort here by the looks of it from Trodare on the clone. It won't last. <laughs> Ghostly tries to get the Graviton out there. It just gets eaten right away. And now a cloned Brigida on the point as well. That's Ultra Cook there pounding on their opposite number. Crimson doing an absolutely amazing job of staying alive through all of that. But alas, it is too little too late. WCUA will walk away with map one victory. And, you know, it really, WCA is coming in without any, without any, uh, just really coming in hard. They really want this three map differential to really boost them up. But, you know, we have to really look to see what Redbird White can do in this instance. And right now, we're really seeing that their support line is going down quickly each and every time. And without that support, it's really hard to be proactive, utilize those ultimates correctly to, you know, let them break that chain of aggression that WCA just yep. has right now. And so I'm really looking for for Bagel, uh, Bagel to really, really focus those ult, uh, those like Ultra Cook. Ultra Cook was doing, pumping out so much damage and almost uh, without any contest. Hey, you're very right there. Well, continue watching to see if Ultra Cook will remain free to kill as many of the enemy team as he can in as short a time as possible. We'll be right back after this quick break.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC here. Last Overwatch match of the day. It's Redbird Overwatch White from Illinois State University versus WCU Overwatch A. That'll be Western Colorado University, the alma mater of famed treasure hunter Barry Clifford. I'm Corbeck, and alongside me is Tropic Theory as we get ready for map two. And WCU showing a bit of a commanding presence on that last map of Li Zhang Tower. Oh yeah, but you know what? We have to have, we also have to account that these control maps move so quickly and Redbird White, you know, maybe just these control maps weren't their maps, but maybe Blizzard World this pay uh, this hybrid map will be their map and Corbic, this is actually one of my favorite maps. I love the different map terrain, but that first choke for that first point can be so difficult to push through. And I see Troder rocking that Farah, and I was just going to comment that this first choke, could we could be seeing these flying characters once again. Maybe a little bit of damage from Farah, maybe a little damage from Echo. Um, so we'll see what they bring out. I'm also expecting a little bit more of a dive, like Winston Diva coming through. Yeah, that would certainly be something mm -hmm. to see, though. I, I'd be a bit surprised, I think, uh, to... Well, no, I guess not. Uh, now that I think about it, Blizzard World, a map where perhaps it could lend itself to that. We're still obviously waiting for some of those players to load yeah. in, so I don't know how much we can really uh, <laughs> prognosticate from these current lineups, because I have a feeling we're not going to see a uh, you know, the the old Bastion Torb buddy combo there. It's just not really a, a DPS key. You as mean we get the some super swooping turret? camera angles. The super <laughs> turret. Yeah, the old super turret. Uh, what is it? The no, it's not a builder comp because builder used to be Symmetra and and Torbjorn, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there mean, was a there was a wasn't there a strat back in the day where you would essentially like get was it a Bastion, a Symmetra, and a Torbjorn, and you would just kind of run into the point and throw down shields, and they would just shoot things. I seem to remember that being like yes. a whole. That was a plan. thing where it was just full on carnage of turrets and you have the lasers coming out from Symmetra. I mean, you know, good old non uh non character <laughs> non roll lock days. <laughs> yeah, back before two two two. The wild heady days before two 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 when you had five DPS and one support, and that was uphill both ways to these objective points. But anyway. We are ready to get started here, and hopefully we'll get an idea of what teams will look like. Uh, I did see this played a little bit earlier today. Uh, admittedly, it was from teams in the Legend Division, so I think it was a little bit different. But Torbjorn did make an appearance on the initial mm. defense. It did not work out so well, Tropic, I'm afraid to say. Oh, unfortunate. I'm a big, you know, I think we both are, uh, you know, a disciple oh, yeah. of the, the Church of Torbjorn. Um, so, you know, part of me hopes that that comes out. But you know what? Sometimes you don't get what you wish for. And coming in from the de the defense side, I'm going to comment on them since, you know, WCA can uh, pull a, pull something out from in this, this time of raining. Um, not surprised that this is going to be full on bunker. We're going double shield coming in. But and, and also, I do like Trodare on this May. This could really disrupt the flow coming in. I did comment on the the limited choke points to really get in on this point. So this could potentially help, but Corbic, we saw Titan just create such carnage in the back line that I'm really looking to Bagel once again to really deviate that and protect his supports coming in here. Well, that's just the problem, though. I mean, uh, Cowboy only has one stun. Uh, yeah. So it's going it, to... It, there's a lot of targets in this that... I mean, namely looking at Bull and the Genji, right, would be the two that you would want to stun the most. And I guess you can kind of hope that your your Mei is resilient enough to deal with either of those threats as well. But an immediate engage there Ooh. from Ultra Cook. And instead, it's IE Crayons who will go down. I'm actually a little bit surprised because I genuinely thought Ultra Cook was not going to escape that. Yes. Forcing kind of an ugly rotation off of the high ground over to the point now, this is a very dangerous situation indeed. Ghostly is down, and Redbird White scrambling for answers on this first point, and they're not going to find him. Snoop Senpai down, Bagel down, and there goes Crimson. And it'll be the last member, Trodare, holding out for a hero, but there will be none. Oh, you know, I saw Ultra Cook try to deflect the Rhine Hammer. Did not think that was going to work, but I have to comment, uh, you know, Loose Goose and... Uh, Majora Shijan just really doing a great job on the healing aspect. Throughout this whole thing, we have seen just strong heals coming in from the WCA side. And that is what, you know, their DPS just has that leverage of consistently staying alive with a Nana boost coming up. But Bagel gets uh, Titan down and that could be their opening. Titan did kind of dive in there a 
Yet bravely, a bit boldly, and got punished for his hubris through a little too close <laughs> to the sun, or in this case, the ice beam. But they'll back up just a little bit here. Bagel trying to put that damage down range with the Peacekeeper, not really finding the shots, but certainly putting the pressure on. Still, a slow, sort of relentless advance coming out of the side of WCUA, and they actually have in the tank a significant number of ultimates, the first of which we're about to see. It's Gravitic Flux coming out. Crimson is down, and there goes Bagel as well. And that might actually see signal the end of this streets phase defense because they've got nothing to answer here as the mines come down ghostly now desperately trying to back up but what can they possibly do in the face of some such unrelenting hatred let's call it that <laughs> and you know again we're seeing this trend of wca having this such such aggression and such a confidence to really push forward that they are consistently building these ultimates Redford white we are just now gradually getting these ultimates coming in we have blizzard for this next fight but we have to question if they're changing just a little too late you know we have these old these uh this dps combination coming in from wca and you know they're not really countering these tanks with their tanks there's really been no let up here. Yeah. WCU is just keeping the heat on. Ghostly finally gets tightened again. But remember, the last time we saw a surge coming out from this WCUA team, they had lost him as well. Down comes the Genji Blade. Bagel backpedals right there. Trodare is taken down as well. And it's a beautiful Genji Blade from Ultra Cook cleaning up those kills, taking out the immortality field. And Nona Nona just going to push right up into it. And man, I don't know about you, Tropic, but it looks like Redbird Wright is just reeling here yeah they are struggling to really get a get their footing under them right now but you know what this blizzard could be exactly what they need oh he attempts to go for the gravitic flux right there but he's blizzard and he's <laughs> hit by some other stud i don't know what it was the attempted charge there won't connect i.e crayons manages to secure a kill on a nona nona but again it's ultra cook the dps just unstoppable here all over the place and despite some brief setbacks wcua finishes with a meaty 44 36 in the time bank oh man you know what loose goose coming in right now just keeping ultra Cook alive and, and, and each of his aggressive dashes you know we talked about that first one where he was deflecting a reinhardt uh hammer which really doesn't work out but you know he had the confidence to really push in with loose goose and uh uh meg archeon's uh healing coming through so kudos that those are the two people i am looking at right now that is really keeping this aggression and this confidence that the tanks and dps have on the wcua uh, wcua side now redford white i'm thinking that they need to have the confidence to switch sooner i know that we are building ultimates but if it's not working it is not working you're very right in that regard and uh my dog is having strong opinions <laughs> about the state of these team compositions uh, in the background here i don't know if you can hear that but he's a fan let's just say that not a oh. fan of this particular comp though he's yeah you hear Torbjorn. him he's, he's not happy <laughs> Torbjorn, where's where's torm on defense guys what are you doing he's got a turret he helps cancel out dives he's great but you see this set up the double bubble again and, yeah. and Tropic, i don't know the double bubble just did not function very well for this last this team last time i feel like they really got split up when they ran a very similar comp on Li Zhang, and i can't feel with the distances included in blizzard world i i can't feel that this is going to be much different well i'm a little bit more confident since Trodare has snoop senpai to really put pressure from above so hopefully that pressure from above really deep uh really distracts so i eat crayons can go in with ghostly's bubble to get an initial kill but we'll see if this uh you know pressure from above really will help because we still have zero on this Hanzo and she was doing a great job really not missing many shots there <laughs> No, Zero has been doing a good job, but losing Crimson early on, I feel like we've seen this bit of tape before where yeah. one of the supports goes down early for Redbird White, and it just kind of slows down the entire push. Fortunately, they're able to get the res here, but they're just stuck pushing out of the lost and found and straight into the gun line here, and Ghostly will not be able to sustain themselves. The Winston bubble just not enough to counter that sheer amount of damage. I eat Crayons trying to play aggressively in the front line, unfortunately. The jump betraying him just a little bit right there. Trodare is down. That's the rest of the team going, and it's just a matter of cleanup here for WCUA. 
And, you know, we have to notate that, you know, Ultra Cook is almost close to that bl that blade once again. So that's going to be really tough uh, if they're able to get that last 25% or so to push in because they're going to be proactive. They, WCUA has been proactive each and every time when they have these winning ultimates coming through. I'm really looking for Troder and Snoop Senpai to potentially take a different angle and to allow I Eat Crayons to dive in at another angle to push them off guard. But that purple coming in, Corvec. Oh my, an anti-nade to end all anti-nades right there. A sort of quasi-dive coming in over the top, and I'm afraid all that's done is leave IA Crayons in a place where he can't get easily healed. He'll try and jump back to the deep, but he won't make it. He's clipped on the tail end. Megarchion there getting that one. They'll get the res in, though, and ooh, this is a promising. Oh. Ultra Cook has been taken down by Trodare. Finally, some well-earned vengeance there coming out of the Echo player, and they'll start to push forward. Bagel just applying pressure directly to the forehead here. Nearly has the high oh. noon of the pocket, but Zip Arrow with the huge dragons to turn it around, cuts the attack off at the knees, and just when it looked like Redbird White were about to surge forward, their dreams are crushed. But you know, we have ultimates coming in from Redbird White, White coming through for next fight. We have a minute and 40 looking on, but again, we, I am seeing Ultra Cook, Loose Goose have that combination. So Bagel, Bagel is the one that will potentially have to stun at that perfect time and keep Crimson safe. That, will that happen? We'll have to see in this next fight, but I'm already seeing that WCA will... Oh, actually, Na Nano Monkey comes through! Oh. <laughs> Primal Nano is not <laughs> usually the play. Unfortunately, yeah. Crimson is dead. <laughs> On the other side of the ball, I do believe they have the Nano Blade going in. I.E. Crayon's doing their level best to just cause havoc in the back line, but he's trapped up there in the Griffin ride, and, well, that'll be the last ride he ever takes, and that will signal the end of that attack. And Redbird White, uh, they just can't quite find the secret formula here. They need to get through this choke point. You know, the secret formula is getting loose goose. You know, I was commenting how they were, or he was consistently getting, uh, you know, healing Ultra Cook, healing these DPS to really get aggressive. But we also have to comment on that assistant. You know, those nanos, I mean, those nades oh. have been so big. And oh my gosh, Ultra Cook Corbeck. Well, the reflex test there for Ultra Cook, clearly successful, and they'll go ahead and take down Ooh. one more, because Zero will get in on the action. The clone coming in of the Sigma, but he's not really able to do much for it. Trodare is done and dusted right there as soon as the illusion ends. And Crimson, they'll get ended too, and oh, just everything that they have, their dreams just fading into sand in their fingertips right here. They can't hold on to anything. Oh man, I'm not even sure if anybody can touch in. No, I eat crayons comes again, but the sleep ah. Corbeck. <laughs> what a sleep that was. Yeah, nap time on the point unfortunately ends with a rude awakening right there. Snoop Senpai was trying to get back on as well. He could not quite make it. A Sombra makes an appearance. It's Shredare who pops out of invisibility. The last minute touch coming in over the top. Now it'll be a diva from Ghostly. The mech is annihilated. Ghostly quickly follows their mech back to the respawn room. And that should be it. So a storming win on map two for WCUA. And again, WCUA really coming in hard. We see that they definitely want this map differential and they are 2-0 currently in this match coming in. And as we saw Ultra Cook, the question is which of the blades was it? Which was the aggressive dives was it? <laughs> It was, it was this one. Well, oh. <laughs> I, I was almost hoping it would be the deflection kill off the high yes. noon, which was just absolutely filthy. But this was also quite effective. So can't take it away from him. <laughs> it's so unfortunate. If you're a McCree in that position, you, you think you've got it. You got the, and then nah, just no. It, it breaks uh, I made a little so gun little. gesture. <laughs> yeah, it breaks all of our souls, I think, to see yeah. that one, Tropic. Well, hopefully the soul breaking will not continue. There's one more map left in the series, and that'll wrap us up here for NECC. Don't go anywhere. Map points do matter. We'll be right back after this break.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC final map of the day. Redbird Overwatch White versus WCU Overwatch A. That's Illinois State University, alma mater of famed film critic Richard Roper, versus Western Colorado University. I'm Corbeck. This is Tropic Theory. And well, Tropic, I'd like to say that it's been a close match, but uh, I feel like that would be a little bit of a fib, really, all things considered. I mean, we have to give some consideration. Redbird White has their main DPS, Froza, Owl, and Subin and Bagel. That's true. You know, they, they typically you have that synergy with your DPS, with your support. You've played scrimmed with them. So we have to give them a little bit of consideration. And WCA, you know, they definitely want to keep that top eight position or at least really keep hold of that and come neck to neck with Concordia University, West Wisconsin Falcons. So, you know, and again, Corbeck week three it is still mm -hmm. so early on that things yeah. can change but speaking of which we are going to be heading to where I currently <laughs> am Havana <laughs> sure it's not nighttime there though I feel like right now in Havana it's no. a little dark but no it's always sunny in Havana that's that's what they do tend to say but you know it's been a bit it is, it is a lower table matchup in Emergent Cyan which is one of the lower divisions uh it's still interesting and it does have implications and like we said at the beginning of the broadcast map points do matter so mm -hmm. uh Redbird here playing for a little bit more than just pride at the moment they want to try and steal a map point away if they can manage it uh, and kind of push their way forward here at the tail end of week three. Havana, just a long map. I usually tend to think of this map has very distinctive sight lines and uh, just getting past that first point, which yeah, just has that long kind of street that you have to push your way up, Tropic, can, can be a real hassle for a lot of teams. And, and I feel like I'm a bit worried we might see uh, at least one of these attacks kind of die before it even gets off the ground. I mean, one of the notorious... Uh, aspects about Havana is this cl course close court hold where teams have this composition where they hold the spawn. Uh, you know, they're able to hold the spawn because if they hold it and even though the whole team dies, they have plenty of time to respawn, come back and hold the corner. And so we are seeing, uh, you know, WCA attacking first. And so we'll see if Redbird White does opt for this. We see these so these uh, snipers, which is not a surprise at all. You, we were just commenting on these long sight lines um, coming through. But what I'm looking for for both Bagel and Trodare is to really target Loose Goose and make uh, make 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 Ar make Archeon. I apologize, make Archeon. <laughs> Um, and so, Ma you know, make Archeon. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tricky one. I'll give you that. It's tricky. Creative. Let's yes, put it in that category. Creative. Very creative indeed. Well, pushing their way up the street of death already here at the start. And the fire is coming fast and furious here, but nothing to really slow them down. Titan already oh. rolling into the back line there, just creating a little bit of havoc. But Bagel securing an early kill. That was a good shot down range on Watukak right there. Will take the Ash out of consideration early on. Stoop Senpai gets one here as well. And they'll clean it up by taking down Ultra Cook. A rare sight. Ultra Cook dying in the kill feed. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's having a great, great fun right now with uh, Genji at this moment. I think that Crimson having this Discord on them and having Bagel and Trader really target those folks, really helping, uh, really take down these strong DPS that we saw last map, Corbeck. Oh, well, they emerge from the post office with an urgent delivery right there. Ultra Cook delivering death onto Crimson. Snoop Senpai, though, will get a measure of revenge for their fallen DPS teammate. Unfortunately, Bagel is down as well. The line's starting to break just a little bit here as Trodare falls to the unrelenting orbs of the Nona Nona Sigma. And now they're really pushing forward into the gut. Ultra Cook coming in the back line. Two health left in the tank. The heals get to him, though, but it's only a temporary extension of life just long enough to get ghostly down as I eat Crayons finishes him off. Bagel tries to swing back into the action. Unfortunately, can only confirm one kill before being brought down. And that, I think, will be the end of point number one. And, you know, we're really seeing the target prioritization coming through from WCA. Each and every time, Crimson, Snoop Senpai are the two targets that Ultra Cook goes for each and every time. And with them going down each time, you know... WCA will have this nano blade without their Zenyatta having this trance. So again, they are utilizing these ultimates proactively, getting on top of the fight. And here it is. We're gonna, most likely going to see Ultra Cook push that Q here shortly in the next few seconds. <laughs> I would guess. Well, they do, as soon as he they gets do it. have. 
the dreaded nano blade of doom there in the pocket should ultra cook wish to use it and we have no reason to believe that he wouldn't at this stage i.e crayon there just trying to lay down the suppressing fire takes a careful second there to place the shield to make sure that the shield is fully protected they've got the beatdown bongo here but the amplification matrix to use first here comes the blade ultra cook going in trying to get the kills snoop senpai will be a victim in the midst of all of that but ultra cook with a rare not very strong blade in this matchup i.e crayons is unfortunately down and well he might not have gotten a lot of kills with it dropping but i feel like it opened up some space right there oh yeah certainly and crimson really keeping the team alive and pushing really keeping their position here but as they say that the dynamite coming in uh you know and we're just seeing this payload consistently being pushed forward even though red bird white has been on top a few times you know they also don't have this team composition to really keep hold on the payload we have these snipers coming through Unfortunately, Ultra Cooked in again oh. with the number right there. The charge on the IE Crayons followed up by the anti nade There's nothing the tank player can do but die in that scenario. Ultra Cook, Genji getting some well-appointed vengeance on his brother right there. The attempted Gravitic Flux does come in. Loose Goose does go down, but unfortunately, the point is already captured, and that leaves just the poor, unfortunate soul of Crimson to get cleaned up here at the end. Yeah, the cleanup. Oh, no. And Oh, 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 saved. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. It's like a movie scene. He was about to get murdered and the sniper <laughs> saves him from a mile away. Oh, man. He probably uh, have, had that. The heart was racing and just, oh, man, I have been <laughs> that support where I'm like, oh, I'm saved by a Zarya bubble or or whichever. But, oh, no, 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 no. Coming through with that rock, sig that Sigma rock, Corbeck. And we're seeing, again, this proactivity coming through from WCA. Oh, Titan getting two with the amplified fire strike right there oh. will be a Titan of a performance. He'll lead the way in as well with the charge kill and IE crayons and the defenses of the Castillo Gate just crumble right there. The fortress is definitely breached. Are they going to be able to get enough bodies out to contest? They're just waiting for the regroup. Waiting for the regroup, and this is like one of the areas that is really tough to really cap as well because of this team, this uh, choke coming through. But as I say that, the Nato Blade comes through. Oh, the oh. Nano Blade manages to secure two kills. Titan, unfortunately, did die in the midst of all of that, but a minor speed bump on the road to victory here for WCUA, who honestly uh, looked pretty unstoppable over there on the attacking side. Yeah, it almost seemed like Redford White really didn't have any opportunity. They had these two tanks that were very brawly, you know, to really stick, stick on the point and hold their ground, but they never had that opportunity again. I'm thinking that maybe if we had a little bit of change in the tanks, uh, you could have had a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more damage output coming in from the side of, you know, Titan and Nona Nona. Uh, I don't know. I'm not even sure if that payload stopped Corbic. You know, I was going to say, I, I, I think it was more convincing looking the defense we saw on Blizzard World, uh, but it was a very consistent sort of just chunking along in terms of dan like uh, progress, right? There was never a moment where you really felt like WCUA was backpedaling. It was just consistent progress throughout. Uh, it does look like we are having a little bit of technical difficulties on the stream here, but then again, uh, what would it be if not uh, technical difficulties <laughs> on a, any sort of Overwatch stream? Uh, the brief pause there will end, though, just in time. Ten seconds left on the clock. Get a quick look at the team comps right there. And, well, this will be a bit of a test here for Redbird White to see if they can push their way up here because they've not had a lot of luck with Dangerous Choke Points so far today. Not too much, but WCA is going to opt not to do either of these teams have opted not to do this close court hold. Uh, so we will have this long area for Bagel to potentially get the picks down. Hopefully Loose Goose, because that is the person that they really need to get to really uh, break these walls that WCA has built, uh, you know, protecting those supports that really enable them. Oh! The dynamite comes through, though, Corbeck. I was clean enough uh, on the feed there to see Troder just get annihilated. The feed a little bit unclean <laughs> at the moment. We're trying our best to work around it. Bagel securing a quick follow-up kill, though. So it's not going all the way of WCUA. And the cart is advancing up to this first corner here by the post office. And a hard engage from Titan comes forward. The immortality field actually thrown maybe a little bit early Ooh. right there. And Ultra Cook is blasted into tiny little atoms by Troder on the back end of that. 
Oh yeah, you know, we're really seeing that Troderis really has all eyes on Ultra Cook right now because that has been their damage, but right now it was the duel of the Reinhardts. Oh, it's a good old-fashioned hammer fight up there on the front line. Nothing quite like it in the world of Overwatch as the two German juggernauts swinging away on the front, but neither emerging victorious, as is often the case with those particular hammer duels. Troder back in position now to start chunking in damage at close range. Ghostly is in position as well. Gravitic Flux coming in, drops him down. Nobody quite dead yet. An attempted guess there with the rocket. We'll find nothing. The Shatter coming in at the tail end from Titan, and that might have been the opening they need. A good charge there back in by IE Crayons, but ultimately a valiant effort entirely in vain. Now, this is going to be great for WCA to really hold this corner, but coming in from Red for White, they have ultimates to utilize where WCA just used them. But, of course, the infamous Nanoblade that we have seen all night. So right now, I'm really looking at Troder and Crimson to keep the team alive uh, from this to utilize these, ult these ultimates properly. Yeah, you can almost feel the dark energy at work here. Wadukek getting taken down early, but will it be enough? Ultra Cook is the real target to kill. The shield getting absolutely chewed apart there on the exit to the post office. Huge. The Blade is invented. Troder gets a tire. Ultra Cook is taken down. And on that little bit of DPS action and the following aggression, Redbird White will surge forward. And they might even be able to complete this before they get any reinforcements back. And you know, Troder, that was their target. That Ultra Cook was the one, but right now he is looking for uh -oh. the opening. Is he going to be able to do it? No. No. no not going to take the risk. <laughs> I thought, I thought Vengeance was going to appear in a flash of Blade, but it will not. They'll hold it for a later date. Hold it. Yeah, they're holding it for now. But again, they have this ultimate to really push forward. So Crimson. Crimson is probably going to be Ultra Cook's initial target so i'm hoping that the team really keeps crimson alive to keep the team alive in this halo pushing for redford white oh, they're there trying to get a little bit of an off angle there comes the blade the nano is out oh, as well gosh. but uh, a quiet one ultra cook is shut down and killed and that deadly combo we've seen so much action from didn't do much on the front line but a couple of kills coming in on the back of it is uh oh, nona nona gets one loose goose gets another the charge coming in there trying to separate titan and he will be clubbed down by ie crayons but ie crayons is facing a rather unfortunate situation there and the entry to distillery he commits the shatter he tries to go forward into it but the immortality field i think denies him the follow-up he will die ghostly secure to kill but oh at what cost oh man but i have to comment loose goose you know the blade didn't initially look like it was going to work out but those big nades are really having the confidence for titan and nota nota to push through get the kills needed and here they are stopping this right here but the may that wall could change some things up well, the Gritic Flux coming in, the drop following the damage amplification matrix out as well. It's Troder, though, who strikes early. Ultra Cook will go down. No, 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 though. We'll put Troder back in his place. That brief moment of excitement there shut down almost immediately. Still the cart working its way forward. Oh, <laughs> the sleep on IE Crayons. He'll wake right back up into a nightmare of his own creation. Titan trying to go for the pin. He finds Bangle. Oh, didn't clear the corner. And that was the inevitable result right there. The amplification matrix up and good anti nate over the top. Top there as well from Snoop Senpai, but is it enough? You see the aggression coming out here on the front line. I.E. Crayon's forced to backpedal. Now he's got a nano boost. He comes back in on the other side. Troder picks up one. Snoop Senpai gets another, and it might just be enough. But Troder, he can't seem to do much more than just go one for one here in this day and age. And lurking in the back line the entire time is Ultra Cook, ever the menace as the cart continues to go. Oh, yeah. You know, Ultra Cook really sees the potential coming through for Tro Troder. Troder is really destroying I.E. Crayon's shield coming through or uh, sorry uh titan shield coming through uh so you know ultra Cook's definitely gonna be focusing on them but will anybody even touch corvic oh there it is the blade oh, there's the blade crimson deleted an arc of crimson comes jetting out if every samurai movie i've ever seen is enough to go by <laughs> ghostly added into the pile that just leaves poor titan to clean up on the back of his dps and it was more than enough and they're stopped inches from their objective and we're just shy of a minute coming in, and this is going to be a tough area. We have, you know, these spawn advantages coming through from WCA, especially this late in this trek of second, uh, the second area. Redford White does have the this ult, these two tank ultimates, as well as Trodare's ultimate, and that is a big pick coming through with 30 seconds to spare. Ooh. Ooh. 
<laughs> Poor Tronair. It's just, it's just not his day. I feel like sometimes I eat crayon goes in for the charge and is just eaten alive. He might as well have jumped into a pack of angry sharks in a meat suit for all the good it did him. And well, they're going to try and push this forward just a little bit. You almost get the feeling ghostly wants to do it himself, but it won't quite work, I'm afraid. And, you know, 10 seconds to spare. We have these game-winning ultimates. I'm looking at Trodare. If they're able to get this... No! Loose Goose gets him! Oh! That is devastating. Stoop Senpai. <laughs> right, Stoop Senpai got a kill there at the end, but unfortunately it's not enough. A punctual end right there. WCUA walking away with the 3-0 over Redbird White. They just never could find their footing, unfortunately. But you know what? Here is a game-changing uh, ultimate coming was through a from Trodare to like really get them that first point and that opening that they really needed. Oh, I mean, there all it credit is. to Trodare. Yeah. All, all credit to him. That was well played. It was a rough night, I think, overall, but he never stopped battling throughout the entirety of that. And a very solid bit of tire player right there to end things off. Well, that would just about do us here for uh, tonight, Tropic. Any final thoughts before we wrap up the broadcast? Oh man, WCA really came in hard and Loose Goose coming in. I know we always see the flashy uh, bells and whistles coming in from the DPS and Ultra Cook. You did wonderful as well as everybody else uh, coming in from the DPS uh, WCUA side. But Loose Goose, you know, that support play coming in, really enabling them. And I just might be a little biased coming in from being a support player myself. But those nades, Corvic, you know, I love they a good Anna. Decisive. That, yes. That just goes through and keeping the team alive. So great job all around. And I'm looking for Redbird White to come through when Froza comes in to have a really good week, potentially next week. So we'll have to keep an eye on him. Yeah, they've got a lot to fight for, like you said, early days. But tonight it will be WCUA who will walk away with the victory, bringing their record up to 2-1 here in Emergent Cyan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it here for NECC Overwatch for another week. We hope you enjoyed all the broadcast today. I have been Korbeck. Alongside me has been the wonderful Tropic Theory. Thank you so much to our production crew going strong this entire time. If you want more NECC action, though, there's more Collegiate Esports on the way. You can tune in tomorrow and see a little bit of League of Legends there for you if that's your jam. But for those of us here on the Overwatch desk tonight, thank you for watching and have a wonderful evening.